Herman Miller, the official chair of the Apex Legends Global Series. fan from around the world has been waiting, all right? 60 of the greatest players in the history of the game are left standing, and they are all fighting for their share of $2 million and the trophy. So five days ago, we started and we said, one shot, one opportunity to seize everything they've ever wanted, one moment, well, this is the moment. Let's bring out the trophy crowd. Make some noise. Now that we saw our trophy, guys, it is time to make some noise because we are introducing the 60 greatest players in the world. MDYY representing APAC North. Representing Thailand, Iron Blood Gaming. Looking to make history, it's Paul Varex! Bringing that energy, it's Kansas City Pioneers! It's time to phase up with FaZe Clan! With the loudest fans in the arena, Element Six! Your European powerhouse, Alliance! These fellas are about to get wet! It's Moist Esports! Going to the top, it's a sand! The North American champions, TSM! They don't call a main bot for nothing. Enter Force 36! about to get sweet with NRG! The first South American Championship finalist, O Brasil, start a fight, eSports! Bringing the fun to the championship, Realize! Mexico! LG Chivas! With fire in their gut, Dream Fire! Mean Green fighting my 
machine, Optic Gaming! There's no fear, there's no mercy in the dojo! The number one overall performing team heading into the championship, Black Hand! They're the BR Demons, Oxygen Esports! Ladies and gentlemen, that is all our teams, 60 of the greatest players in the world. Make some noise! Resorts World Arena in Birmingham is live, and we have these fans ready to see history be made. It is our ALGS Year 3 Match Point Final Championship Sunday. God, that feels good to say. We have finally made it. It started in October. The dreams were created there. And whether they have a fire in their gut like Dreamfire or whether they're going to defend a championship, not this time with Dark Zero, but maybe TSM, their back-to-back -back potentialities of the year, we'll see if they can make it and ultimately stake their claim and be a part of ALGS history. We are so excited to welcome you here. We have five days of action. This is our fifth kicking it off. My name is Rande, and I am joined by some of the best and most talented individuals on the analyst desk all day long. Glitter Explosion, of course, Dia Cass. We've got Tiff, and we've got Bullet. Glitter, I want to start with you. The energy is electric today. I hope you guys can hear the audience right now. We've got the chance already starting. You heard how loud the individual team support was when we did those walkouts. I mean, people are ready to see who takes home that first place spot, the trophy, the title. This is going to be epic. There's so many stories here, multiple titles, multiple opportunities, or new faces, Dia, that could shock the world, and certainly a lot of fans that hope so. And that's what makes me so emotional is seeing so many teams that have had really difficult routes here that had a lot of doubters. I'm thinking Oxygen, I'm thinking Start a Fight. I'm even thinking Dreamfire from last LAN over in playoffs. And it's, it's, it's got me feeling all sorts of ways as we head into the final day of competition. As it should, Tiff, this is something that you don't easily get to. And even if you get here, it's even rarer to win. That takes something special. And one team is going to have it today. One team will have it. At the end of today, after this long week, one team will be hoisting that trophy in the center of the stage. And all I know is watching throughout the bracket stages, throughout the group stages, watching hearts break, but knowing that someone's dream is about to come true just completely warms my heart. Something that you learn as you compete, and these players have learned as well, sometimes in harsh ways, as we've seen many players go home. 20 of them will not be here watching from the stands, is that your loss sometimes is somebody else's win. It's their exactly. moment. And we've clearly cleared the stage for no matter what bullet, and I know this hurts you because you're from Apex South, we will have a new champion today. That's correct. Look, I'm so excited to see everyone carry the momentum through from the previous brackets into these games today. We're about to see some electric games. Well, Bullet, obviously former pro here. All of us uh, have watched him play. Now he's on the desk with us. We'll have Graceful up along the desk as well to give you that professional hindsight and insight, excuse me, into what happened. But speaking of hindsight, we had a day yesterday. We sent those teams, the 20 I mentioned, finally home, and this bracket was decided. So, Glitter, walk us through how it started because our winner's final kicked off our day. Yeah, that was a fantastic way to kick off the day, honestly. I know we had a couple wins sprinkled throughout, but at the top of the day, it really was the story of Blackhand. They came out with some solid elims right out of the gate, and they were followed very, very closely by Dreamfire. We hear them in the audience, how many fans they've got supporting this, and as the wins were spread out, we saw lots of consistency out of teams that ended up at the top of our leaderboard. Like I said, it was Blackhand, but they were followed by your pick in LG Chios for that bracket here, Dia. Yeah, I, I mean, it was really cool to see how LG Chios managed to make it in, but the winner's bracket was 
fraught with difficulty, even for teams like Start a Fight that managed to pick up a win during the first half. Then, however, things got a little more difficult, too. This is where things started to get a little mixy as they started towards that elimination round two. That is where the risk of not making it to match point final started. But it was all NRG. And can Sweet make this even more sweet? We had some of the most intense games there at the end. You know, we had Pulverex coming in clutch, a beautiful clutch there, Pul Pulverex. We had NRG absolutely dominating, and we had DZ getting kicked out, along with Xset and Fnatic. And it really turned into a story of emotions, Tim. We saw Pulverex have one of the best stories yet again. This time, though, it worked out in their favor. That was the scariest thing, watching this, running it back, able to just play your placement, focus on the task at hand and lock it in at the end of that as a solo. Look, they have been skating through the entire tournament by sheer luck, but will it be sheer will that lets them get that trophy? And you have to say the way that they performed last year at championships, notably this famous photo of my chin, really flexing his biceps. Uh, you know, we're not going to talk about size. You know, they might not be the biggest in the world, but they're certainly defined. And I think that's kind of defined Pulverex's style. Two teams uh, like that, two players on one team that have basically done their best to get here, and they've finally gone over the precipice and found themselves in the finals. What a story, what a journey that would be if that final game set up a championship for them. Though, what are they playing for? Because that's really, at the end of the day, what we talk about here. Because there's that trophy down there, but there's also the prizing in the back of their mind. $600,000 for our first place winner. $2 million being given away today, Glitter. That's life-changing money. Uh, and to add the trophy and the title of champion of the world, the ALGS, that is an unbeatable combination. Absolutely. I feel like we're in for a long one here today because I don't think any of these teams are going to go down quietly. At least everyone that has made it through these four days of competition does get a payout now because that top 20 will go home with a little bit of something in their pocket after one of the toughest competitions we have ever seen. Part of what makes it so difficult to get here is that this is where the money is. This is where the journey ends. And obviously, we will be having someone in that journey on top. But who will it be? Of course, we've got to get into our teams that are going to be participating this afternoon because, you know, we have so many stories to talk about. But when you look at this page of participants, Dia, what story stands out as maybe some of the bigger narratives that people should be keeping their eyes on? I mean, I, I already mentioned it, but coming out of last playoffs, Oxygen Esports was a massive dark horse, almost making it up to the top. The dojo has captured so many fans. And I'm going to throw in teams like MDY White that have had a fantastic showing so far. You've mentioned Paul Varex. Black Hand were underrated even Come in on. their own region Come and on. have made it to the top of winners. Incredible article, you know, with Black Hand talking about just learning to accept how good they are, kind of giving themselves almost like, we won't win. No, actually now realizing they can win. They're at the top of the bracket here. They're starting with extra points, and they will be able to potentially reach match point first. But let's break it down into our most important analyst stories of the day. Glitter, I want to hit your one to watch for today's finals. Okay, well, we obviously could not have a match point finals without talking about TSM. We have to talk about the GOATs here because I know we've been talking about them for what feels like an eternity when it comes to the matchup between them and DZ, but now they don't have to worry about DZ, and this would be the final feather in the cap for TSM. This is the last title they need, one of the actual ALGS championship. And for them, what's really impressive is their conversion rate throughout this event so far. When it comes to top five, almost 60% of the time, they will win that game. When it comes to top three, four out of five times, 80%, they have won. So we see that when they make it to late game, they are a team that is not to be trifled with, which is huge when it comes to those match point finals, getting that last win on the board. And in the last four events that we've had at LANs, it's either been TSM or Dark Zero holding those trophies. So it's clear that that may be a favorite for many in the stands and watching at home. But Dia, who do you have your eye on? I mean, my, the team that I've got my eye on is a team that a whole region of the world is watching. It's Start a Fight, hailing from South America. They've made it all the way here, going further than any other South American team. 
Beating out even Singularity, who made it to the playoffs finals, they've now taken a championship position, and they have not done it by accident. They've drilled ever since, split two playoffs to make it here, and start a fight actually are statistically backed as being one of our most decisive teams wow. in, the, in the competition right now, having one of the highest conversion rates from downs to full kills, and thus points in the entire competition. It's fantastic to see their growth as a team, looking at what didn't work for them, but also maybe getting, I wouldn't say luck, but a fortunate turn of Seer out of the meta, allowing them to team fight more aggressively, which has paid off and has put South America into championship finals day for the first time. So let's see if Tiff, though, there's somebody else that you've got your eye on, because I know, I think I know who you're going to be talking about. Look, here's the deal. Everyone's been talking about it. I'm going to talk about it. But all I have to say is heavy is the hand, and will Black Hand take this land? Mm. Coming in, you said it, Rain, with the 10 advanced starting points. You can see right here, Player K, Strafing Flame, easy. Z Flash hailing from APAC South. We were talking about the confidence, but even after split two playoffs, the complete difference that we've been witnessing from this team has been absolutely astounding. And he even quoted in a recent article that he's not scared of failing anymore. And maybe that release that he has set for himself has allowed them to boast two wins thus far in the series, 117 eliminations, and it is exciting. Will Easy Flash get to be that true fragger and have the the most fun of their life today at the helm by that legendary IGL. Many people consider them a dark horse, even like I mentioned in this article, they consider themselves, you know, maybe a top two, top five, but I think now they know, and many of us watching know, they can win. Strafing Flame, will he guide his squad to victory? We'll have to find out in just a few moments. Bullet, I'm going to end with you, though. Who is your one to watch for today's championship? I absolutely need to talk about Dreamfire. You know, holding it down for APAC South, the triple MNK powerhouse, one of the crowd favorites today. You know, they're an extremely aggressive team. They find an opening, they will run at you. They snowball, they lose, they gain momentum, and they just run through teams. And when you have a team like this that has been so consistent, across multiple regional events, but then also doing it on the biggest stage right next to Blackhand in terms of dominating even traditional North American teams, EMEA teams, other APAC North or South squads. You have to say that this is a long time coming for Dreamfire to not just be a team participating, to almost be a favorite, Dia. And I think that's something they're expecting now, especially with their fans so loud in front to see them hold that trophy. You have to imagine that they will be, but match point finals are going to be a difficult task even for squads the like of Dreamfire, as they are, as it is rumored, finally going to be going back to a long-time rivalry with the Kansas City Pioneers That's on Storm right. Point. It's going to be interesting. I mean, that doesn't always work out, Lauren. We've seen a lot of these events happen. Yes, you may want to hold your ground, but sometimes just giving up the space that you're going to land and having clear games is a better thing to do, which is what Blackhand has done as well. I know, Tiff, you were about to mention that. That is the tough part, right? They were landing landslide, but then when it came to Storm Point is where were they going to challenge? And I heard they were actually facing off against MDY White like via TDM style and now have elected to go Jurassic just mere hours prior to starting this tournament. All these fast changes, all these fast swaps, they have been in group stages, they've been elimination stages over these four days. They have had to change, battle, and grit their way towards the top. But they have finally found their spot here. Here are our talent predictions. This is who we think might hoist the trophy. Lauren, I want to talk to you. Obviously, you focused on another team, but you think Dreamfire might take it. I did. I think it might be Dreamfire's time to take home the entire tournament. Those quick rotations, getting into an early zone position. And honestly, I know they have the contest, but I think they're going to be able to handle it. And Bullet, I want to talk about this story. It has been an untalked about story, and maybe for a reason. Sweet and NRG have laid low. We haven't seen as much of them as sometimes we do, even in content pieces, and they have found almost the groove that many expected them to with the amount of skill on that team, including Nathan and Guild. So you picked NRG. Tell me why and why you think they might be someone to take the trophy. Look, I absolutely need to talk about Sweet. You know, he's one of the best IGLs in the world. As we all know, they've been playing fantastic. As we saw yesterday, they got so many points. I think their confidence has skyrocketed, and they're about to pop off in this final lobby.
Well, one of the things that would be exciting is to see maybe that how that sweet, that zero conversation shift into all of them having trophies. I know that would be a lot of North America, though, and so maybe everyone here in the building is done with that. They want a new winner. We'll see what ends up happening because we are just here to talk about it. They're there to play, and you, hopefully, you're here to enjoy watching. And if you are watching, we have something for you as a gift. For 60 minutes, you can get the ALGS sticker, the championship sticker, and gun charm, and hollow spray. You will actually get three chances to claim individual versions of these. And if you watch for three hours, it's simple. You get all of them. So if you want to do 60, that's fine. But three hours will net you the entire package. And man, you know, I got to say, it's looking good. I'm jealous. I'm up here hosting, so I'll be watching live, not on Twitch or any of those locations. But I hope you have a great time doing it. You hear the crowd. We talked about it. The stories have told themselves over this week, but now it's time for the players to write an ending. What will it be? That's the best part about match point finals, baby, because you know the saying, if we don't win, we go again. You got to claim it and stake your claim. So let's kick it off with two of the best in the business, Onset and Gaskin, to kick off our championship. Thank you so much, Rain Day, and oh my word, the noise that is in this room right now is what you expect for a World Championship Final. A year ago, we started this story, Dan, and now here in Birmingham, we get to conclude it. We have the best teams in the world with their chance to lift that trophy on the main stage. This is what it's all been about all year long and the representation from every single region here in this grand final means this is anyone's for the taking. It certainly is indeed. I mean, we've had almost a week of action here in Birmingham to decide who our 20 teams are going to be. We get down to our final lobby, and at the end of today, we will know who is going to be your champion. But before we get there, we need to talk about the format. We need to talk about how this works, Dan. Take us through it. It's going to be match point. It's ALGS's most famous points system. You have to get to 50 point threshold. Once you reach that points total, you then have to win one match of Apex Legends, and you will then be able to call yourself the best team in the world. Now, the teams who are able to qualify from the winner's bracket start with a points advantage. Blackhand, being the most consistent team with the most points from winners, will start at 10 points. So for them to get to match point, they only need 40 more points. Then once they reach it, one victory can secure them the championship. Well, let's take a look at the map schedule. Let's see where the grand finals will be starting. And it's Old Faithful. World's Edge will be your map number one. We will alternate between World's Edge and Storm Point every two maps here. So you're going to get a lot of variety. And some teams are going to be pretty much loving the fact that a good map is just around the corner. And we do have teams that specialize on both maps. I always bang on about it. People are bored of me banging on about it, I'm sure. But we're starting things off on World's Edge. I mean, this is Apex. World's Edge has always been Apex, the best way to start things here in Birmingham. Keep an eye on teams like TSM, Ascend, Oxygen, NRG, who have all found three victories on this map so far in this tournament. You can go across the booths, you can look at the team names, and every single team name has a story behind it. The question is, will it be a happy ending when they grab that trophy and lift it above their heads when the final shots are fired? Will it be World's Edge? where we have a winner. Will it be Storm Point, which is going to be the battleground for our champions? And speaking of champions, Dan, there's a few on your screen right now. There is indeed. And I talk about teams that are good on certain maps, but on an overall basis, even though TSM may be very good at World's Edge, if we look across both maps, we need to be looking at teams like Dreamfire, like Blackhand, who their points per game has just blown everyone else out of this competition. And if they can race their way to match point, if they can reach those 50 points totals before those other teams, it gives you so much of a cushion, so much of a position where you can find yourself as a potential champion. It certainly does indeed. Getting out to that hot start, so, so vital just to take the pressure off your shoulders. And if you're the first team to hit match point, you will know that essentially you have a free shot in that next game of becoming the ALGS Championship Champions. Legend Select is done. The legends are locked. The dropship is loaded. It's a Sunday in Birmingham, and you know what that means. It's the grand finals of the ALGS Championship. The energy in this arena is unmatched. 
Welcome everyone to Birmingham. Welcome to the ALGS Championships. And I cannot wait for today's action to kick off. And we will finally have a champion of this year. Who's going to take it though? That's the real question. We've got contests that are going to be going down on the world's edge. There are teams that will be competing. There are teams that have given up their POIs. Alliance, remember, they were going to give up Thermal Station, what I heard, but Pioneers already in an engagement. Oh, a couple of trades going down early on, and this is a Harvester. Exchange and Zane! The triple take good enough, but the action not over. Already we're into another contest. I had heard that Alliance were giving this up, but they said, no, this is our temple. This is our playground. But the dojo are showing what they're made of oh! with their fists. Timmy with the PK. Flesh damage already. This is an electric start to our first game here in the AOGS Championships. And once again, it looks like the dojo are in control of Thermal Station. Oh, the finisher as well, just to rub salt in the wounds here as the dojo do get that initial kill. Now, I say it's Alliance's playground, I say it's Alliance's home temple, but remember, Designful used to own Thermal back on G2. He knows how to run amok around here. Now, Alliance is a two, got to try and hold on. Timmy with that PK could be the difference maker. Still two members of Alliance to deal with, of course. But the high ground is going to be controlled. The final two remaining members of Alliance here trapped in that bottom structure. And maybe you can see the signal wins now to try and push in and take control. But nobody's there. Chasing shadows at the moment are Dojo. And they do have to play this one careful because they respect and they know how good Alliance are. And you need to know that Alliance, even as a two, especially with effects still alive and the damage output that he has with any weapon, but I tell you what, it's up and down. It's switching elevators at the moment. As Alliance now hold the whole the high ground here. Well, they're going to send it. They're going to send it here. Up onto that high ground. Alliance still on that height, but they don't really have the armors to compete. Enemy in design for taking some damage. Timmy in design for now left on their own. It's 1v2 here to claim what this POI will be, maybe for the rest of our World's Edge games. Yeah, this is going to be a big one for Dojo. And in a two versus one, they shouldn't lose with these shields. But effects just being a nuisance from the high ground, but now the grab lift being back up. It should be a matter of just cleaning up the pieces. Effect goes down, Alliance will fall. And even though it was elongated, it took far <laughs> too long. It's a matter of precedent here for the dojo, as Thermal once again is their home. Well, I mean, if you needed a better start, a more action-filled start to our grand finals day, Oh, the circle. You're in the wrong place. We get to talk about the <laughs> we zone. We get to talk about zone. We are going to overlook everybody. And for Moist Esports, always a good zone. Time to look at who has a ring console, Dan, and who is going to be able to get that info that you can see on screen. Well, you can see TSM are already over towards Overlook. They had a ring console at Lava Siphon, so they were moving very fast indeed to ensure they could take one of the priority positions. FaZe, also from Climatizer, have actually overtaken the likes of Moist, MDY White, and find themselves in Overlook as well. And TSM are just going to hold the north side of this vault here over towards No Name and Respawn Village. And it is a position where you can sometimes see this circle finishing. Well, TSM, the story of yesterday. I mean, making their way through at the last possible second to this grand finals. They were almost looking like they were out of it, but a final game win sent them not just into the grand finals, Dan, but into the grand finals with a huge amount of points to start with as well. I think one of the biggest things for me about TSM is looking average points per game. They're not quite up there with the likes of Black Hand, the likes of Dreamfire, but TSM still have the joint most wins in this tournament, and it is match point format. So if they can get to that threshold, then it is going to be very important about closing those games out. Now, LG Chivas, another consistent team under some duress. This is Iron Blood Gaming, who are they going up against at the moment? This is an isolated fight. Sharks in and around stacks, and I'll tell you what, LG might be regretting this decision because the first knock comes in here, the second one might be following pretty soon as well. There it is. And Asus doing some work. And LG Chivas were one of the most consistent teams at getting into top tens throughout any map here in the ALGS, but it looks like that statistic might just be lowering ever so slightly. One last player remaining. Bloodhound Scan is going to do enough to at least spot him out. Do they get the extra KP? No, nah, protection. That's so important for Iron Blood Gaming. Make sure you don't give away that extra KP and an instant way to reset. So now Iron Blood can move comfortably over towards the next zone. We've only got five teams who haven't moved into this first circle. This make, looks like my rank games. I was about to say, make what you will of it, but MDY White 
They're down on the low ground at the moment, just underneath Overlook. This is where the zone will be pulling, and you can kind of see their game plan for yourself, right? If someone who sneaks past, they're going to get ambushed. Black Hand, the team who come into this with the biggest points total. And that 10-point head start towards match point, already adding a few more here, Dan. Yeah, and it's Zane on the receiving end of it as well. Black Hand, so much action that's going on outside of the building, but they are able to just keep their composure, lock things down. Remember, they're one of our Watson teams, even though Watson not as high a pick as the likes of Catalyst, the likes of Bangalore. It has been very important on those teams who have been able to find success, what Watson can achieve. TSM trying to hold down the Vault Tunnel at the moment. A little bit of pressure coming through, and it's going to be Optic Gaming, the Green Wall, who are stepping towards them. Speaking of walls, there's a Cat Wall for you. Dropped thinking about peeking. But for now, the two Cat Walls are going to divide the two teams for long enough to both to reset. When you're looking across the armor checks and you're looking across the weaponry, we know that TSM left Siphon pretty early. They didn't have the best of armors. And a gold R9 and a gold armor, well, drop should be in charge here. And I think World's Edge is going to be a real test for Optic Gaming. They've had a lot of success over on Storm Point, but they just need to be picking up a good average points total. We're just checking in again on MBY White, seeing if anyone's going to be walking into this ambush. As Sweet's just gone down in the kill feed as well, NRG having a scrap. Well, it looks like TSM are going to retreat from that fight against Optic Gaming, but like you mentioned, TSM have been controlling this position within Overlook for quite some time. But Hulk's going to be, have, have to be careful here. He takes a huge amount of damage. Excuse me, it's how on that high ground, trying to take it away from FaZe, and Phony will put him on his back. Reps tries to follow up. He's going to fall as well. It's all down to Verholst to keep TSM in this first game. Verholst will get pranks. But that's not the end of this fight. Oh, the grenade ends TSM's first matchup here, but does not end this engagement. Optic Gaming suddenly getting involved. It's Moist who are holding the high ground as well. Moist actually falling off the back of it, I think, and FaZe might be in this area as well. MT trying to move in, clean up the scraps, couple of thermites. But no skin being singed right now. Look at the intensity as well from MT in the callouts. As he knows those incense could have done a lot of damage, but they're also well aware there's maybe too many players, too many teams over towards those silos. And retreating to the donut building is intelligent play right now. So it looks like FaZe get the chance to reset. Optic will back off. Everyone says job is done. TSM eliminated. We can start to think about now getting into a more comfortable position for this end game. Moist have been controlling Overlook for the majority of this game. It's FaZe who control the backside of those silos. And as we see this zone start to pull, FaZe are going to be in a fantastic position with those silos on their side and the height that they can control to maybe think about at least a top five finish. Elsewhere, just outside of Overlook or just to the north of where we previously were, start off our eSports. And what a story this is, Dan. The first team from the region to make the grand finals and they did it pretty comfortably. Yeah, I think at split two playoffs, we're kind of asking that question of what does this region have to offer after not seeing them get into grand finals? What's the future of this region look like? Are we going to get genuine competitors? And we do start a fight demonstrating that they can hang with the biggest and the best teams in the world. Now, element six, fan favorites. And of course, have shown what they are made of in every single matchup they played so far. In that elimination game that we saw them yesterday, they were so confident in every engagement that came across them. And the young man on your screen right now, Tyler FPS. Wow. Previous two lands, heartbreak for him. Didn't even make it out of groups. And now he's in the grand finals with a chance to win it all. And speaking of stories, my word, the three guys on your screen right now, Oxygen Esports. A meteoric rise through the ranks in the Apex Legends Global Series. The only thing that's missing, Dan, maybe a trophy. They've reached the top 10 76% of the time, have Oxygen on World's Edge. They are one of the better performing World's Edge teams we have in this lobby. And their conversion rate is very successful. As you can see, the Pioneers back up to a full three. They were down and looked like they were out, but never count the Pioneers out. I tell you that for free. What a fight this could be. It's Dojo taking on Oxygen. Black Hole going to force enemy to just retreat for a second. It looks like the dojo might be trying to bait out some of the abilities and survive to fight with just those guns up. Designful did throw his in as well. And look at this fight going down now. This is the one we were watching just a few moments ago. Start a fight. Esports eliminated. Element 6 will win this battle of North Overlook. But can they get the reset? 
Reset should be able to come through, you can see. Rolling Thunder is coming down and arriving just to try and get any sort of extra damage to allow any teams to push up. But E6, they will hold strong and they're gonna be okay. No one is gonna be pressing up on them. Now, zone-wise, E6 is still gonna have to move to the southern side here. This is going back down towards the Vault Tunnel where TSM were earlier, where Optic Gaming currently hold presence. As for FaZe, they should be okay there where they are. Moist are going to have to move as well. Pulverix, NDY White also going to have to move eventually. But this is great news for all those teams arriving from the southern side, like Oxygen, like Ironblood Gaming. If you can fight your way in, you're going to be in one of the better spots. Tough thing, though, for those teams on the west side. It's an uphill battle, right? You're going to have the likes of Optic, FaZe, Moist, NDY White, whoever is on the Overlook side of the map will be able to easily fire down and use a try and work your way up that hill with such little cover. But NRG down to a one. Nathan on his own, but let's take ourselves back to yesterday. Nathan was a solo and NRG managed to get back into the game late. And NRG, it's constantly been that question of, are they still a team that can compete for a championship? It was all the talk about TSM versus Sweet. Hal versus Sweet, what can he do as an IGL? And I think yesterday we really saw NRG coming to their own. They look like the NRG of old. If they can match that same kind of pace that we saw in the elimination bracket, there's no reason why NRG can't be up there on match point and competing for this championship. Well, here's Dreamfire. What a performance it's been from these three young men. Huge support in the crowd as well. The sandwich gets a couple of shots down with that hemlock. Now we're starting to see the teams be forced together by that zone. Still a lot of teams on the outside of where that zone is going to be closing pretty soon. So now it looks like Dreamfire trying to kind of pick their targets, trying to work their way in. They will be safe for the next zone. But Element 6 are the team who are holding them for now. Dreamfire averaging about 7.8 points per game on World's Edge, which is one of the top three in the lobby. But they haven't been able to convert it into victories, but that's okay. You can have maps where you're better at scoring points and then have the maps where you're better at getting wins because we're going to be changing maps every single two. You just need to make sure you're getting up there, getting closer to that match point threshold, which as a reminder, in case you are just tuning in, 50 points is where these teams need to get before they have the opportunity to win this tournament. And they'll need a victory. Now, Ascent suddenly getting forced into an engagement here with Black Hat. Black Hat have a Prowler and trust me, they've got three extremely strong players as well. I am like gaming will be our 15th team to be eliminated. Or the fifth team, I should say. That Prowler's doing damage, but not enough. They're trapped at the moment underneath this building, but the knockdown shield, the knockdown no! shield! It's too much for Ascent to deal with. Well, team one has been taken out, but surely team two is not going to be able to do it. Into the zone you go, a quick syringe to try and survive. Timed it, times it correctly. Just about manages to stay alive, but Black Hand, unfortunately, this time around, the syringe just takes too long to distribute those meds. They will fall here. As we see the zone force these fights, enter Force 36 now, 43 seconds till they have to leave No Name and move to the east. What did I just see on my screen, by the way? I feel a little bit <laughs> sick. Enter Force 36, now they're in the graveyard of death boxes over towards No Name. And a few teams have fallen early here because this is a rough circle to try and rotate into now. You were talking about it, fighting uphill for a lot of these squads. Oxygen are going to be one of these teams who holds the height over the teams that are arriving late. Now, Oxygen, we've mentioned it already in this tournament, the rise from the arena players to now one of the best teams in the world. And they have been one of the best World Edge teams as well. They match the likes of TSM and NRG in victories on this map. And their top 10 percentage is 76%. They find themselves in the top 10. And they're very close to achieving that again here in match number one. Well, a lot of congestion starting to happen, as you would imagine at this stage. Dreamfire trying to hold down the zip line from the bottom of the tunnel below them. They will have to keep moving forward. As you can see in the top left-hand side of your screen, the zone is going to force them to take some of these fights. At the moment, Dreamfire are looking for a third-party opportunity. If they get a little bit of damage down and they see a couple of knocks going down, that will be their trigger to go forward and try and clean up that damage. The dojo at the moment struggling to stay alive. They are trapped in between so many different squads. It was a long journey for Dojo, and it could be coming to an end here if they are not careful. Can they make that victory against Alliance worth it? As MDY White are also there, Oxygen getting involved, Dreamfire from a distance. The zone just a problem there. You can see Enter Force 36 couldn't get through Dreamfire. 
and Dreamfire survive as we go for the first time in our grand finals into our top 10. Eight squads now remaining as the dojo will fall. But Optic now seeing all this from a distance. Remember, they were on the southern side. Oxygen eliminated. Optic still holding strong, still making sure that they dominate and own this area because if they can continue to hold this southern side on set, they position themselves so well for the final circle. And Optic have been here almost since dot, day dot on this map really have controlled the space so well. They saw an opportunity there to clean out that side of the match, but didn't quite see. There was multiple teams, and certainly Dreamfire, who was still alive as a full three. And let me tell you, Nathan has the ability for NRG to make this a game to remember. And whilst Overlook looked very cozy, very safe at one point, now it looks like an absolute death pit. Because when this circle closes, FaZe, Polvrix, E6 all have to move in to Moist Esports who are waiting. And by the way, Optic are not far away on that southern side. Optic can definitely get involved. But Moist are down to just a two. Waltzy and Fussy hiding away, ratting away together, playing sardines right now. But FaZe is still alive. FaZe still control this silo area that we talked about right at the start of the game. But now they're going to be forced to make a play. Ponyhead on the horizon does have the ability to jump back up onto the top of the silos in front of him, but maybe he's thinking it's time for some KP. The grab lift will take them up to that height, and FaZe on this next silo will be safe as well. Yeah, this silo is perfect for them, and they've got eyes on below. It looked like it was a comfortable position oh. to hold, but Saku gets taken down, and now FaZe can just rain down hell from above here. Polverex eliminated in the meantime. The black hole might be absolutely golden. Here from Phonyhead, if that Arcstar can connect, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. But Snipe down, still on top of that height, and also out of Prowler as now Dreamfire make their move. Optic versus Dreamfire, a huge fight between two of our giants in this lobby. Dreamfire still a full and healthy three. No! One gets taken down, Roy has fallen, and 3MZ, the last remaining player. Can you do it, Sandwich, for the team? It's Skittle Cakes. Versus 3MZ, Dreamfire will fall. NRG also fall as well, but force their way into great placement points as a solo. Speaking of which, Fussy now finds himself on his own as FaZe still command the height. FaZe only had 25% into the top five on World's Edge coming into these finals. FaZe still have that opportunity to really put destiny in their own hands, get a victory early on in this tournament to give them that belief. And do you know what they've done very well from this silo? They've not got carried away. When they've had players below them, black hole goes down, grenades go down. You could drop knowing you can win that fight. But that is a risk because then it invites other teams pressure. But one good thing for them as well is that E6 aren't playing the horizon. So they don't have to worry about a team grav lifting up on them. They can just keep their eyes on them. Make sure that when they move, we're going to be still in position to put some shots down. Phony head on the horizon when he drops as well will be so vital to getting that initial damage, hitting the floor quickly with that passive and being able to be guns up to do the initial damage for FaZe. So as a two, Moist can really influence this final circle. And now here comes the call for FaZe. Here's the play from FaZe. They want to take down E6. And I mentioned that Snipe down has a Prowler. Huge damage coming out of Eric Rona. He will clean our element six. Moist Esports also dispatched with as Optic and FaZe start to move towards each other. Optic Gaming versus FaZe Clan. This is Esports Org's royalty going up against each other right now. But FaZe, they have to try and reset. Optic are far healthier in the moment, but both Dark Bells are down. One, three, four! Knocked with the damage, knocked with two. Optic Gaming surely in this position must be able to win our first game of the grand finals. The form team coming into this week in Birmingham, just have to deal with one more player. Drop goes in, drop with the spray, drop with the win. And the green wall stands tallest in our first game of the grand finals. Such an excellently played final circle from Optic Gaming, from controlling the southern area just by the vault tunnel to then pushing in when they needed to, and eliminating Moist when they needed to. As soon as they saw the fight happen between FaZe and E6, they knew that was their opportunity to then take a fight of their own. They would be isolated, they could win, and then they could move on. They didn't take as much damage against Moist as FaZe did against E6, because, of course, it was a three versus two on their side. But then in that final circle, things can still get dicey. It is all down to the Catalyst player when those Dark Veils are down, peeking through, having the confidence to take those fights. 
and the damage output that we saw from Optic Gaming was glorious. And look at the crowd lighting up green as well for Optic Gaming. I mentioned coming into this tournament, the three guys you can see on your screens right now in championship whites, by the way, looked like they finally found the formula that made them such a scary team. What feels like all those months ago. This is your final zone. This is how Optic took game one. And Optic Gaming coming into the finals, they'd only won World's Edge once so far this tournament. It was Storm Point where they've been finding the majority of their victories. And this does bode well going into match point to make sure you can confidently play both maps. And we know what a good fighting team Optic are. I mean, Skill Cake, I will always give him his credit for what an impressive and incredible 1vx player he can be. But when you're alongside Knocked and Dropped, who also could do exactly the same thing, you have three players who are more than happy to take a fight against multiple people. And I think Knocked is the player to focus on in these final moments. We always talk about on the catalyst, especially in a 3v3 with Cavals down, the responsibility you have on your shoulders to poke through that dark fail. That's exactly what he does. And one clips to give them that player advantage. From then, it's a 1v2. And even with a knockdown shield to play around, you just felt like it was never going to fall through the fingers of Optic. Yeah, and even though in a two versus one like this, there's always that maybe a little bit of extra pressure on your shoulders of what happens if we throw this one away. But it was great positioning from the green wall to ensure they surrounded that final player and took the right angles. And with that victory, Optic Gaming put themselves already halfway to match point. 25 points on the board. A good start to what could be a very good day for Optic fans around the world. Here are your match one results. That 25 point total, absolutely huge. FaZe though, what a game it was from them. And we're gonna talk just for a moment about FaZe and Snipe Down. One of, he has the opportunity here in Birmingham to be one of such a select class of players, of controller players who have won world championships in not just one game, but maybe two. I mean, if Snipe Down were to win the ALGS Championships, he certainly would be up there with the greatest ever controller players across multiple titles. That is without a doubt. But it is a long old journey, but at least FaZe have started that journey here today. If it was a disappointing match number one, you're kind of left thinking, okay, what do we see from FaZe? Now, for some of our consistent teams throughout the tournament, they had a slightly quieter game. Of course, Black Hand have been incredible at scoring points, our highest points per game across the tournament out of any teams in this lobby. They still picked up seven despite the placement points that they found. TSM, they got knocked out early when they tried to make their move towards Overlook because they had three teams looking at them, for goodness sake. Alliance probably feeling pretty concerned. Interesting to see how they approach the next game on World's Edge because that contest against the Dojo, I can't really remember one game where it felt like it went well for them. Optic fans feeling pretty good about things, though. There's some stats coming in from the green wall. 13 kills, Dan. 13 kills in the first game of a grand final. And remember, Optic Gaming started with seven points coming into this as well. So plus the 25, they're on 32. They are well on their way to that match point threshold. They are so far ahead of the rest of the pack right now. If they have a similar game, even a worse game, but still just somewhat similar, they might find themselves on match point after two. We have seen though, being there early doesn't mean you're gonna be able to close out. Usually we have six, seven, anything up to what feels like 15 teams ending up on match point. And then it's just about who has the ices of plays in those final moments. Black hands, second place still just behind them, but that gap's starting to open up even after one game. Here is a, your ALGS MVP vote powered by Monster Energy. If you want to vote now, use those hashtags you can see on your screen to support your favorite player. Yeah, make sure you get those votes in so that we can crown the right champion in terms of an MVP winner. Uh, you can join, maybe they can join the greats because we have had some of the best players in the world, of course, get that MVP at these tournaments. Well, that's going to do it all. As you can see, the final hashtags of the players who are going to be nominated for your ALGS MVP. Time for us to jump into a break now here in Birmingham. When we get back, more World's Edge, more Apex Legends.
WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back, everybody, to the ALGS Championship Finals. Game one in the books. This event is officially a sellout. Thank you guys so much for joining us here in the venue in Birmingham, UK, Results World Arena. I'm Vicky Kitty. I'm joined with Genome. We're joined with this amazing crowd. The fans giving the teams all the energy that they need. And what a way to start our finals day with Optic taking the dub with 13 KP to set us off. Optic, a little bit of a sleeper pick, it feels like. There's been a lot of attention on some other teams. TSM, NRG with their big win in the elimination bracket as well. But Optic Gaming, honestly, this tournament have never looked anything short of stellar in my eyes. And here in the biggest lobby, they come out with a massive win to start. And non-stop fighting from the very beginning too, Genome. We saw with Alliance surprising Dojo off the rip with a 50-50 in Thermal, where Dojo was able to win, and it looks like we're going right back here. A little bit of the mind games. It didn't help them out last time. Maybe the straight-up man-to-man -man fight will. See how this plays out with Hockey's being the first to go down here. In fact, having to drop down enemy with the purple Evo, Dojo had that slight health advantage before design for meets Hockey's on the floor. But no, he's only got the Havoc and limited ammunition here. Exactly. No turbo on it either. You know, you've got to wind up. Goes in with the slide down. That first spray was pretty good. Now with effect gone. Looks like this one. Dojo could have it again, two in a row. Alliance, they gave up that POI, and now we're getting to see KCP, the other 50-50 that we saw happen between KCP and, I believe it was Real Lies, and KCP did come out on top of this one, but now with Zane being the last one alive, let's see if that's gonna be the same case. Harvester, it's been such a, a point of contention for many, many teams here. And once again, we're seeing oh. players fight over this key central rotational POI and realize once again will fall. All right, we got the same results after what we had seen from game number one. Sure, you could try this out now when it's early in the lobby. This is match point format. All right, Nasky. All right, Nasky. I got to talk to him a little bit yesterday. He said, it's all about the mind game. Sometimes I'm going to tell all the IGLs something different so that way maybe they think that we're going to go for one thing when in reality we're going for another. And you can see he is exerting that confidence when we take a look at our other teams and where the circle is going to be pulling over to the north side. So it doesn't quite clip the top of the map. That makes me think it could be going a little more maybe to survey camp. Uh, potentially even, it's been a while, but uh, you know, maybe we get an ending down near the train station, down near where Black Hand is, a, a name that's really been on everyone's lips. And oh, yeah. I mean, going into this series, uh, you know, they had so many of the top stats in their favor. You can see Dreamfire now, um, also coming down from Countdown. Straight into the vault. Oh, disrupt around, picked up. Who knows? Maybe you drop the R99 for an alternator and, well, has the option. Yeah. Ah. Things, a few things before they rotate away. Exiting out of that vault with amazing loot. Taking a look at E6, who had an amazing starting performance in that first game. And we have a lot of E6 fans in the crowd. The chant goes out. <laughs> I love this. I get goosebumps being here live, being able to see our players compete in the big stage here, setting the scene with the fans to give them their support. We saw where the circle was pulling over to that north side. It could be pulling a little bit by survey. We have to see teams like Black Hand, though, have already gotten ahead of the curve, have already placed themselves on the north side of those tracks instead of the tunnel. So that way, in case it does pull over to survey, they have a better rotation. And if it does pull towards Skyhook, they don't have to funnel their way outside of the buildings of survey, where we currently see on the outskirts over by Epi. It's going to be moist. Yeah, Moist very often like to set up in the buildings in survey. And obviously, uh, with that rotation over from Overlook, Usually it's not that hard for them to get a spot, but this is a land finals lobby. Everything is harder here. EMP going out. 
having to reset around the other side of the rock, while we also see FaZe already taking control over those buildings, also having amazing performance in that first game too, getting second place. It did look like that building on the right, the one to the sort of northeast of Survey Camp was free, at least from our POV there, but if Moise get uh, they're too beleaguered on the way to there. It would be a huge blow to their chances in this game if they can't make it into this building. I mean, last time they were over at Overlook, they, they gave up the silos when, uh, you know, you've seen so many times that they've tried to sit in that position and then the zone has pulled away down towards Ghost Town, away from Overlook, and finally, um, you know, it comes a bit, a bit closer to home and they don't manage to capitalize on it. Yeah, in a very similar case here with that positioning that we saw prior, um, they are waiting on the outside because FaZe is already taking control over that building. So many other teams too pulverized on the other side like we saw before that EMP rang out. Start a fight. The middle sniper tower here in Skyhook. Having the high ground but still rocking. Double blue, one white. NRG on the other hand. Double purple gold in the hands of Sweet. And the nemesis that they were able to craft before they went for their rotation outside of staging. I'm expecting a few of these early game lulls, Vicky. I mean, you know, we're getting the two contests, so it thins out the lobby a little bit just to start with. But it has been another land where we've seen a lot of the rotational teams, a lot of the teams who like to play zone get in there early and find their spots. They've made it through to the finals lobby, so it does mean the end circles tend to be a little more chaotic. And the start just uh, takes a little bit while longer to ramp up. I love the pacing of that first game. Just start off our finals lobby. High octane action from the start before things slightly oh. slow down. Moist are in a very difficult spot, at least inside the truck. They have the Bangalore smoke, but look at where FaZe is still inside that northern building. So is the building across there still open? That's my question, right? I mean, sometimes, you know, when you get the uh, observer views, it doesn't bring up all the names, but it really looks like it, that building is open to me. I'm not sure, uh, you know, Moisa realized this. And this is one of the big differences. There's no seer in the meta anymore. Mm -hmm. you, you can't just make your way into this caravan, you know, pop the heartbeat sensor and be like, hey guys, the building clear, let's go take it. You have to actually work that out. And maybe because the door was open there, maybe they saw someone run in and out of it at some point. But it seems like for some reason, they're thinking that they can't go into that building right now. And it's so much better of a spot than the caravan they're currently in. I mean, with most teams running Catalyst, you would expect maybe a reinforced door is there just to be an indicator to let other teams know that, hey, we've already secured this space. But I like how you bring up the point with the Seer. That's why we've been seeing the substitution for the Bloodhound instead over the course of the tournament. So we see teams like LG use an evac Ooh. tower to already fly in. It looks like they were actually already engaging on a fight before. I saw the Zion was low earlier. He went for a reset. They also yep. got a knock Let's here. Knock. And talking about the Bloodhound, Nizu being on the Bloodhound as he pops the Beast of the Hunt. And this is great, it'll give them the oh. information. He can take the gravity lift right up behind the dojo here. You can see Timmy with the full kill there. Uyanya getting the cycle right after he was able to reset just temporarily, but on the high ground, it's not an issue. I have the high ground now with the gravity lift. Yanya sending Dojo back to the lobby in 18th. LG securing some extra points on the board for them. Yeah, look as if the nine points coming into this weren't enough already, but it, look at that IBG straight back on the, on the other side of them, and they've got them locked into the zone. Ooh, IBG. Actually rotating through stacks on the other side here. They are backing away. I do like this call. If they were able to get any Evo Shield checks, they could see that they're already at a health disadvantage. So much more fighting now being done in the mouth of Cave, exiting out from the south side of Skyhook. It looks like it was Oxygen and Enter Force 36 who are just playing much more passively, backing away from a fight that has been engaged. Now Pioneers are shooting at them from Countdown. It's 30, 30 shots. Literally make your eyes water. And that's also information for KCP to know that this squad that is flying through with the evac tower have double whites, one blue from ILY, and it looks like they may be opting to go for the crafter if they have some extra time, as KCP may actually be rotating from the north side. No digi yet in the crafter, you can still find it on the floor, but if the rotation of the replicator does rotate out in the next hour or so, we may be able to see that move its way into this finals lobby. Mm, and with Bangalore being, I believe, the most picked legend out of any legend so far in this tournament, 
Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the pick goes up even more once that rotation happens. But yeah, as you say, at the moment, it is the extended heavy mag and the 2x in there. Now, the zone has actually shifted away from survey camp. As you can see, FaZe eventually took that building to the north, and uh, Moist did make their way. I think FaZe were in there uh, initially, actually. But all of these four squads, uh, you know, they're not going to have access to, to zone knowledge at the moment. Eventually, they're going to probably have to make their way over either the Skyhook, or if it does pull down again uh, and go towards the train station. What I think is beautiful about FaZe's position here is Genome, you called up this building being free. FaZe also doesn't have obviously no seer no bloodhound they don't have a scan character to get information to see if there's any team in there now noting that there is space they are able to take control over that building which also has allowed boys to get a better position inside the building right next to them that face had just we had been able to take over prior ascend taking the skies with Luka, still sticking to the valkyrie with the skyward dive just peeing in the truck to see if they could take control over this, and it is free for right now, but playing on the outskirts, this is also a gamble for them to hold, seeing that they already have the circle information for where it's going to be pulling. They do, with the crypto. Uh, does that reach to the ring console that's all the way over to uh, in Skyhook West there? Very possibly. The other thing, though, is they have the Watson, and in my opinion, in those caravans, they are so much more playable if you've got the Watson. I mean, it's a little bit of a death trap sometimes, but if you put the pylon down, all of a sudden the grenades that just flush you out like a pack of rats, um, it stops all of that. It's just so much stronger. And it works when you're in the late game and uh, Reps is out here with the Fusey and trying to cycle you out, but I love that you noted the Watson. That's how they were able to get the scan on that beacon originally since they were able to rotate around there and be able to secure that building while also using the Crypto Drone. So if they do have a survey beacon, get information where the other teams are in the area. There's only a couple of teams playing Watson at this tournament, but it's actually the highest win rate or the highest average placement pick out of any legend so far because the couple of teams that have been playing it, Blackhand, Ascend, have been doing so fantastically. And, I mean, we talk about them. They're two that have read this circle correctly. Look at this mm. Blackhand with a tunnel position, which will be really great until late game, and Ascend sitting there in the caravan. I've seen the circle a few times, Genome, and I like that you made the mention about the Watson too, because that was also a swap where we saw from NRG in yesterday's lobby, where they were able to secure Nathan being on that Watson and then yeah. being able to play for more late game. Big change. But they did not just get late game and get the placement points. They also got the KP to add on top of it. TSM, we talked about the fuse pick. We saw where they're located right now on that slight lip of a high ground exiting out of Epi. They're not in that next circle, but just waiting to play by the edge where they may actually meet up with Moist, who actually gave up the building in survey camp after seeing that the circle has already shifted away. A lot of the teams in survey that didn't get to predict where that circle was moving from one side of that mountain to another have now had to funnel out and they may actually put into the line of sight of Black Hand. We also tune into Oxygen, who have not left from the spot been kind of playing by the mouth of this tunnel. And there's three teams, four teams in this area between Oxygen, LG is about to get sandwiched by IBG, and Dreamfire who are gonna circle keep these teams. Yeah, so by the, the blue uh, color you can see on that utility, that is of course LG's cat wall. So they've had to use that a little bit reactively there with IBG coming in behind them. In the meantime, Oxygen have used that evac tower to get out ahead. And now LG uh, are in a fantastic position. They were, you know, a little bit worried a second ago, but now you can see it's IBG full sending them. Oh, Zinke moving in, but he gets beamed. They're trying to fight their way from inside the circle. Huge crash coming in as he sets up the art star too. They get the trade as Zinke's able to find Hotwadis. Asia goes down right afterwards, and Moist Esports and your feet do get eliminated. They were fighting Oxygen before, and IBG is going to be meeting them right back in the lobby. But this is the fight that we were mentioning as Oxygen had flew over them prior. They were in some trouble. MDY White also cannot get to safety. Dreamfire are able to circle keep the teams that are funneling out from all the chaos that was happening by that southern vault side. Oh my god, so much KP going the way of Dreamfire. The fans loving it. Second plays up to 20 points already and that's not it i don't know if they're done just yet because optic gaming are now on the other side of them here they were waiting they were waiting patiently try to engage but it may actually end up biting them right back because optic now having to rotate away as we see the teams that are sharing the building over by skyhook east it's enter force 36 and e6 TSM fighting on the rooftop of survey. Look how many teams already cycled out of here because they wanted to get involved in the chaos. They heard the fighting happening here before and Pulverex are running away as a solo. 
TSM all the way on the side here, but it looks like uh, Optic, I think, might have actually fallen to Dreamfire, at least a couple of the members. So Dreamfire, yeah, you can see two extra KP picked up there. Amazing work from these guys, just continuing to romp forward. Um, as we saw over in Skyhook, there's a lot of uh, teams clustered in one building. I believe it was KCP, Element 6, and E36, all in the same one. They'll be fine for one more circle. And Dreamfire, I think they're just going to keep roaming and keep, uh, you know, letting blood, essentially, with uh, Oxygen right ahead of them. Yeah, keep playing outside the circle. They are going to have to be moving now. The circle is closing in right behind them. They couldn't find the rat that was Optic Gaming. As they move forward, they note that Oxygen is also not a full squad. I believe it's just a duel left for this team if they weren't able to reset an NRG. Hugging the mouth of this tunnel. Setting up Catwall for Catwall on the other side. This may be shared with TSM looking to engage, exiting out of survey. How gets taken out by Nathan, who has been going crazy in these lobbies so far, leading the overall kill leader in the overall days that we've had leading up to this final day. The Catwall's not enough to save TSM. I mean, they just get sandwiched here. Blackhand on the top. The Polvorex Rat actually coming in from the back. Don't know how long f is going to be a be able to stay alive, does actually get involved, but unfortunately gets caught in the crossfire. Now it really comes down to Black Hand and LG. Wanted to steal that one real quick. Four for F Chan though, and Black Hand engaging on this fight versus NRG, who were able to reset rather quickly. Sweet has a bump shield cell just yet because they got the crack over Black Hand, and it looks like squad after squad they fall. As Nathan going crazy with the flat line, being the kill leader now in this one game alone. TSM Black Hand fall the hands of NRG. It's a massive fight to win there in the tunnel. But as we look towards the circle, it's Dreamfire who struggles. You can see they've made it up to the top here. At this point in the game, usually it's an okay spot to play. I wonder what's been, uh, you know, really giving them trouble here. Was it the fuse? Is someone just locking them down with knuckle clusters? Oxygen. They were able to rotate here as a duo. Now one alive underneath Dreamfire, who are also in trouble. Ascend have not moved from the truck that they positioned themselves from the very beginning when we saw them make that call. A team that is always so consistent in calling out these end circles and putting themselves in the best spot. Enter Force 36, though, will have to move shortly. So you can see the circle will be pulling to their nose, and they're already engaging in the feed. A fight with energy actually shooting Dreamfire and Oxygen in the distance. Okay, circle closing in now, 40 seconds left. All three teams in this building need to work their way out. What is the exit strategy? How do they make their way up? They've got a bit of a cliff ahead of them. It looks like we actually did get the reset there by Dreamfire. So patience pays off for them, but now NRG right on top of them doesn't work out. That was getting ahead of themselves real quick. Open up the Red Sea as the double catwalk comes in. Enter Force 36, playing for their lives with only blue evil shields playing on the edge. KCP is over to their right, and Dreamfighter are still fighting for their lives on this sniper tower. Oh. The one, two, Scooby Doo, and the Bangalore, Cold Steel. You could call her Cold Blooded. Now she's going to be able to reset on the high ground. 3 MC. Enter Force 36, Aim buckles down. And they meet themselves in sixth place in this lobby. KCP still fighting for their lives. Can they get the reset? If they could get this res, Nasky, you could hear the comms, you could see him in the camera. He was feeling himself before. A little mini pop-off when we saw them win the 50-50 earlier on in this game like we saw in the last game. Now, meanwhile, look at all this chaos playing out underneath their feet. He doesn't even look stressed, honestly. At this point, Nasky is actually looking fresh. He's looking happy with their position. And as you said, you know, they've walked into each game with a straight-up 3kp. No problems. Dreamfire gets the reset wow. again. Are you kidding me? Doesn't matter what you throw at them up on the tower here, they just keep coming back from the dead. Literally zombies right here. They just do not stop. Does a little shimmy shade in the air before Dab's driving behind some cover and the EMP now coming in from Kashero. Yeah, the problem is though, they are right on the edge of the circle. They will have to drop down immediately. You can see they waste no time doing that and try and use some smoke to cover, but Ascend have them on lock. Ascend trying to ride the momentum. Gets the cracker reaches before, but misses some of those flatline shots. Having to back away as post kill was incredibly low. Doesn't want to overextend when they're low too, but gets the crack. Here comes the follow-up from him. 
10, but having to look to their backs. E6 get eliminated, but at what cost? Sets up the Watts and Pilot Fences, and Dreamfire, after resetting, not once, not twice, not even three times, are gonna be able to move in to try to take this game against Ascend. Yeah, that was start a fight to Ascend, actually, off the back of that. They're gonna be a duo, and I don't think there's any way that they can come out on top. Your Chinese team, Dreamfire, moving up into first place already. Can they get the win to cap it off? He's got the Prowler, he's got the high ground, and Dreamfire are your game two winners. The crowd goes crazy. The shines of red lighting up the crowd. There he is on the desk, the IGL. One of the hardest players to kill in this entire lobby. Has a KD of 1.91 working into this. You need to throw two pro players, two of the best players in the world at this man every game to even take him down. Look at the pop-up. Look at the pants. He's rocking some style, they're, I mean. They're waiting for the checkered flag already, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> they got the memo to come here looking snazzy for finals day. Damn. But can we talk about what an intense game that was for them? By the way, they must have profited off of like over 15 KP. They were fighting team after team that was fighting for that high ground spot. We saw Energy make their way over there. We saw Oxygen playing for their lives on the low ground. 50 KP with 4.5K damage on top of the dub. Are you kidding me? Seven for their Horizon player, Peter there. Five for Royi, the man who has been trying to hold them up at land for the longest time. And there he is, the one who's finally getting a bit more of the limelight here at the championship, Vicky. It's 3MZ. Do you know, let's also not forget that they started off the day with eight points. They advanced match starting points, and now they've secured double digit KP. They got first place. They were able to hold this final position in this final circle as we take a look. Okay, so this is where they knew they were gonna have to get off. All right, so they, they start shuffling the teams around them. The Bangalore ult goes down first, just to make sure this team cannot hold the high ground in front of them, as you can see. That's already worked in securing this position on the low ground. And even without the Digi here for Rory, able to take the gravity lift, already taking care of so many teams, feeling that momentum, and also able to time this fight. After we saw Ascend take care of E6 at the very end, Start if I had taken that fight also earlier on, after KCP get eliminated, they couldn't get the full reset, so Dreamfire were able to sandwich around Ascend in this final circle from one angle to another, and it's the split position that they were able to hug Shoulder to shoulder, that also allowed them to not overextend too. Gets to the high ground, prioritize their positioning to have that slight advantage. And come on, yeah, Peter with the Prowler in his hand, you know the damage is going to be laid down. Yeah, it was really once their bang ult went down, the rest of the lobby was kind of forced into a corner. Uh, and from there, you know, Ascend were forced to fight, start a fight in front of them. They were all, uh, you know, just pushed all the way to the opposite side of the circle. It made it so easy for Dreamfire at that point to come out with not only the 12 points for winning the game, but the 15 kills on top of it. I mean, they already had a good amount to start with, Vicky. This means Dreamfire are already on game who edging close to match points. After just two games alone? Are you kidding me? In a lobby like this, Gino? That's crazy. This probably sets them up for like, what, 43 points in total? If we combine what they got for KP, 15 kills as you see on your screens, the dub on top of that, again, the match points that they already started with being eight points going into this day. This is the best position you could be if you are dream bar and you're as consistent as they are when it comes to taking games. So unreal. I mean, Dreamfire have done it before, right? We've seen them take out big titles in APAC South, but when it comes to the LAN, you know, they have had to play with those subs in previous ones. We saw a lot of the players coming over, Boyle, uh, Bolin, uh, you know, Jackie QQ, um, you know, really helping them out okay. in times of need. 
Ah, but now that they've finally got everyone together and they've also got that synergy coming back in, not only because they've been playing together for such a long time, but finally at LAN as well, um, you know, they've shown up. They've shown up like they've never shown up before. And I, I honestly think the, uh, the, the fans and, and the people um, from our region have been watching them for the longest time have believed in them. So it's so fantastic to see that they're now believing in themselves. It's lovely. It's lovely talking about how that also allows them to get into this more confident mindset. We talk about these individual players and what they provide to these teams and to the community in general. Well, guys, exiting out of game two and talking about something that we've been talking about for months now, I'm so happy to announce our Positive Player Award. We have the results. Let's throw it to it. Who's excited? Ready and excited. Oh, it's showtime. Let's cause a kerfuffle, shall we? Or gets left behind. Nice, good stuff, boys. Nice. Red, 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 three. One dead. Nice. 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 Good job on that, uh, team. GG's, that's a banger game. Not bad, shoot. Let's go. We're a team. We look out for each other. Guess we don't make such a bad team after all. Well, on behalf of everyone in the Apex Legends community, thank you for everything you do to make it a positive place to play. You are the winner of EA's Positive Player Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel honored to uh, have been given this award. I really appreciate that you guys see me as a positive player. What do you want to say to players everywhere about staying positive? Respect your teammates. Don't trash talk if you don't have to. Try and stay positive. If you don't, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say it. Thank you again. And we'll see you in ALGS year four. Thank you, guys. Oh, my God. Nice. Good stuff. The host. Let's get it, baby. Congratulations to Biggie. Verholst getting the Positive Player Award, a staple in the competitive Apex Legends community. He deserves this. He is one of the most wholesome people I have been able to meet in this community, and he brings that out in his own gameplay, in his own team play. And I feel like he's such a big influence when it comes to seeing the young crowd that wants to get involved in Apex, what they should do, and who they should look up to when it comes to being a positive player themselves in-game. And as you've seen some of the uh, content that TSM has actually put, uh, put out around Verholz, I think you'll understand why as well, Vicky, because he's the kind of guy who's striving to always be uh, you know, a better person, not just a better player. And I'm so happy uh, you know, that he grabbed that because he really does exemplify that in the Apex Legends eSports community. All right, now we're going to wrap the uh, over to the map rotation. And guess what? We're heading over to Storm Point. Well, we will be rotating through the maps every two games here in our Match Point Finals, Vicky. Yeah, that's the difference here for Finals Day. Here in Match Point format isn't the only thing you have to keep in mind. It's the fact that we will be rotating through each World Edge and Storm Point maps every two games. World's Edge, we saw Optic take up in game number one. We saw Dreamfire have an insane game for game number two. Now for Storm Point, game three, we get to see these teams that have more of that consistency, their team composition that works better into their gameplay as we move over to Storm Point. So what's going to change over here at Storm Point? Well, the legend picks, for one, will be changing a little bit. I mean, you tend to see more Bangalore over on Storm Point. Uh, we saw a couple of fuse picks i think there were two or three in the last lobby over in world's edge that doesn't necessarily make its way over um it'll be interesting to see tsm do they opt to, opt to go for that no they're going bang cat horizon 
I think Element 6 was the other team who was picking up the fuse, and they seem to also have opted away from that for Stormpoint. Also looks the same for NRG. I saw Nathan being on that Bangalore in our beautiful screens here in the arena. All right, guys, let's not waste any more time. Match number three, our first match on to Stormpoint for our finals day. Let's get started. All right, with a new map now, Gino, we all also are gonna be having different POIs, different 50-50s. And if I'm not incorrect here, we may be seeing a 50-50 with KCP and Dreamfire by the mill. That is to say, if things don't swap up like we saw off the rip in game number one on World's Edge between Alliance and Dojo. Ooh, okay, we've even got, uh, yeah, Blackhand have changed up from what we thought they might be going for, not going for the contest immediately. But as you say, we're definitely happening having one over at the mill. Storm Point, World's Edge, doesn't matter. These two teams are going to be going up against each other all day long. Well, I like the swap up from Black Hand too. We also had noted, you know, in behind the scenes, they were trying to fight for a POI originally, but here's that 50 50 off the rip to get those bins with the better armor. Exactly. You see Dreamfire landing on the better side. They pick up the purples. That's a big advantage. Not only that, we do see the knocks. Are they going to be able to get a full reset here? Still just trying to get into position. Coming in from the skies on the gravity lip, but also has a knockdown right in front of him to play <gasps> off of from a slight lip. But Optic are here! <gasps> they didn't land a down base. Optic, <laughs> the rogue element, have come in to immediately third party this, and I'm not sure either team expected it. I'm sure their invite to the party was lost in the mail somehow, but don't worry, they will not miss it for the world. Skittle okay, getting involved here too. He's got the Devo in his hand, and you could already see Zane running away, understanding, all right, this is not what we were expecting here. We're just gonna have to go for a reset, cut our losses, but the same thing could be said about Dreamfire. I believe we saw Rory up in the distance here that maybe was able to get away, but that's gonna be so important because that's something to note going into game number two, going into the second game on Storm Point for Optic Gaming to take advantage of. It's all about the mind game before you dive into the lobby. Well, Pioneers lost one. It looks like Dreamfire lost two. So they actually come out no worse way. off, even though right to start with, they were doing better in the contest. Dojo oh. and TSM have already wait. run into each other at wall. Dojo had gotten the advantage off the rip already. They had taken one out from TSM. Now they take Verholz next. There's only one left from TSM. But Dojo taking this fight over oh by wall God. and eliminating. TSM has a first team to go in the lobby before Dreamfire gets found out too. The rest of the lobby breathes a sigh of relief there, Vicky. Dreamfire were on 43 points. It wasn't a big stretch that they would get to match point after our first game on Storm Point here. So maybe that was one of the reasons why Optic decided to drop on them. That is probably exactly the reason, because think about it, if Dreamfire does come out on top from that 50-50, that's even more points going in their favor if they eliminate KCP from this lobby. So good game plan here by Optic Gaming. KCP is still alive for right now, and this may be where the circle's gonna be pulling us towards Launchpad. 100%, I am reading this as a Launchpad circle. As you can see here, circle's touching. Um, uh, very much expecting it to keep pulling towards launch pad. And at that point, FaZe, who land there, they agree with this, right? Um, they do have the ring console. They got that information looted up very quickly. And then they took up the position on the catwalk. That is exactly where you want to be. It's a very hard, uh, you know, place to siege. Uh, the only problem is you need to eventually, you know, go on a little hunting, hunt to gather a party and, and find some loot because you're sitting up there, you do want to do some damage and, uh, you know, it's not the safest spot necessarily. You can take, uh, there's quite a few angles that people will get on you. So uh, you want to stay up there um, for quite a while, but it'll be interesting to see if anyone, you know, maybe pops an evac tower and, and lands on and tries to take out phase that way. At least for FaZe's uh, point and their team composition, like most of the teams that we've seen thus far in this lobby, they are running the Horizon, Catalyst, and Bangalore, so they will be able to at least reinforce the door up above on the high ground here and also overlook some of the action happening here. Or it could be a team that could land on them, but it could be incredibly risky with how many squads have already infiltrated launch pads, such as Start of Fight Esports, playing off this low ground and playing to the strength of their own team comp, one of the teams running the Watson. Okay, other teams flying in now. A lot of 
congestion happening around launch pad. A couple of teams, uh, Optic Gaming actually, they all went back to loot down beast, by the way, after messing up everyone over at the mill. So uh, they're probably going to be late to the party, but as you can see, NRG are trying to work out what the best spot for them to play at launch pad is. Oh, it looks like the res have come out from KCP and IBG says, all right. Three points coming in from the sky. We'll absolutely take those. And now they're going to be able to rotate away after finding Sir Dell. Unfortunately, now KCP, at least still alive, trying to run as a solo once again through Cenote Caves. While IBG have the Beast of the Hunt activated, looks right through the smoke. Nasky is the next to go out. Literally had gotten respawned and then tried to rotate as quickly as possible. But this just benefits IBG in this case, considering that they land to the northeast side of the armory, where close to that Moby respawn is, close to that north side of Sendota Cave. Obviously, Zane, no chance to go back and get those banners, at least. I don't think so. No support characters. You're seeing very, very few of those. MDY White, I believe, are the only team in the lobby right now that if they didn't collect the banners would be able to go and craft. And the only support character we are seeing in this final lobby is the Gibraltar for LD. It's always so interesting to see the different comps come out and how it could also influence match point because that's something other teams can know if teams like MDY White end up coming on top, but look at this position that we're seeing right here. All right, Black Hand. Yep, Black Hand, they're running it out, hoping that someone's going to rotate through uh, and think about Jurassic Park as, uh, as one of the entryways, but uh, I can tell you at the moment, they're gonna be waiting a while. <laughs> There's not really anyone near them. Uh, and of course, 36 Optic, Dojo, and IBG all uh, you know, just actually getting into the circle right now, so they're probably more likely to fight with each other before they are to get through Black Hand. GT Apex Legends who are just going to roll out with the Trident so that way they can get into safety of where that circle is going to be pulling eventually. Ooh, there's going to be some information that Optic could profit off of though at least. Enter Force 36 with the Blood are going to be able to scan that survey beacon to see where the teams are located in the map overall. They'll also have information that all the teams have already congested up all the way by launch pad. So depending on how they want to take that rotate, they could go to the north side maybe try to rotate around and approach from the north side of the high ground into launch pad if they want to wrap around maybe take a little bit of circuit da circle damage or let optic gaming know that we are here we have the high ground so forcing them to maybe rotate all the way around as you can see right here in the map alliance just coming in from the north side right now looks like they'll actually be able to sneak in around the edge of the circle Maybe even get one of those back buildings. Oh, one of the ones just above. Oh, Ascend gets taken out by Polparex's hands. Taking this fight on that slight low ground in that no-name spot. When it comes to the circle where it pulls over to the west side, there's usually a survey beacon up to their north where they can scan to see how many teams are in this area right now. But Polparex aren't... They could do it with the crypto, but aren't around all those teams. So they could take that fight safely for right now. They could reset. Maybe try to see how they want to approach here, seeing all the fighting that's already been doing, been going down in launch pad. And more teams are also taking their time to rotate into that next circle, such as Optic Gaming, like we've seen, take their time to loot over by Down Beast, then go all the way down south from Checkpoint, as well as Enter Force 36 and Black Hand. Alliance. No points as of yet, obviously coming through from the elimination bracket. They don't start with any. And after losing two contests to the dojo, they haven't gained any either. So really on storm point here, where they do get their lightning rod all to themselves. They know how to play this spot very well, just as they do thermal, not that they've had a chance to do it yet. So really, I think storm point is where Alliance have to succeed today. We also saw in the feed, LG Chivas unfortunately go out at the hands of Moist that have been able to take that northern building by launch pad closer to the edge of the circle where Alliance may want to rotate unless they decide to wrap around the rock closer to the Prowler's Den. As they are going to be able to approach here though, it's going to slow down significantly with our teams that have already found that real estate in the safety inside of that circle. Yeah, okay, so Dojo all the way up at Command Center right now. Hopefully they've got an evac in the pocket somewhere. You can see Timmy 
has the respawn beacon in his pack, but uh, this is a fantastic spot to use that evacuation tower, that survival item, because you get extra height and you can rotate extremely far from this spot. That's a good point, especially when you call in that evac tower, see if they could do that here. There you go, yeah. enemy's got it. All right, they're gonna be able to cross a lot of distance with this move. As they should. I mean, there are healing outside that circle for right now, as it is closing in right behind them and Black Hand. Yeah, so Black Hand's given up the riding spot over at Jurassic. Still looking to play edge, though. You can see they're not really heading towards the circle to find, try and find a spot at all. They know pretty much everything's going to be taken at this point. They need another game plan and looking for a fight. Well, that's, uh, that's what they're going for. Evacuation Tower has just been dropped for the dojo, and here we go. We get to see where they head out towards. They're actually going to go directly over the top of Black Hand, so Black Hand definitely have this information. You can see them just below there. I'm just a little worried here. Taking this evac tower, letting other teams below you know where you may be landing. We just tuned into Alliance. They're waiting for Dojo. Let's tune into a listen in with Alliance to see what they're going to do after seeing Dojo fly right through the rock side presented by WD Black. I have Hamel. Another one, someone, there, someone else landed. On me. Yeah, on me, whooping. Okay, okay, okay. I'm shooting. Come back, come back, come back. I'm, I'm, back, 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 back. I'm, I'm to, bro. I'm getting angles. I'm getting angles. Yeah, come back to us. Come back to us. Come back to us. left. I'm trying to, bro. I'm jumping over the wall. Do okay, it. here. Pay outside. Pay outside. Pay outside. Play you inside. Try and ping. Try and ping. Try and ping. I got something, buddy. Just play slow and pinch him. Play slow and pinch him. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pinch him right now. Play through Juki. Play through Juki. Yeah, yeah. Put our backs against the wall, guys. Come on. Yes. Put our backs towards the wall and pinch him. I can't see anything. I'm in a six spot. I'm in a six spot. You good? Just hold. I don't see them. They'll yeah, be behind us for now. They'll be behind us. We're into this wall goes down. Another team flying, I think. Yeah, I'm flying. Another team flying. Back up, back up, back up. Don't let them be honest. Okay, okay. Don't let them be honest. Let them be honest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. They're flying down. They're flying down. Nice. Yeah, don't fuck. Just watch that. Watch that. Okay, watch that. Watch that. Okay. Stay here. Stay back against the wall, boys. Yes, we're a little bit pinched, so we gotta like pinch this team in front of us too. They're flowing. No, yeah. nobody behind us. Okay, okay, okay. okay, they're low ground on the other side. I'm just shooting this side. On the mins, on the mins, on the mins. Move it up, move it up, move it up, move it Look at the fight. Look at the fight. We're backing up one. 50 on 80 on one. 18 red. 40 on I'm another. Nade, 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 nade. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm fire. Wait for me. Crack, 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 two, crack, crack, one. Nice, nice, nice. I'm taking full. Oh my god, almost got two, almost got two, almost got two. Taking full right angle again. Bless off, bless off. Yes, I'm playing super strong. They're getting pinched, they get shot in the back. They're dying, they're dying. Yeah, they're dying, dying. Ping, 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 where are they? Over here, over here. In smokes, in smokes. On my ping, on my ping. They're in smokes. We have zone here, boys, don't worry. I'm watching behind us last time. Lovely comps here from Alliance. I also love the split attention here as they hold different positions. Meanwhile, in the feed, Moist have just been non-stop at contesting each and every one of the teams to try to fight for this building. It looks like Black Hand, unfortunately, were the victims. On the other side, you can see the death boxes at the feet of MT. But I love hearing those comps from Alliance after we saw two teams take two different evac towers flying over their heads, which was Black Hand at that point and Dojo. Yes, the Black Hand plan eventually doesn't pan out as we saw there. Moist taking one of the really good spots in launch pad until you can tell, uh, you know, really where that fourth or fifth circle is going. That will always change up the game plan. Uh, but yeah, the building, the catwalk that Phaser on NRG we saw in the sewers underneath, another fantastic spot. You also got start a fight in Element Six hanging around, and then. Uh, we go further afield and we've got IBG and Pulverex. So Pulverex directly on top of IBG right now. These guys are actually going to have fairly good access to the circle because it's gone quite central. Um, it's going to be to the left of the fingers of Launchpad uh, and therefore teams who have set up over uh, here where Moist are at Launchpad but also where Pulverex and IBG were, they're probably going to meet in the middle. Optic Gaming made a great call out on where this circle was going to be pulling by the high ground rocks, exiting out of those three fingers like you were saying before Genome. We also saw in the feed Zago, Zane go down, being the last solo of KCP from the very beginning. Very rough game, unfortunately, for KCP. And Polkrex are gonna meet them back in the lobby as IVG. You said it, they were gonna eventually fight to go into this next circle, but Enter Force 36, hearing the fighting, looking to get engaged. Oh my. Evac Tower was called into by IVG. Look how stacked up Optic are! All three of them in that. I'm surprised they're not kind of clipping outside each other at the moment. Oh. This is uh, a single name that spell I was disaster gonna say, for Optic. It'd be a shame if an Arcstar just made an Optic Gaming shish kebab. IVG <laughs> getting involved in this fight. Again, this is Enter Force 36 that rotated onto IVG, and Ziki usually 
always the player to get that first knock. Insane. When it comes to that fight potential that we see from this team, but Asia goes down, the DT threat in his hands, and this is just easy to profit, but the third party has been called in for Realize. Oh, man, Realize come in, and IBG, they would have been, you know, really feeling themselves after winning two fights in a row, but sometimes in Apex, that's just not enough. So the third party from Realize, they'll take over that position now. Oh, Timmy. Still alive with design on the other side of the catwall. Alliance trying to profit. Aki's got the Prowler in his hand. Sends out another smoke, sees the gravity lift. Yuki gets design knocked. It's only up to Timmy to get away if he can. Dojo! Oh, no. Maybe he needs to be sent back to the dojo as they get eliminated. 11 squads left now in this lobby. Yeah, look, you can see Alliance. They're really holding onto that tunnel. That's important for them. But wow, NRG have a team right on top of their heads right now. That's Element 6 sliding in on the top of the rock. The wall oh, bounce oh, hit. Oh, oh. oh, the wall bounce just to top it off. Nathan, though, with the nemesis in his hand. He's still alive. He can't get the reset. They find him out. Up to gaming. They were lying in wait for too long. Get a little anxious. See the opportunity and try to capitalize. Yeah, I think they're going to do that as well with the one member of Oxygen that's trying to get away from them. Desperately coming out. They do manage to finish that one off. It's not. Although Optic are in that next circle where no other team is so far. It's a very open circle aside from the rocks. You have to be careful there because you can get pinched from so many different angles, especially since Realize is still on the northwest side. FaZe looking to clean up some heads themselves after all the action that was happening all over by Launchpad now taking care of Alliance. Alliance, so they did manage to make their way through the tunnel, but then they run into FaZe. FaZe calmly making their way from the catwalk through to the fingers and using just the inside, the bins there as a little bit of cover. They run and they win a clean fight there against Alliance. Now we've got three teams left alive. This is going to be a fun end circle. Optic Gaming, they're the ones actually within it right now. It's, it will pull towards the south. This actually could be uh, quite an early finish to the game relatively considering uh, you know, we haven't even finished Zone 5 yet. Just for right now, I do expect Realize to take their time to rotate in since they're also on the other side in their approach into that next circle, as well as FaZe. Matching that with one another, you see the 30-30 shots also ringing as FaZe just waiting to see where Optic Gaming is on the other side of the rock. They've already called them out. Also, Phony has the Prowler himself, so FaZe are rocking such great loot, aside from the triple red Evos at this late part of the game. Aside from Optic, who are taking their time, and they still have the two purples. Optic are currently on 49 points, by the way. One more will move them as the first team onto match point. A single KP does secure them. Wow. Next game, Optic will be the only team with a chance to win. Already? After game three, Optic Gaming looking to take the dub. We got the ulti with the disruptor rounds dropped on the other side with the Diddy Threat 2. They took down one member of Realize. Looks like they were also get the, able to get the finisher onto Oogly. The catwall has gone down. So each three team had already used the catwall with the circle closing in. It's now the fight for second place for Realize against FaZe. Oh, is a black hole enough to bring this back as a duo? Maybe it's a very good ultimate. They get sucked in straight into it. But Optic on the back of it, 50 points isn't enough for them. They will secure the dub. The bracelets in the crowd light up green, and with 12 kills, it's a 24-point game for Optic. Man, that end circle. Optic Gaming versus FaZe again. After we had seen a similar case scenario in game number one, Optic with two dubs already after game number three. I mean, it's not a speed run. Did they get the memo? It's not a speed run thus far, all right? I'm feeling a little bit Swedish right now. <laughs> Vicky, you know why? Because this feels like the optic that we saw turn up in Sweden. A lot of people said that they were the best team at that tournament. They didn't quite walk away with the victory, but damn if they weren't impressive. And this is that kind of locked in, dominating, just absolutely destroying the rest of lo the lobby optic that we saw that all that time ago. Seeing signs of life from this team with such talented individuals. When I think about an insane fragger, a player that has always come to mind has always been Skittlecakes out here. 
They're going to be able to walk away, take a little bit of a break for right now. They took game number one once again with 13 game P. After that game three, I believe that was like a 12 KP. So even holding that final circle position, being as patient as they were, they still were able to get a lot of kills at the same time, involving themselves at the perfect time in the very beginning of the game and around the end of the game, which is incredibly important. We saw what they did. Instead of landing in down beast, landing to 50-50 weather. I mean, you split that up all a three-way out here. <laughs> uh, over by Mill against Dreamfire and KCP. But that's insane to think about, isn't it? I mean, they completely eschew their own drop spot. They take on another team, knock out the only other team that could have made their way onto match point and still come out on top and give themselves the best chance in the next game. That is a, a phenomenal play there by Optic. Also avoiding a lot of the chaos that came from the north side of where that circle was pulling. Beautiful calls from Optic Gaming. They're already sitting here at match point. Can it be done in four games? We're going to have to see if that consistency stays alive. Again, they've won two games. All right, after all that action, I'm done. I'm dusted already, Gina. We got to take a little bit of a break. All right, Des, break it down. Tell us how you thought about the action. Well, if you can't see the vision of how this tournament's going down, you might need to change your optics. Optic Gaming on match point after three, and it has really shifted things. The pace has increased as we expected on a match point final, and so get ready. It could end at any moment. Rain Day, of course, Glitter. Uh, Dia, Tiff, and now Graceful joining us on the desk to go over everything that's happened so far after three. Let's take a look at the final circle. Graceful, I want you to talk to me, especially with the chance to hear your pro perspective. How is this working so well for Optic in general, and how have they managed this final circle win? So the final circle here is actually pulling towards Optic. That means that they don't have to move. They're just holding everybody out. And the biggest thing is that Realize is making the play on, uh, on face because they know that if they just let it leave it up to the zone, it's going to be RNG. It's literally whoever Optic shoots, the other team lives and gets second guaranteed. So instead of going for that, they decide to int face or send it, essentially. And Optic just holding angle. You see, they're going left, triple swinging left. They're not there. Go right, uh, triple swinging right. They're not there. Oh, I see them in the water. Just make sure that they don't push us so we can secure our dub. And Optic has been looking so strong because not only are they good at fighting and macro-wise, but fighting prowess, they're so good at closing games, like we've seen, they close closing two games today. And if they can keep up this form, it's not gonna be a long series. <laughs> and importantly, after Optic take the first pick on Realize, they put Realize in a position where their best bet is to set phase on the low ground. It's a, it's a mitigation of RNG by making sure that you control what your opponent's best decision is. That's what really stood out to me in this end game circle, about how Optic and then subsequently Realize had to play it. Thank you both so much for that in-depth information and our halftime analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments. I want to now get into what is the story in terms of points. Lauren, I'm looking at you because I think that obviously we have seen two teams that we've talked about a lot. One of the teams you picked jump up into the series results, and I want to bring them to your attention right now as we head to see them on the screen. Optic Gaming, obviously a huge win, but in the first couple of games, we saw Dreamfire pop off as well. Not only that, but the reason Dreamfire is not on this first page of these match three results right now is because of what Optic Gaming did in the very beginning. Yep. They saw that Dreamfire was getting close to that 50 point threshold and knew that they also were in a really strong spot to potentially third party the 50 50 that Dreamfire was already dealing with. And that play, the decision to be that aggressive this early on paid off for Optic, not only in the case of putting them on match point now, but as we take a look at the second page, you'll see just how far down the list Dreamfire is, keeping them off of match point, opening up a huge opportunity for Optic. And sometimes that is just that little wiggle room you need, that extra game that you're on match point, someone else isn't knowing. There's no way the tournament's over. We have a chance to win. It kind of takes a little bit of what could be a very difficult now race to the finish if Dreamfire had joined them. But as you see, a notable name there, TSM, a sin. Obviously, Dreamfire not having good game threes. They'll have a chance to shift that up and possibly join Optic Gaming on match point next time around. Tip, what are your eyes telling you here? FaZe also performing well. Blackhand coming in as the points leaders. Solid, but nothing as impressive as yesterday. I've also noticed all the fights the Dojo have been getting into and winning, which is a great sign for our LCQ team with its Timmy being the featured star of that. 
really to maybe make a statement like we thought could be possible. Yeah, they're incredibly difficult right now to fight if you're any other team running into them, especially with being on Storm Point, them landing in North Pad and TSM at the wall. Immediately challenging them off drop is preventing a lot of our heavy hitting teams to be able to accumulate the points that they need to get onto the threshold. But let's not forget, we did have someone hit match point within three matches last time, and they still didn't hoist the trophy at the end of the day. So yes, Optic has won two of the three matches thus far, but now that they've hit the threshold, can they close it out? That's really the question. Sometimes we've seen, and this is in split playoffs, for those who don't know all of their ALGS history, teams like Ascend, actually, and even Alliance, find their ways to winning games when match point began at match two or match three, and it didn't end till 11. So these victories can still happen. All of these teams are still in because it just takes one mistake, one bullet to change the course and allow another team to now not only have uh, the opportunity taken away from them, but now to join the other team and be able to go ahead and raise the trophy. Optic Gaming, though, three games played. It is a phenomenal performance so far from them. Uh, Glitter, again, I didn't really tee up Optic specifically. You talked more Dreamfire. But could this be the resurgence of Optic? I mean, really the team that we expected to do this maybe a few splits ago, and then we had our doubts, and we kind of stopped talking about them as much. Is this maybe a moment for one of the biggest organizations in esports? I feel like that's that, that's the case with a few of these teams, right? We've had these very high expectations for them, and whether it is the way the meta's playing out, whether it's just the regions that are in the lobby, sometimes they aren't finding their footing. Right now, Optic feels like they are continuing to find their form that we saw out of them yesterday, carrying it on into today, and now they're in the spot that everybody wants to be in, because even if they fail in this match, it's not putting them on the back foot. They can kind of do whatever they want, and if that includes going after Dreamfire yet again, keeping them off of that match point, I'd be afraid. Well, one of the cool things about this is as we've played over these four weeks, we've obviously highlighted players who have stood out in our Monster Energy MVPs today. You have a chance to get involved and choose who you think represents the ALGS Year 3 MVP here at the championship. All you've got to do is in Twitch chat, use the hashtag, then finish it with the player's name. You'll see pages here as we pass through some of our players. If you have any questions on how to spell it, there it is right there. Your votes will be tallied alongside the votes of some of the talent, and we will have a special interview with them in just a moment. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of you have tweeted about it. You've talked about it. You've waited patiently because there is a content piece that tends to get a lot of conversation around it. We take a look at some of the more notable personalities and them clashing against each other. This time, though, we wanted to expand the personalities that we talked to. For whatever reason, it's led to a very interesting result showing this piece today. But what does it mean? Well, at least you'll get a chance to see what goes behind the scenes in some of the most competitive people and two of the only IGLs in this four-LAN journey who have ever lifted a trophy. Let's take a look at Hal and Sweet. Sweet. What happened? Yeah, they, uh, they cut my budget. I can tell. Yeah, we couldn't deal with the sweet salary. You got paid? It's not about the details, Hal. Listen, I think this is your problem too, okay? Oh. You, you should have been funnier when we... Wait, hey. Yo. You, come here. Okay. You busy? No, not really. Okay. I think we can work with this. All right, you guys ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. What are you waiting for? Let's go. Go. Go, go, go.
I'm not sure what that decided for us at all. But uh, I do have a question. You, you gonna choke again? Because you, you kind of choked. Where's your, where's your jersey at? <laughs> also, do you want to know who won the race? Yep, yeah. Back to the show. When they said they cut my budget, I, I didn't realize I couldn't pay for Sweet to be in that either. I mean, outside, come on, guys. Obviously, the ALGS, we had so much fun with that one. And taking a look at Hal and Zero, probably the most realistic part of that is that Zero is not here. Dark Zero did not make it, so we will have a new champion. Hal, obviously, still a chance to become a champion in year three. We'll see how that unfolds, but Glitter, always fun to see our IGLs competing. I mean, apparently you cut the budget for Zero shoes in the race, too. Why he was, took those off, by the way. Is that an Australian thing, just running without shoes? I, I, he was committed to that. They played without shoes. They run without shoes. I don't know. Maybe they need to keep the shoes on, I guess. Okay, well, guess what? That was pretty fun, and I'm excited to announce something that's even more fun. That's right, the ALGS. We have had an incredible run to get to this moment. Year three is ending today, but that means that another year is coming forward. We will have the ALGS in year four. We will return this fall, so stay tuned for all the details. We'll announce those in the couple of weeks upcoming after this tournament, and everyone gets settled back. Follow Play Apex Esports for all of those updates. Exciting, guys, that we get to do this again. I cannot wait, but of course, when we go into year four, we will have a new champion defending their title. All of that coming up and more as we get back to the games. We're gonna go on a quick break here in Birmingham at the Resorts World Arena, but when we come back, can Optic close it out, or will someone else join them on match point? Stay tuned. Herman Miller, the official chair of the Apex Legends Global Series. WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back, everybody, to the ALGS Global Series. Feeling like a Global Series right now with so much international talent on our stage. Match point has been hit. Optic Gaming, the first team to put 50 points on the board. The question is, will they be able to close it out in record time here, or will someone else try and stop them? question for me is, where do Optic land? They're a little bit controversial. We see them competing in the mill with the likes of Pioneers and Dreamfire. Did now Pioneers and Dreamfire work together to shut down Optic Gaming? I saw even in the chat, TSM said, well, maybe we'll drop it down, Beast, if you're not going to go there. This is going to be a big indication of what's going to go down in match number four, just purely off of drop spots here. What an insane start to the day, though, right? Of Optic Gaming, so, so many people expecting them at some point to come good, but then it was the conversation of, are they ever going to come good? Again, is it going to be a case of we're waiting for Optic to become the beast that they once were? Well, now we're seeing it. And the scariest thing for me, Dan, from their performance so far is not just that they've hit match points so quickly, it's a win on both Stormpoint and World's Edge. Yeah, they've been able to be consistent across both maps. And at the moment on Stormpoint, they have around a 40% conversion rate from top fives. So if we do see Optic Gaming get into that final circle, then I tell you what, there's going to be a lot of worried faces around these player boosts as we're going into the dropship. It's match number four, and what could be the final game here if Optic can find a victory? Well, I'm sure the likes of Dreamfire, FaZe, Black Hat, Pioneers, the closest challengers to Optic Gaming, who might be able to keep this thing going if they can take them out, would like to see this game continue for just a little bit longer. Optic Gaming, like we mentioned, the only team who can win it here right now the Chasing Pack, Dreamfire, 43 points for them. They are the next challengers. They need seven to join Optic. Where do Optic go? Is it to Down Beast, their usual home? Or do they still have a little bit of a journey over towards the Mill? Remember, Mill is Dreamfire versus KCP as the expected fight, but Optic 
decided to get involved, but no Optic Gaming this time. It's straight up Dreamfire versus KCP. It's Dreamfire versus KCP, but I saw someone picking up a purple armor on the side of KCP and Dreamfire, who are the team they're chasing Optic, who are closest to them at the moment, already find themselves at a disadvantage. And this is a massive fight for Pioneers. If they want to be one of those ones that are chasing back to try and catch up and get close to match point, not only can they elevate themselves, but you shut down one of your main competitors. But how great is this for Optic as well, right? This yeah. is going to be Dreamfire potentially eliminated. And by doing so, Optic don't have to worry about their nearest challenger maybe joining them here. So Pioneers, they are hunting down the remaining players of Dreamfire. Two of them have fallen already. And it looks like Dreamfire's chances of getting onto match point are slowly slipping away here in match number four. And you're quite right on set because that just gives Optic a nice little cushion here, knowing that even if they weren't to get it now in match four, it's still unlikely that anyone would join them on match point with how far they are ahead of everyone else. Well, quick look at NRG now. Checkpoint is where they find themselves. Landing, of course, and it's going to be pretty close to where the zone is going. And for Optic Gaming, wow, what a start. Dreamfire eliminated, but the zone is going towards North Pad as well. They have fantastic priority to this zone. Well, NRG stole a trident from someone else's POI and said, well, thank you. we'll have that, thank you very much. And it means they can have a quick old journey towards North Pad. But you are right, I mean, Optic now with one of the priority positions, they had a ring console at Down Beast. They can move on that Northeast side very quickly. Now, NRG, There's a race. Optic, they're all There's racing. There's a race going down. This is just going to be a chick, a, a, situation where oh, are you going to beat them to the punch here i think nrg got over that finish line first and optic gaming now have to reposition and a little bit of formula one going down there on the main stage optic gaming just getting kind of pipped to the post there by nrg who had their foot on the accelerator for a little bit longer but this spot that optic have found is still extremely playable for now but it looks like they want to try and get a little bit deeper into zone. This is looking like a, a zone which is going to pull right to the back of North Pad around some of those dock areas. So NRG who got there first. Well, Optic, they're trying to weave their way through the traffic now. So Optic need to go under the radar a little bit here. You want to try and be as less visible as possible. Get to that late game. Give yourself the best opportunity. Now, luckily for them is they can blend in. Their composition is very similar to the majority of the lobby right now. There's nothing that gives them away. They're not playing any sort of legend that would be able to indicate that they could be a different squad that maybe some other teams could try and target them. But they are going to be right at the heart of the action of North Pad, and it's going to get very busy the more teams that start to arrive. Now, we saw that Dreamfire are still alive. They are the next team closest to match point after that. We have FaZe on 35. Now, FaZe, consistent across the first few maps. If they can find the same kind of points, then maybe they can be the next team to find match point. There is your map overhead. That's where the teams are stacked up for now. That's where the zone is going to be going. That's where we will be for our end game. The question I think going through everyone's head right now is, is this the end of the games today? Will Optic be able to close out? They're in a fantastic position here, Dan. The one worry for me with them is when that zone starts to close and the teams move from the North Pad building in towards where they are, are they going to be able to survive through all of that carnage? It is their freebie of a game, though. When you're the only team that's on match point, it does take a little bit of pressure off, in a way. But everyone else in the lobby is going to be keeping a keen eye on that kill feed, hoping that Optic Gaming fall. Because otherwise, you might find yourself in a 3v3, two teams remaining, and you are the only team that can keep this thing alive. But everyone's made their journey over towards North Pad. A few teams holding the fingers, so TSM's going to be on one of them, NLG on the other, and then Optic holding the middle finger, as it were. And I'm sure the rest of the lobby don't really like to see it. As Dojo, they're going to hold the high ground, and they'll be more than happy. Dojo will have the height and able to influence a lot of fights from there. But Optic, the one probably concern for them at the moment is where does the damage come from? Because they can't really show and peak too much. White armors, blue armors. Is that going to be enough to survive for that end game? Elsewhere at Down Beast, you can see the Pioneers, they've started to rotate the backside of Down Beast. But closing in on them was E6. We did get a chance to speak to Naski just before the tournament. He was a bit concerned that they were going to be contested at both maps. And he said, we're not going to win the thing because we've been contested, but they're in fourth place at the moment. If you don't think you can win, you better believe you've got to get some points on the board so you can find yourself into those top three, those top five positions, because prize money's still insane if you are in that top half. Of course, $2 million on the line here at Championship Sunday of the ALGS. Or oh, Pulverex. Down to a duo, but we saw what they could do yesterday. We, we know what they could do full stop. 
there's only two players. Moist Esports in 10th position overall at the moment. 15 points to work with so far. Quite a long way off of match point, you would have to say. But trying to control one of these trenches, as well as that donut you can see to your left. And if they can get a little sniff that Polverex are down to a two, then they might try and take this fight. Elsewhere we mentioned KCP versus E6. They did get that first knock, KCP, and now they're looking for the rest. You just need to make sure that Dell doesn't go down here. Protect him with your life as they can rain down from above. The car just missing a few bullets, but I tell you what, as long as they can get a shield swap available here, then Pioneers should be very comfortable in this engagement, and E6 are just going to have to try and scatter away now, try and survive and try and salvage something, but it's not going to happen. Element 6 eliminated, and Pioneers continue on their journey to try and get closer to match point. I mean, there's 5 KP already for Pioneers. They get the contest, they pick up two there, they've just managed to wipe E6 as well, so slowly but surely starting to accumulate a few points in our match number four. Elsewhere, you can see in the trenches, these are going to be hotly contested. Such a tough zone to play here for so many teams because you just don't have line of sight to level up Evo shields, to make plays because teams are going to be rotating late, taking that height from above you. You've got to kind of, it's a difficult situation. You want to show presence, but you also know that if you show too much and you swing one of those corners for a second, you could get beamed. We get a little glance there at the last remaining player of Dreamfire, still alive. But it's Iron Blood Gaming and, and LG Chivas both at the mill. For Dreamfire, it's just a matter of trying to get to that end game and trying to get a couple of points on the board to edge you closer to match point. The likelihood of them getting onto match point is very slim now. Both banners gone. You would need seven points, so you need third position with no kills. I mean, I've seen crazy things happen, but it would have to be the best rap performance of his life. Well, now you're seeing LG take damage. And Yahoo's already down. This fight breaking out on the edge of zone. Cat will go down just to try and stall the fight for a little bit of time. Are they going to be able to get the time to stick this res, though? Jaguaris is going to go for it, and it looks like he should be able to get it, although all of a sudden some off angles are being taken, and LG find themselves in a little bit of a pinch. And in the distance, Pioneers are starting to have a little sniff towards this one as well. They said, who's it? Our drop spot. Who's it? Mill. Can we pick up some KP here? They, they recognize they do not have priority to zone at the moment. They are not going to get one of the best positions on the map. So instead, let's try and get some KP on the board is what they're thinking. They can hear, hear the gunfire still going down, and now they have eyes on it. Iron Blood Gaming are eliminated. It's LG who come out on top of that fight, but here come Pioneers now, and a well-placed frag grenade here from Dell. Might allow them just to move in and get some more KP. There's one. LG down to just a solo player now. Surely this is just going to be more KP. Nasky trying to finish it off with a little bit of flair here. He's got the digi threat that he can use through the smoke if he needed to. But that might change something. Jaguar is trying to hold on for his team. One still alive here, and it looks like LG have actually managed to get back up. Yeah, LG have done really well to keep Pioneers at bay, and now the zone is coming in and will play a part in this fight. Galantane just need to be communicating here and taking the right angle. They play this correctly, they should be able to win this engagement. I mean, Yanya, last player alive here for LG, has to try and send it. 134 through the air is pretty good, but not good enough. LG Chivas will be eliminated, but while all this was going on, by the way, Dreamfire, Peter, inside of zone, and keeping the dream alive. It's just a matter of crafting as much meds that are... <laughs> Humanly possible here for Peter and Dreamfire. And it is a case of if you can get up to about 45, I'd say, and the game does carry on, we go to match number five, Dreamfire maybe will be feeling comfortable because it will be World's Edge again. They won't have to worry about the potential contest. Well, back to where the zone is going to be going, North Pad, and look how busy it's already starting to become. And this is how important that rotate was for Optic Gaming. This is an almost inaccessible zone to teams who arrive late. You would say there's maybe five or six priority positions at the base of those fingers. If you don't have one, the game plan isn't about winning the game. It's about KP and trying to force your way into that final fight. Optic Gaming set up at the moment underneath the bridge. Let's see what the comms are like. I'm 22 off. You can shoot between the boxes. Yeah, stack them with you. Yeah, I'm going. So I'm just going to walk back here. Yeah, zone shift for John. 
They certainly don't sound too flustered at the moment, and why would they be? Trying to keep a low profile, not just in the listening, but in the lobby as well. Here come FaZe though, Pioneers on the edge of zone as well, when we might see them knock into each other. So Pioneers, yeah, just taking a look over towards FaZe, a couple of shots with the Hemlock. Dreamfire still alive and will be behind this fight. But that's just going to be a rat story, a rat journey, where Dreamfire hope to pick up one to get closer to MP. For Pioneers, I mean, they're 22 off. If they can get into this final circle, they've already got some KP. It's still achievable for them here, as long as Optic, of course, don't win. But with how everyone's been scoring on average at the moment, it could be a situation where even if Optic don't find a victory, we go into the next match, and they are yet again the only team to be on match point. And the main reason being, their closest competitors, Dreamfire, have had that contest over towards Mill. That's why it would be so important that we go back over to World's Edge. Uh-oh, Peter might have just dropped into a little bit of a trap here. Or maybe. Just maybe. The pioneers haven't quite sniffed him out. The dream is still alive as Pioneers move back over to Checkpoint. And they're going to go through the southern choke of Checkpoint, which <laughs> I, I hate this rotation. And I'm sure they hate it as well, because you're going to be forced now into almost a tunnel of teams that are all going to have eyes on you as you arrive. So either they have an evac tower and hope to try and get up and above people, or you have to go in all guns blazing here if you're the Pioneers. Optic Gaming will be safe for that next zone, so will NRG. Both of them wanted to play that spot early on. We saw that tried to race between the two teams. Faze safe as well, and everybody's starting to just work their way towards zone now. Moist Esports and MDY White on that eastern side of the zone. You're going to see they're going to have to force their way in, and Alliance are ready to make a play as well. They are creeping over towards the position of TSM. I mean, Pioneers, MDY White, SAF, Moist, they're all going to be meeting each other. You can see the Pioneers are down and will be over towards now the trenches, but there are teams waiting for them. This is going to be a tough old road for them now. Well, the good thing here for Pioneers, not only do they have KP, but they've leveled up those Evo shields as well, so if they do force a fight, they're going to be in a pretty good position to do it. And also full of confidence, having come off the back of winning that contest, winning that fight against LG. But it looks like they've managed to kind of thread the needle momentarily here. Same can't be said for Moist. They have to jump back into these trenches of retreat. Yeah, Pioneers did so well to avoid the attention of so many teams. Peter still alive as well, crawling on him, uh -oh. but now gets spotted. Uh oh. Up into the skies, but does not survive. Dreamfire eliminated. They'll have to wait for match number five, if it even comes. As MDY White right now using all utility to try and keep people at bay here at trenches. Well, they have to force their way forward. They're throwing everything at this. They have no option. And now with just one player alive, there was no chance they could force their way through. Moist Esports, who win that fight and will stay alive. But here, as I say, comes the third party. And who is it? It's Pioneers who are moving in. Pioneers moving in. Oxygen and Alliance also scrapping at the same time as Oxygen have been able to get the opener here. No, they haven't. Okay. Alliance back on their feet. I thought they were a two, but now they are a full three as MT has fallen to Zane. So all of these scraps happening in trenches. And this is all on the eastern side of zone. Moist Esports have fallen as Oxygen with the Digi threat, most importantly, which has been a game-winning piece of equipment to find on the floor. That attachment with those smokes and the amount of Bangalores allows you to do stuff like this. Bane says, give me the Digi. Give me the option to shoot these players, and I will make it count. You can see the piercing spikes that are down are making things so difficult and even worse for Vayne. He's only got 10 bullets, so he says, you know what, let's full send it. It has to be now. Hemlock from the back pocket, two teammates still alive, and we will see Alliance fall. 13 squads left and Oxygen, it was the perfectly timed push. Oxygen survived. The zone will not be closing behind them for a few more seconds, so they'll be able to reset, get those shields charged back up and ready for the next fight. Elsewhere, the other side of the zone, you have FaZe poking at Ascend. Realize also, very close in the vicinity here, so if a fight breaks out and it isn't quick, you know that third party is coming in. Very close to match point as well. If they do find themselves in that final circle, good shots though with the 30-30. Evac tower dropping down too. It's whether they actually go for this. This could be a risk from FaZe. Pioneers eliminated in the meantime. Their run will stop here in this lobby. Sweet line is something up here. But not quite able to connect. Bocek is a little bit of a problem for him here as he's having his shields chipped away, but the longbow in this kind of position, Dan, just to hold teams back, just to harass them, is almost the perfect weapon. I mean, NRG are in one of the best spots. Phase as they arrive, are going to be taking a lot of damage, but on the other side, Imperial Howl has just fallen as well. It's TSM taking this fight alongside Phase. And while all these fights are going down, this is great news for Optic, the team who's on match point, but here comes TSM. Phase eliminated, Verhulst will stand strong. Oxygen also fall in the meantime. 
can TSM get this reset? As long as Dojo don't dive on them here, as long as Optic don't dive on them, which they won't because Optic will want to hold this position, TSM should be fine as Optic continue just to skirt around the edges here. It's NRG, it's Optic. They're the two squads who are in prime position at the moment, but on this eastern side, Dropped. it's going to be absolute carnage. Drop just got ripped out of the sky, and it's the Dojo now who have fallen off of that main building, that ultimate high ground, who are causing Optic a problem. Knocked has to retreat. Pop that shield battery, but somehow, all of Optic still on their feet or knees. Well, Optic have been doing well at occasionally just poking, prodding, getting those Evo shields up ever so slightly. As you can see now, Aimbot getting involved as Realize are taking the fight. This is the fight inside of the main building of Northpath. This is where all the teams have to filter through. It's an ugly looking choke point and only one team is going to come out of it. But if you do that, you're going to have a lot of KP and certainly some red Evo shields. I mean, Blackhand, SAF, Realize, Enter, Force 36, Pulverex, they are all in that building alongside one another. And as the ring closes, it's a matter of run and gun. It's try and survive and try and get kills at the same time. And then if you are the last remaining player, hope you can rat out and get those extra placement points because now we're into the top 10. Placement points start to increase tenfold. Every single placement that you go up, you're going to be in a far more comfortable position once you reach top eight, then top six, top five, and onward. These could be the differences to you finding match point later on in this tournament. Here comes the zone. And here comes the play from every single team that's left in that lobby. 10 squads still remain here. Realize, trying to fight on edge of zone. Kampu doing what he can. The zone is burning, it is singeing. And it's back though, but a few KP here certainly would help. Can't quite connect. Enter Force 36 fall. Pulverex fall. Realize will also fall and start a fight down to one. Blackhand will take them out. And it looks like Blackhand are the winners of that fight. And just like that, we're down to six. But Blackhand also struggling with the ring. But Optic are still holding strong. But now they have noisy neighbors. And this is when you need to be hitting your shots. Well, Optic have made the play. They think they can win this game. TSM. They've been eliminated in the meantime. The Dojo eliminates it. Top four and Optic are still here. Optic's still alive. NRG still alive. Three squads remain. It's Ascend. It's NRG. It's Optic. And now it's Jack 2. Optic Gaming might be about to break records. Two squads remaining. It's NRG versus Optic. Everyone in the arena has just become an NRG fan as they want this tournament to continue. Prowler for Nathan. Could that be the difference maker? Sweet has to retreat. Does he have a shield swap? No, he doesn't. Sweet goes down. Not gets the first kill for Optic. Dropped. Tries to move in to clean up the pieces. Optic will fall. NRG clutch. And Optic Gaming, who are on the precipice. Becoming your champions will have to wait a little longer. NRG with the clutchest 2v3 you will ever see. NRG keep things going here in Birmingham as the crowd erupts. I have never heard a louder chant for any team because every single supporter here wants to see more Apex action. And NRG with their backs against the wall, with it all to do, clutching up when they needed to. But it is still not enough for NRG to reach match point. It is still only Optic Gaming who find themselves there. But was that the game? It was at Northpad. It was right where they dropped. They had center zone. They got into the final fight, but could not convert it. Unbelievable match four. But you know what that means? We go again. We go again, everybody. More Apex Legends coming your way. This final's not over yet. Thanks to those three gentlemen you can see on your screen right now. NRG. Clutch it for everybody in the building but the Optic fans, you have to say. And what it does mean is we're going back over to World's Edge. Now, this is good news for everyone else in the lobby. Optic have been far better at Storm Point than they have at World's Edge. I was talking to you about those conversion rates, those top tens, those top fives. We've only seen Optic win once on World's Edge. 
that might mean there is still chance for other teams to start catching up to get onto match point. But as we look back at this final circle once more, which was absolute carnage, may I add, it was such a big opportunity for Optic to win this championship. But it all started with all the other teams that were involved as a solo, as a duo. How much damage can you do? Well, we started off on the point of view of Black Hand in this final battle, but we move over now to NRG. This is how they got it won. But the question may be asked, will Optic look back on this opportunity and get a better one to close out here? I mean, NRG, the first knock goes to Optic, Dan. And this was all perfectly planned from NRG right from the beginning of this game. Remember, they stole the Trident. They stole Godspot. They made sure they beat Optic to that position and they were rewarded for it in this final fight. And you've got to remember the shield difference as this engagement started. Optic were on blues last time they checked in. Oh but my god! Him. That is disgusting, Guild. And that's the kind of play you have to make if you want to be in with a chance of becoming champions here. That is a ridiculous spray. And let's just remember the pressure he's under in that moment as well. Now, NRG wouldn't have known, of course, that that was Optic Gaming they were going up against. Anonymous mode on. But I'm sure with their headsets on, they will know it now. 19 points will be added to NRG's tally. Optic Gaming, the points don't matter. It's all about winning a game for them. Black Hand with 10 points as well, thanks to their 5KP. I just think it's hilarious that NRG made that play right at the start to steal that Trident to take it away from Mill whilst all that engagement was happening and then they beat Optic in that race. You said it was like a Formula One race, it really was. They were neck and neck, but Optic could not quite get there and then they had to retreat to that middle position, which wasn't the priority in the end. But it was the Pioneers, I tell you what, 12 points on the board, they knew they weren't going to get priority position. A, they didn't have a Trident to get at Mill anyway because it was stolen, but 12 points from all the kills that they were able to grab. NRG fans out there loving what they just saw and to be honest like i mentioned i think a lot of apex fans very happy with what they just saw unless of course you are a fan of the green wall this is how we look total points after the games that we've seen in front of us optic gaming on match point dreamfire still need seven phase just behind them but nrg jump up into fourth dan 32 points for them so as it stands, Optic Gaming is still the only team that can finish things here in match number five. But Dreamfire are closing in as our phase. How far will today go? Well, it's time for us to jump into a break. But when we get back, maybe it's going to be time to find out how far this is going to go. Optic Gaming so close, but yet so far. Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the Apex Legends Global Series.
WD Black, the official storage partner of the Apex Legends Global Series. Welcome back to Birmingham, everyone, and welcome back to the ALGS Championship. My goodness, what a start to the day we have had. We were moments away from thinking it would be the end of the day and we would be crowning a champion in our previous matchup. But NRG, a 2v3, keeps us going here, keeps us rolling, as now we change over back to World's Edge. NRG in 2v3s, it's not the first time it's happened this tournament and they seem to always clutch up when they need to. But Birmingham erupted when NRG were able to find that victory in match four because it meant we get more Apex action. It's match point format. It means if you get above 50 points, you then have to win afterwards if you want to call yourself a champion. We're going back over to World's Edge. Now, this is better news for the likes of Dreamfire, who won't be contested. They will be able to survive that early drop and potentially get those points on the board to secure match point themselves. I'm not going to lie, I woke up this morning and I thought, there's no way we could match what happened yesterday. No way. How we close things out. Well, boy, how wrong I was. An absolutely incredible start to a Sunday here in Birmingham. Match one to four have not disappointed. You have to wonder what match five is going to have in store for us. And we'll keep a keen eye, of course, in case there are any contests going down throughout World's Edge. But I alluded to it just at the end of match four. Optic have not been as good at World's Edge. Only a 10% win rate from top 10, a 20% win rate from top five. Their conversions have not been as successful this tournament. This opens the doors for the likes of NRG, who have been far better at World's Edge. TSM, Ascend, Oxygen have all been World's Edge teams. And we'll have to see whether they can be the ones to stop Optic winning it here in five. It looks like Pioneers have secured their POI. And look at Nasky. He's like, hey, there's no one here. Let's go elsewhere. Alliance probably thinking, ah, oh, the dojo here again. Run it back. Dojo versus Alliance, round three. Dojo look like they get the early damage designed for. He's going to have to retreat, though, but will be able to help his team map back up. This contest has been heavily in the favor of Dojo all tournament long, and now they have the height advantage over Alliance once more. Peacekeeper in the hands of Hackett, so they will be able to do a lot of damage at close range. But what's the weaponry like elsewhere, and are they able to do initial damage or, uh, damage or at least take some angles on the dojo up on height. Him, he's got a 30-30, so that could be a problem. And I think he might have chipped away at enough damage to give the opportunity for them to push. Let's jump into a listening with the dojo and see how this goes down. 26 on the, on the horizon. I got yeah, you. You're yourself. You're by yourself. Yep. You're by yourself. I have no. I have no. Sh I have no shields. I'm walking up. You're by yourself to me. Yep. I hear you. The, the cat was very low. I need help. I need close, help here. Close. 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 Above you. I have no shields. He's still above you. Yep. On, on, on me. Someone needs to shoot this guy on me. Grabbing. 70 blue. Big blue, one clip. 70 blue on horizon. Yep. By the one. Dead. 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 Dead means that the dojo surely at this point own this POI. And Alliance, how stubborn are they going to be? Because it's hurting them more and more each game that it goes on. As for the dojo, seventh place at the moment, 28 points. So a good run towards match point. And as not many teams have got there yet, well, only one has, dojo is still in a great spot. And circle-wise, where this zone's going to be going, it's not too long a journey for dojo either. We're going to be heading over towards the likes of Lava Fisher, Landslide, and anywhere in between. So NRG, Oxygen, Pioneers, Black Hand, everyone's already found themselves in a spot. NRG did have the ring console spawning over at staging as well. So they will be in prime position and full of confidence after a ridiculous win in that last game that keeps us going here and sees us with another game on World's Edge. Elsewhere, just to remind you what things are looking like in the leaderboard. Dreamfire still need seven points to hit match point. Phase. They need a couple more in third, and then we fall away with the points after that. But NRG, with that win down, have jumped up to fourth. And if they can put 18 more points on the board, 
Champions, and they will hit match point as well. I mean, we should have another team on match point by the end of this match if Optic don't win. Now, for Optic, this is a very different journey that they just had on Storm Point. Down at Big Maud and Stax, they have to traverse almost the entirety of World's Edge if they want to find themselves in centre zone. They are not going to get priority. They will not be able to hold a position like they did before. So instead, they need to comfortably loot up. They need to have enough sort of utility to work with in the late game, and maybe even take some fights to try and get some shields if possible, as TSM now making their move towards Lava Fissure. You can see they hit that ring console as well. They're going to have the zone information that we just showed you at home. 13th place overall at the moment, but it's the points tally that really matter to TSM. I always say for TSM, it feels like it's a different situation to other teams coming in. It's first or disappointment for them. As Moist Esports are taking a lot of damage right now. Fussy and Waltzy might be falling in just a few moments. Does Waltzy even get the chance to get a bat off here? Yes is the answer, which means this fight is still alive. But Waltzy is going to have to hit some big shots. Fussy also has been able to escape the sights thanks to the smoke. Oh, well, I tell you what goes up, noticed! And Waltzy rips through f -chan. Waltzy trying to do what he can. He's a one-man army at the moment, but the piece is starting to fall for Moist Esports. Pulverex trying to finish off those final players. Fussy's still alive, by the way. It's a little bit of a 1v1 situation. Saku's gonna be the last player alive. Pulverex are eliminated, and Moist win that fight somehow. Moist just stay alive enough. Fussy just with the white armors as well. Does he even get a chance to get these banners back? Might be able to get one. Dark veil has gone down behind him. As you can see, Blackhand have now arrived, and it's been a relatively quiet series for Blackhand so far, considering they came in as the number one team. But look at the consistency they find. 33 points. They are still a squad who have been scoring so effectively this tournament. They've had the highest points per game on average, and if they can then find themselves on match point, they can start to compete with the likes of Optic. Elsewhere, you can see at the top, or the right-hand side of your screen, I should say, Dreamfire up on those silos, and. Five points is all they need in this game to hit match point. And boy, you will hear this place erupt if that is going to be the case. And this was my worry for Dreamfire, though, is when we're on Storm Point, they're going to find it difficult to find those points and maybe even find a victory. But if you are on match point, perhaps the drop spot changes a little bit. Maybe the POI changes. We've already seen Anything goes in the World Championship Finals. People changing drop spots, people the stealing well tridents, really the gloves are off. But five points is more than achievable here for Dreamfire, who on average have been scoring around seven points per game, so they should get it here in match five. E6 comfortable inside of Countdown for now. Ascend trying to play the quiet role in the lobby, shall we say. 26 points at the moment for Ascend. And they played a quiet role in that final fight as well. They were one of the teams that was left in that final three for a second. I thought it was going to be Ascend versus Optic, and Ascend being the team that dies again in that final circle, and it would have just been so tough for their mentors. But they're slowly going about their business, as you said, as Ascend always have. They're a team who likes to avoid the early fights. They like to try and get into a position and avoid fights until they get to that late game. Now, they did win a group stage series. They are capable of putting big points on the board, and at the moment, they're halfway towards match point. Interesting to see that NRG, who did get that ring console information, remember, now see it shift a little bit more north and more heavily containing Countdown the POI itself. So they're going to have to change their plan a little bit. Optic Gaming, their plan is going to be the same. They did drop all the way over at Stack, so they're not going to be too concerned with where that zone is going and who is about, because they're going to know to win this game, they are going to have to fight their way through the lobby. It's about choosing the correct entry point here on World's Edge. When you look at what Optic have available, do you go from the southern side by staging? Do you go through the train tracks at Landslide? Or do you take the eastern approach after you go past Monument? Now, you've got to think about the rotations of all the other squads here. How quickly are going to be people moving? What about our other Edge teams, like Climatizer, for example? Will FaZe have beaten us to that choke point? These are all the things that Optic have to think about before they make their move. This is your overlook at Countdown at the moment. You can see the Dreamfire in a really, really strong position. And that five points that they need, if they can hold that position down for a little bit longer, then maybe they'll kind of find their way towards Dreamfire instead of Dreamfire having to go out and find them themselves. Black hand down in this low ground. We saw them a few moments ago. Plenty of ammo to work with in the double light combo as we continue to watch our only match point team now make their way through Fragment 
where they will find Iron Blood Gaming potentially. Yeah, if they decide to go for the train track entry point that I was talking of, it'll be Iron Blood Gaming they face. If they go up a little bit further north by the monument entry point, it will be phase. So there is not an easy entrance for Optic either way. Now, there is always the third option of if you can't go through it, you can go over it and an evac tower and just try and avoid them. But then you are landing blind. I don't think Optic would like to play that. They'd like to play this one a little bit more methodical and try and assess their situation. And now they've noticed Iron Blood Gaming, it's probably going to be the call to just keep going north here. Seems like that will be the call indeed. Elsewhere on the map at the moment, over at Staging, we have the Dojo having a little look at LG Shibas, who are inside of Staging for now. Enterforce 36 elsewhere are going to be up on the top of Mirage Atoir. And speaking of the Dojo, here we find ourselves. Design for with that 30-30 still in his hand. No attachments and no scope to speak of though, but this man knows how to hit shots even with his eyes closed. Seventh position in the moment for the Dojo. From the LCQ to the World Championships to contesting one of the best thermal station teams in the world and winning the contest three times, they now find themselves edging towards match point. But it's FaZe who are the second closest after Dreamfire. They need 14, but they're holding this northern joke that I was talking about that we may well see Optic arrive quite shortly too. If you can control this, you might have a pretty good walk-in for the end game as well. Here we go. As Optic now try to step up towards FaZe's position. FaZe have kind of given up a little bit of space here as they step towards that next zone. As the evac tower will get called in. This is a huge moment for Optic Gaming. This is somewhat blind. Like you say, they're not going to know what positions teams are in as they go over this mountainous range. They're going to make a play for the truck. But FaZe are close by here, and so, of course, a Dreamfire. Dreamfire on one side, FaZe on the other side. It is literally being stuck between a rock and hard place with these teams. It's just about a matter of surviving here for Optic Gaming. FaZe are not going to get overzealous. They do not need to send it onto Optic, and because FaZe are closing in on that match point, they are going to be taking less risks. As for Dreamfire, there's always going to be that consideration of, hmm, I mean, we only need a few more KP here. Do we risk taking this fight? Shots going to be exchanged, but none that are really going to impact one team pushing onto the other. This is your first place team at the moment, your team on match point versus your third place team. You can understand, like you said, summed up perfectly, Dan, why this is such a nervy and kind of edgy feeling fight. Well, Dreamfire is staying put. FaZe are just constantly keeping aware of where Optic could be pushing, but I think both teams will just be avoiding one another as TSM have lost one and they're being sent on. Yeah, you can see that. Verholz was trying to punch Reps back into the building and hoping he can get a reset. Three figures on the spray from Imperial How They do manage to reinforce that door, but are they going to be able to stick this res in time? Reps back on his feet. TSM holds strong. And boy, was that needed as SAF missed their window of opportunity and they will leave and will allow TSM just to be the only team that holds that building. I was about to say, not just the only window that was missed there, you can see <laughs> they fall down into the lava for a few seconds. Luckily, there's a zip line there to make it look a little, more, a little bit more fancy and deliberate than maybe it was, but TSM survive, and I think that's the most important thing to take out that little engagement we just saw. And TSM need a game here. This was my main worry coming into match point finals, is that TSM have not really done much in terms of points per game. The Pioneers, they're taking an engagement now, and Nathan's gone down, it's NRG! NRG! Oh, NRG are getting run over right now! And it's because of the man on your screen who's almost single-handedly one, two contests in a row for them. And he's oh. going to take down everyone, same with the L-Star. This man is looking like a superstar at the moment. Oh, pioneers have just been destroying everything in their way. The fact is, when you get a contest, you're going to be fighting well. Now, TSM are being pushed again. Reps has fallen. Hal and Verhoff working together as SAF gets shut down. No one else in the vicinity to really cause a problem here with this fight. Should be able to reset, but as I say that, Auction and Esports have said hello! We're going to overextend. We see some KP available for us. Oxygen sending it onto TSM. Yeah, they heard what was happening. They heard the gunfire elsewhere, and Oxygen want that KP. Oh. But I tell you what, there's still life here for this fight in TSM. It certainly is, and now you can see Reed's trying to join, and maybe you can see Oxygen Esports look a little bit at seven and eights. They don't know whether to push. They don't know whether they want to try and Collapse on this. Both teams might be selling for the res. Realize eliminated in the meantime. FaZe have been eliminated in the meantime. And Optic Gaming are still alive and creeping up on this zone once more. Oxygen get the revive, as do TSM, and they split. Neither team wants to fight. Our current team, our only team on match point, Optic Gaming, 
are still making their way down towards Landslide. Pioneers now eliminated. Ten squads remain. Optic Gaming to their right side at the moment as Iron Blood Gaming will be falling is Dreamfire. That's the team they have to worry about most at the moment. Their focus is on LG at the moment. Shibas just moving to their south. But Optic are going to have to cross some really open terrain. They're going to hope that most of the teams still inside a countdown take care of each other here down, and they can clear this side of zone. Look at this final circle as well. It's going to create a clear divide from north to south. There is going to be places that people can survive on either side of said mountain. And Optic aren't in the worst position. If they can win that fight against LG Chivas that you said, they suddenly own that southeast side, and they can slowly push up, use any little mini rocks that they've got to survive, as now you can look, TSM are trying to make their way in, but they're very close to the dojo. I was going to say, LG kind of control what might happen in this game. TSM in this fight in the choke, though. On the outside of Countdown, looking in. Have to send it right now, and how does it need to be asked twice? Oh. Gets the knock onto enemy! 3v2 becomes a 2v2 as Designful strikes back. How important could this be for TSM? It has been a game of survival. They've constantly had themselves tested, constantly had players down. Two versus two with the dojo, but now LG Chivas, they're having a peek over to this one. And how good is that for Optic Gaming? It clears this side of the map for Optic. TSM trying to hold on in this fight, but will fall, the dojo will take them down. But the story is all about Optic. Once again, look at the position they now have. Optic, they went north. They saw and they heard the commotion, said, this is our opportunity. We can take the northern side. And now LG Chivas have taken the southern side. Optic hold the northeast. And we have five teams, no, sorry, four teams on this northwest side. MDYY, Oxygen, Black Hand, Element 6, Dreamfire, all in these buildings, but Dreamfire down to one. They only need two points to get to the match point threshold, though. Roy has to hold on for his team. Optic Gaming might have another chance here. They really might. They really do have an opportunity. Everyone who has to leave Countdown, you get the feeling that only one, maybe two teams will be able to make it out alive. LG, they control the southern side of the zone. We've been talking about that fight potentially breaking out a few moments ago. It could be the final fight between the two teams we have in this lobby. Well, will we see Black Hand be able to spoil the party for Optic Gaming? A team which has dominated throughout this tournament and are still alive in this final circle as well. Now Oxygen starting to make their move across the top of Countdown, looking to try and get a slightly better position and having good eyes on this team that are just locking themselves in. It's Element 6 who have just locked down this building ahead of them. Element 6 have been in here for quite some time. And Optic, from a distance, are influencing, influencing the fight themselves. I mean, every bit of damage that Optic can do in this position, Dan, it's going to be brilliant because you know that multiple teams are going to fall. Reed almost falls himself. Aiden has fallen and now Vayne left on his own for Oxygen Esports. Slayers and Tyler still up here for E6. Optic are taking a look at this as well. Optic want to get as much damage as possible. Their biggest threat is going to be LG Chivas at the south of the map because all these teams are taking so much damage on the northern side. And Optic looking to just try and pick up any extra damage, any extra pieces to secure as much placement as possible. I mean, Optic are just playing on the low ground. They're not interested. They want all of these teams to take each other out. They've made the decision to wait. And solos and duos will surely fall their way. Roy. Just needs 2kp, E6 and MDY White take each other out. Dreamfire hit match point. But Optic might steal it away still. Dreamfire do it, but will they get a chance to even play on match point? LG Chivas, Black Hand, and Optic Gaming in the final three is Optic doing damage from a distance. Do Black Hand and Chivas know who is in this final circle with them? Oh, player K. He's got a Kraber, and this might make things a little bit more difficult for Optic Gaming. But what an opportunity for Optic once more. Couldn't get it done in the last game, in the 3v3. Well, now it's a 3v3 v3. And what a journey it's been for Optic, all the way from stacks, making it over towards this countdown landslide area. LG Chivas, though, hold prime position. Not only are they closest to the center of the circle, but they have cover to work with as well. And Optic maybe know that. Dark Veil goes down, so they can get a little bit of a closer look to Black Hat. I think they just had to burn that Dark Veil there, Optic. Oh, Excel's going to be going down, though, so they might be in a position if they can buy enough time to wait for those ultimates to come back. But this Kraber could be the difference between us having more Apex on our screens. Or Optic having a chance to win this game.
The final round starts to close here in Birmingham. Blackhand find a corner, and this is good for Optic. Optic forcing Blackhand and LG a little bit closer to each other. Optic are taking damage here, Dan, and Optic are being forced to retreat, and not. He's got no shields. Skittlecakes is down. Dropped is down. But Nox is still alive. The dream is still alive for Optic. But it's looking like this could be the end of the road. The Catwall goes down. It's one more game here in Birmingham as LG going to the final fight against Black Hand. If Black Hand win this, they could get onto match points, but no, LG will deny. They've been holding strong, but strafing flames, and he struggled with pressure. Well, now pressure is oh, on no. your shoulders, just as our LG. He gets, oh, he gets down. He gets booted in the face. LG with the win here. Arguably the most consistent team that we've had in Birmingham from the moment that we landed. But Optic again, Optic, Optic, Optic. Two chances now. Two opportunities missed. And will they live to Roy this day? Because Dreamfire now find themselves on match point. We have two teams going into match six that could be winning this competition. But as for LG, as for Black Hand, they did their job. They stopped Optic from winning the tournament here and now. But Black Hand, if they had won that final 3v3, they would have also been on match point. Match point pressure might be something that's starting to affect Optic Gaming just a little bit. Dreamfire saying to Roy, great job, buddy. You survived just long enough to have us joining Optic Gaming on Match Point. You summed it up. Two teams now with an opportunity to win in our next game on World's Edge. And most importantly for Dreamfire, they get that opportunity on World's Edge. If they don't convert here, though, it gets so much more difficult as you go over to Storm Point where the contests have been happening. Do then Dreamfire give up Mill? Do they continue to take that fight? But this final circle, it was all about Black Hand. It was all about that Kraber. Had Black Hand at any point poked over towards LG and suddenly taken that Kraber shot and hit LG with it, it would have opened things up to Optic. I thought for a second that they were going to send it on to LG, thinking that, hey, we've got to take care of them if we want to win this game, if we want to get on to match point ourselves. But you can see both teams just focus onto Optic Gaming. Now, it's not because they would have known it's Optic. It's because Optic were the first team that had to step into the open. They're not coming in from Yanya, by the way. You just felt that that was going to be the end of it. But Nox staying alive behind the knockdown shield, you wondered if Black Hand were going to see, sense an opportunity with LG distracted to send it on to them and maybe give Optic another opportunity. And we saw right early on Optic Gaming use that Dark Veil. Maybe too soon, but they were forced to because of the damage that they were taking as they tried to just stay alive because they didn't have as much coverage. They didn't have as much objects to use to hide behind as the likes of LG and Black Hand did. But it was LG, nine kills, 3.7K damage, who ensured that we go further into a match six here at the ALGS Championships. You can be a little bit harsh on LG there. 3.7, that's one off of 3.8. Hey, Let's I round it up. down. I Let's round, round it down. up, okay? To be fair, math's still very much yours, so I'll, <laughs> I'll leave that for you. But what a performance it was. Dreamfire joining Optic Gaming on match point. Black Hand so close, but also yet so far. This was your match five results. LG win that win, nine kills alongside it, 21 points in total. And even though it doesn't send LG Chivas onto match point, it does send them into the top five. And that is going to be important when you start to get to the business end here at the championships. And when teams are getting onto match point and the end is beginning to loom, you need to be as high in this table as possible if you are not the team to win for all that juicy prize money. Dojo with 11 kills, by the way, putting a huge contributing factor to that 13 points that they take away elsewhere. Phase, they were in a pretty good position at one point in that game, but weren't able to get the points that they needed to get onto match point. NRG fell to Pioneers and the little tear that they went on momentarily. Down at the bottom alliance, 
that contested side to hurt them. But these are the two teams, Dan, that everybody is now chasing. The two teams that everyone will have their eyes on, whether it's the players in the lobby, where it's the viewers in the arena or at home, or of course us from the commentary booth. The two teams that could potentially be lifting that trophy after match six. Now, Blackhand very close. FaZe not so far as, way, uh, as well away. If you start to see those teams drop now in that kill feed, you know this is going to be your chance to make that difference and get onto match point. Well, one team that certainly surprised us in that last game by jumping up to match point. Roy making a huge play to get Dreamfire into the conversation of being your champions have had some amazing support. We actually caught up with Dreamfire to see what they had to say about it. First Shadow 每一个跳点的所有队伍的特别打法以及他们玩什么角色大家要小心謝謝你們來支持我們感謝你們一路從所有的賽事支持到現在不管是美國、倫敦的兩次還是現在這一次的博明漢都非常感謝你們 you love Rory, you love feeling the energy from our players here from Dreamfire as they sit currently at match point alongside Optic Genome what a performance it's been so far with 21 kills, 21 assists, 25 knockdowns. That's actually insane. I mean, what's insane is how many important end games we've seen already. Are you kidding me? Optic get two chances back to back. Very good spots, all three of them alive. But they can't close it out. Blackhand, they had the opportunity to get up to 50 in match point there themselves. They just miss out for Dreamfire after that. Uh, that very risque drop by Optic starting over on Stormpoint finally make it over the line themselves. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, you know what helps and contributes to that? When you have these amazing, comfortable chairs that help you and your gameplay. Herman Miller Gaming and Body Chairs are being used at today's events. Make sure to check out the new colorways on Embody Gaming Online. The new colors have a white base with a galaxy and amethyst upholstery. So make sure to check out the custom Herman Miller Gaming Heirloom Embody Chairs created specifically for this year's ALGS Champs winning team. I mean, if you're feeling a little bit stressed after that, you, know, you, you just recline straight into the chair and uh, all of a sudden, all your worries go away, huh? Hey, I mean, I gotta start peeping at, at that and maybe see if I could scoot one away because they look absolutely way too comfy. Maybe it allows me to have my face all the way up to my screen without hurting my back and then maybe pop off in my own games like Dreamfire has. Well, look, honestly, if anyone's scooting away with it, it's Optic at the moment, right? Even though they haven't managed to close it out, they are still up on 80 points, 30 points clear of Dreamfire who are, you know, snuck in the exact amount they need to get to match point. Right? They got 50, and we've seen this happen before. Uh, there, was, there was a very uh, famous game where uh, the old Moist Boys, and the, they were Team Burger at the time, oh, they yeah. won a game on 49 points on match point. Right, that, that can be the difference. So Dreamfire just getting squeaking that one extra point in here. It's huge, and it means now we've got two teams on match point, two teams that could walk away with it here. Let's not waste any more time. That was game five in the hands of LG Chivas. Moving on 
to game number six on World's Edge, now beating two teams at match point. This could be it, everybody. This could be the game. Optic has looked so incredibly scary. Ever since they hit match points, they've been within the top three, getting second place in a game they could have easily won against NRG. Game number four, where energy stopped them, prevented them from taking champs. We've also been seeing 50-50s go down here on World's Edge, but it looks like it's not happening. Exactly. And that's a smart move from Alliance. I mean, I was waiting for this. How long are you going to keep contesting until you call it quits and say, okay, we need to get some points? At the start of the day, Alliance actually said they were going to land Fragment. It was all a ruse. They wanted to take on the dojo, but they've fallen down. They were the ones who got slammed into the mat, and eventually they're the ones who have to give it up, drop the ego, and try and get themselves back into the fight after losing that many contests in a row. Alliance are sitting in 19th spot. They've only picked wow. up nine points so far in this game. I mean, that's the outcome when you keep trying to go for these 50-50s. And unfortunately, you haven't won one. You haven't really been able to play the game, in all honesty. Okay, we're having a look over here at Countdown. Now, we saw a circle pull to this just, <laughs> just a moment ago, and it seems like we've had so many run-it-back options here. Uh, World's Edge, Storm Point, either way, the circle just uh, it likes pairing up with the, uh, the, the match from, uh, you know, the match before. So this time, uh, it, it allowed Dreamfire to get just over, right, having them that, that really home circle for them really allowed them to just squeak it over the edge, even though it was just Roy alive at the end there uh, doing that. Now they've once again got the chance. Can they stay alive? Can they learn from their mistakes last time? Can they walk away with it here? Or can Black Hand scoot their way through with only three points needed for Black Hand to be sitting at match point alongside Optic and Dreamfire? We're gonna have to see, because it actually looks like Black Hand has wasted no time rotating away from Landslide and actually making appearance already in Countdown. And it looks like this time, I mean, sure, it's a slightly different circle. It could actually go up towards Skyhook, but Optic, of course, one of our two match point teams. We need to keep our eye on them. We can't take them off them, especially oh not when they're in a fight with the Sand. And with that nade too from Dropped, has to back away. So does Noctu against Beam on the other side against Ascent. Meanwhile, Skittle King, the Fragger himself, trying to stay alive with the limited ammunition that he has on the R9. The crowd wants more Apex. You can hear them cheering for Can't Ascend the here. They want this day to continue and... No, he get, no way he gets away with this. He knows. Oh, he actually... Oh, the Watson fence! The Watson fence on the fly! Stunned, he can't get away! The gravity lift! Ascend get eliminated by the third party right afterwards by Realize! Realize come in on top of the... Neither team will walk away. It must be a little bit demoralizing too, honestly. I mean, you know, Optic, hopefully they, they, they understand in their head that the crowd's not necessarily against them as players. They're just against the game ending already because they want this series to continue on. That means Dreamfire, the only match point eligible team left alive. We want some more good Apex Optic Gaming. No chance for you in this game six. But does it, like, does that hurt them mentally? I mean, after coming so close twice in a row, it, has it Absolutely. started to just work its way through their motivation, how they're playing to this, how they're feeling in this series? I'd be surprised if it doesn't at that point. You come so close yet so far, and you're still at threat with Dreamfire being at match point. Ooh, the gravity lift. All right. He did end up using it for his own benefit, getting away from that situation. While Pita actually gets beamed on the other side by a 30-30. Yeah, so we were talking about them making some, uh, you know, some shifts, some changes from the last, uh, the last match we saw here on World to Edge. Black Hand, as you can see, they're currently occupying the building that Dreamfire were holding last time. That said, it was, uh, it was more of a, a countdown-centric circle. This one, as we've noted, could go up towards Skyhook as well, and that's where you've got teams like pa uh, FaZe, Pulverex, Oxygen, Moist, and Element 6 placing their bets. If it does continue pulling south, though, that means that all these teams over by Skyhook are going to be funneled into the line of sight of the team that has that northern building by countdown without having to give up their position, specifically thinking about Black Hand and their composition and the Watson. You have the gen to negate any grenade damage. You are able to put yourself in a better spot with those Watson fences. It's important because with what? 
four or five teams in that Skyhook area that we're currently seeing with a nice overhead shot. You can see that if the circle does pull away, it's only between you going up that hill from the low ground and little to no cover other than the rocks. Well, that's what makes Blackhand's position better than someone perhaps like Ooh, NRGs who are on the south side of Countdown because uh, if it does pull up to Skyhook, Blackhand are a lot closer, you know, an evac tower will get them there into Skyhook. There's, there's a, lot, uh, a lot better sort of safe hedging of a bet uh, and, and their options there for Blackhand. Um, now, Moist Esports, you can see they're sitting on 19 points at the moment. Hasn't been a fantastic start to the series. I mean, I say start because it feels like this, this, this day has, has, has barely started. But, you know, we're already <laughs> in match six. People are taking a tilt at the title right now. I can't believe how fast it's gone. And honestly, Moist probably feel the same because they've only managed to cobble together a few points at this point in time. Yeah, we have like two different sections of the game in the past pre previous games that we've seen thus far where it feels very volatile, whether it be at the very beginning with either 50-50s or third-party opportunities off those 50-50s, and then we don't really have too much action mid-game, and then late game is where we see all the chaos. And it's not even the end game, just the later part of the game where most of these teams get weeded out at the very end. And I guess the other thing is the games literally are shorter this season, right? With the, the changes we saw to yeah. the rings, the game's now ending in roughly uh, 20 minutes rather than say 22. That speeds things up just a little bit and makes it a little bit harder for those edge teams like Alliance, like LG, who are sitting over all the way down in Harvester at the moment. And yeah, look, Alliance trying to get some nice shots there onto MD White. The dome of protection goes out. You know that's MD White as the only team playing Gibraltar in the lobby. Alliance now finally being able to play on World's Edge. MD White stuck inside, but they're rocking the catalyst on top of the Gibraltar here. Trying to reinforce resorts and the black hole opens up the door, sending up the Arc Stars back in away, taking a split position to hold both angles just in case they try to sandwich them and wrap around and isolate MDY White. Realize lurking. They need to finish this one off quickly as Realize do pull in. There you go. You can see Karompu and Sangjun here. Just grabbing some high ground, waiting for some more knocks. Dy White now. Beiju has to be careful. Back it away. Mia also taking a little bit of damage, but has to go evil to get back to health just as quick. Alliance now backing away with the cat wall. They burned that up, and now they can actually try to move in for a third party with this timing. Which team is going to come out on top in this three-way scuffle here? Alliance seems to be taking it pretty slow, and that might work out for them until Realize get involved. They've decided this is the perfect time. Oh my god, I don't think Alliance realized they were there. Oh, the gravity lift now for Realize to get into a much better position. You can't go for the reset here when you get immediately dove on by Realize. Goodbye, Alliance. Goodbye, MDY White. The victors are going to be realized off of this fight alone, but waiting in the distance, hearing all this action genome, it's going to be Iron Blood Gaming. Yeah, MDY White, they tried to escape in the chaos there, but as they ran up the hill away from Epicenter, IBG waiting for them with Realize finishing them off as well. Those two, who knows, maybe there's another fight in the wings over here at Epicenter, but the action will be concentrating on the northwest of the map. With that zone pull, it does feel like it it's a lot more likely. It's ending in Skyhook now, maybe even towards um, the entrance that goes up into Countdown. But uh, either way, as we said, this is, this is why that spot from Blackhand is important and Dreamfire have to actually make a move. Good point there, because Blackhand will also be able to have a much better rotation looking at that northern building that they're holding down in Countdown. But also want to point out the slower pace that we may see inevitably, because if it, if it is a Skyhook Circle finish, which is what it looks like, there's going to be a lot more space for more teams to take control of. So you're going to have a lot more teams in those later circles if that does end up being the case. Just kind of always the way it plays out in Skyhook, isn't it? You can see Fuse with the high catalyst pick rates we've been seeing, almost 70% in this tournament. Fuse, a good counter to that. You don't have to waste grenades. You don't have to get up, up close and personal to use your melee to deal with those reinforced doors. You can just spam that Q ability on cooldown. TSM, not a great day for them so far. They're looking to get back into this. And honestly, 
I mean, after their run in winner's bracket, can you ever count them out? I mean, the script writes itself for this team, honestly. You mentioned the Fuse. Reps has not moved away from the Fuse pick, but we highlighted Black Hand's positioning. I also want to highlight TSM in the spot that they're currently holding right now. Mm. If it does pull towards Skyhook, they can not only gatekeep the teams that may want to wrap around into a longer rotation into Skyhook on the outskirts of Countdown, they could also hold down that Volt Tunnel. Exactly, you can see they've got access to it here and it's actually going to be a good spot for them. LG on the other side, you see TSM, they need to be decisive. They go straight for it and with their closer position, they are going to be okay. You can see LG though, Luminosity are using the evac tower so they'll be over the top. Probably no one for TSM to gatekeep. Can they make it into diner in time? Currently, no one in that spot. Oh, realize though, finding themselves in a fight. On the corner, it's going to be LG who landed right on top of them here. Ubli having to be stabilized as well as Crompe, who's going to be able to go on the bottom. He's got the Digi threat being on top of that Bang pick as well. Sung Jun from Real Life having to back away, trying to pop the shield back. But it's been more of a patient fight here between these two teams. I'm not expecting a third party from any of the teams in Skyhook because they want to secure those buildings. They do not want to give up free positioning for other teams to grief them. Couple of kills for Pioneers though. Still a smile on Nasky's face. It's kind of been plastered there all day since they've been winning those contests, hasn't love it? That. You absolutely love that. You love that attitude from Nasky. The IGL from KCP realized now. Still continuing on with this fight. The Beast of the Hunt has been called in. Dreamfire on the other side of Countdown. They have not left from this positioning, but the teams that will be rotating outside of Countdown, Dreamfire, NRG, Black Hand, Iron Blood Gaming. Yeah, and you can see they're right next to each other right now, though. Uh, we do have NRG down the bottom. They've got the Watson fences set up. Are Dreamfire going to drop in them? Will they try and go past them and make their way further into Skyhook? All these questions, there are still several buildings unoccupied. The diner we talked about before. TSM haven't taken that. They've actually gone a little bit further into Skyhook. And as I think you mentioned earlier, Vicky, this could be a, uh, a pretty chill next circle as all the teams within the buildings opt to stay in there for as long as they can. The same might not be said, though, for the teams that have to rotate outside of Countdown. Imagine what a bloodbath it could be, basically going into the firing range for Moist Esports, holding onto the rooftop and overlooking the action of the teams that may be funneled out of Countdown into the direction if they want to rotate towards Skyhook West. That is to say, that is the option that those teams oh. may want to go for, because look at that circle. You can see it in the mini-map. You can see the pings from Black Hand. They've already noted it, and you can already see what Easy Flash is trying to do here. They put in some pressure, but the pings are there, so the decision-making may be put down from Black Hand soon. I mean, if Black can't win this fight, I mean, there's Dreamfire and NRG, if they, if they wipe them out, who knows, they could even actually pop down and grab the ring console to give them that information. But uh, look, I'd say that's an outside chance. Most likely, these teams are going to have to come to blows with only a minute to do that before the next circle comes in. I don't know if there's time to enact that plan. It might just be fighting, and that's it. Calm before the storm. You have less than 45 seconds now, and Dreamfire is right on top of NRG. Black Hand waiting just in case if they could try to contest this fight, or do they want to get ahead of this rotation? If they go too far early, they could get pinched by the team that ends up on top from this fight in Countdown. I mean, the, the big problem for all these teams is there's already teams locked in those buildings. Okay, look, let's worry about Dreamfire for now. They've finally, finally tried to make their move, but look at this, the piercing spikes right on top of them. Oh, no. How can they get out of this? It slows you down on top of that easy flash. Popping off on NRG, leaving only one before they get eliminated and sent right back to the lobby. 15 squads left, Dreamfire have the gravity lift, go right back up on top of the roof. But in this time, Blackhand has already moved. Exactly, Blackhand, IBG, oh my god, are they throwing away their life right now to try and take out Dreamfire? Because I don't know what their exit strategy is, they have just got their eyes locked on the only match point eligible team remaining in this lobby. Do you know, this circle's closing in, and this circle makes your eyes cry. Now, with the circle closing in and all this fight's happening no, over by no. Countdown, you're gonna get gate kept. Black already moved. They're and right Dreamfire's gonna commit to this. E6 also get eliminated in your feed. Look, Dreamfire, they get the drop there, but it's not gonna be enough. A war of attrition, a Pyrrhic victory at the very best. He did the last one alive for Dreamfire. Scooting all the way down. 
And this is the gatekeep that I was expecting. It is Moist waiting for them. On the other side, we are going on to a new game right after this. Okay, game seven is coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to see though, who could be moving on to match point now? FaZe, they're sitting at 45 currently. LG sitting at 40. There's a couple of teams still alive, Vicky, that can make it further. Crazy how close also as well that black hand was. We have to see. So we can see Dojo, another one of our teams on our radars. I mean, they're, they're in a fantastic spot. Dojo, Pulverex, TSM, FaZe, all within buildings within the zone right now. LG, Shivas, they're outside but still in a good spot. Imagine if an LCQ team took out the championship. This is crazy that they're, as, <laughs> they're doing as well as they are. I mean, Timmy, come on. But then that's also through the chance of TSM ringing through the crowd giving them energy as they hold down their building. They want to see the pop-off game that they know TSM can have. Moist fighting on the edge of the circle. It's FaZe that's inside of this building right to their left. They throw out the nade, they wait with the piercing spikes, but up above them and in front of them, it is going to be LG and FaZe to their left. They can't get in, can't even peek through and get any damage. There's about a two second window after you blow off those reinforced doors where you cannot re-reinforce it. That's the window you've got to work with. These guys, they can't do anything in that time because LG were locking down the sights at them. <laughs> Farming that damage with the knuckle cluster from the Fusey. Oxygen Esports is playing outside of TSM's building. You see the EMP ring out in the building that is being shared by three other squads. Make it fourth with Realize making an appearance. It's Dojo, Pulverix, KCP, and Realize fighting on the outskirts of this building alone and on the edge of the circle. You can see Saku in the drone there, popping that EMP on his APAC North teammates beforehand. I think Realize may have got the reset and continued on here. So merely Evo damage for Pulverex in use of that ultimate. But they do have the root. It'll keep them in for quite a while, assuming they can fend off this push. Oh, it's Haka going down though. Shami has to look right behind them. Look who comes in from the zip line. No. And look who comes in from the skies. A res with the respawn beacon on the building that has not just two teams, three total squads with LG looking on. This is crazy. I think it was KCP that actually just pulled off that Moby res there. I cannot believe this. KCP with that res, gonna be able to move all the way up onto that second floor. The fact that they got the res and the reset is insane. The EVA eight shots ringing inside this first floor of the building. Find him outside, Sir Dow gets taken out. It's only up to Nasky, who is fully up and healthy, playing around the head glitch of the desk before sliding through the smoke. They have oh the miss fight quickly, God. and KCP come out on top, taking out Dojo. I mean, Nasky's face, it's like he's, there's no pressure on him. It's like he's playing a ranked game at home. How is he this calm right now? All practice, having to keep your cool. Hal moves up, he takes down the reinforcements on the door though. He gets beaten the moment he pops his head. He still is able to find Vayne. With that knock, he goes right back to go for the reset. Verholz and Reps are right there to help him out, sending the grenade all the way up to the other side of the fence line. Realize, playing on the outskirts. This final ring is closing, and sooner or later, TSM have to funnel outside this building. If LG can stay hidden behind the wall, they actually may be in the best spot to avoid the carnage that is about to ensue in this lobby. Six teams oh, no. left, most of them just about to move out of cover. The ring, adding in some assistance. Be your own sometimes, or you have to fight your life from the ring, having to look behind you. That building shares that boardway. KCP, Zayn alive, drops down. Double catwalk called in. Six squads remain. The creeping garage from Moist knocks down Nasty. KCP in trouble as they get cleared out. You've got almost no idea who you're shooting at. It doesn't matter which team they're from. You've just got to find a target and click. It's a chance from the crowd giving TSM the energy they need. From the chat as well, the supporters to give TSM the dub as FaZe find themselves in another top five. 
TSM though, they're all by themselves at the moment. There's a fracas behind the wall, but they will strike at the last moment. FaZe against TSM, oh there's only one alive! God. The Fae from Furrows, FaZe get eliminated, and TSM are your Game 6 champions! See a myriad of TSM jerseys in the crowd right now. Flag so many cheering fans. Oh man, what I a mean, bloodbath of a final circle genome. TSM taking the win patiently, holding that building. We saw them rotate when they were trying to predict where that second circle may have moved after. They waited by the truck side. Close the countdown before making the rotation through the vault tunnel when the third circle had revealed itself. And in that moment, they knew we have to go through the tunnel. It's not about gatekeeping, it's about holding down a building in that circle. I believe with that patience, they got the dub and 6k key, if my math is correct here. It was a beautiful play by TSM. So many other teams took up early positions in the buildings and, and felt a bit locked in by then, but. Coming in through the vault tunnel a little, a little bit later has paid massive dividends for the North American team. And look at that, 40 points they're up to now, Vicky, within knocking distance of that match point eligibility. With so many teams also performing consistently, I think about FaZe, how many more teams meet up with Optic, meet up with Dreamfire in this match point format finals day. We're gonna have to see as we tally up the score. Guys, over by the desk, tell us what you thought after that game six. Well, thank you so much, Vicky and Genome, for all that you've been doing to keep it hype in the crowd here at the Resorts World Arena in Birmingham. Rain Day, Glitter, Spider Tiff, and Dia on the desk talking about it. TSM finally get a win after six. We don't know how many more we will go, though. That's the specialty of tonight in Glitter. It feels like a lot of teams are starting to find their stride, and maybe now they've been gifted a bit of a chance for that to happen. Yeah, I think, admittedly, uh, match number four might be one of the most stressful moments that we've ever seen. <laughs> Coming down to the wall wire between Optic and NRG. Yeah. NRG kind of giving all of the teams in the lobby another opportunity to continue playing out. Then we saw a Dreamfire hit match point. Now, like you're saying, other teams starting to get closer, more teams getting on it, and it's just going to continue to heat up. And Dia, walk me through how TSM made it happen as well, because she said it's really been about final circle mastery, and that's always what separates our match point teams. Not how many points you have. Can you put it together in the end? How did TSM do it? I mean, it's exactly as you say, Rain Day. And at this point, TSM actually have one of the best spots in zone. One of the others that you could very well consider is Phase, Realize, and Luminosity Gaming that hold each of the other cardinal directions in this particular ring. But the, what really separates TSM from the rest of the lobby, and I mean literally, is a catalyst wall, <laughs> just to get this very small corner of the ring to themselves. Having noticed that other teams were walling in opposite directions, TSM just have to separate themselves for long enough that they're the last team to come into view, making them a suboptimal target for anyone else. So at the point that everyone finally finishes going for LG, who would have otherwise been in a great spot, TSM just have to mop up. That nade, though, Rain, at the end so was good. just disrespectful to close out the win. And you could see that dynamic. There's so much history. TSM, former teammate Snipe Down, who they have lifted trophies with as well, now playing for FaZe, having a chance to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. TSM take this one, Tiff, but look at the uh, top 10 here, and we'll go into our bottom 10 and overall results as you talk to us about the stories that have unfolded after these last three uh, that we've seen. Well, clearly, the Sage that you were dancing around with when we were casting over LG Chief <laughs> us getting gifted zones throughout the bracket stages is clearly still going so that's really great to see but a lot of our teams that are finding some success I just talked to a young fan on my way up here rooting for the pioneers and maybe that gifted them a, a nice double digit game as well so as our teams start to get closer but it's the games like optic yes on match points since game three I touched on it earlier saying just because you can get there in three doesn't mean we're ending in three but it gives a little bit of more urgency to the other teams in the lobby knowing that it can end on any point. And if you're, you know, sitting in 18th place and only 10 points separate you from a top five finish, the top of the line is 
that's going to affect the bottom dollar on the prize pool as well. It will. And a big part of the teams that you're seeing now in the bottom 10 is as a result of their late rotates. We've seen over the course of this tournament that when starting, we had a lot of Fuse, a lot of Bangalore, and we still have plenty of Bangalore, but importantly, their Siege, or rather instant engage compositions that rely on projectiles to do it. Going over the course of the rest of the tournament, we then saw a lot of Watson pop into the meta. And this time around, all the teams that you're seeing pile in at the top are those that are getting to zone early and prioritizing positioning over anything else. That is, with the notable exception of Black Hand, who are instead <laughs> using that same Watson-style composition to counter-engage. You both bring up great points. One, if it gets to three, it doesn't mean it's ending in three more or four or five. It could end in 11. And that reference was to Ascend winning a split one playoffs, I think, last year or the year before when a Alliance had gotten on, I believe, after two with the mm -hmm. points coming into it. Now, you can also see here, you have to change your game, Dia. You have to rotate and plan around winning a final circle now. The game shift once you get to match point. And as it shifts, you find yourself now looking at different ways to execute and be successful. Pioneers, TSM, Dojo, Realize, NRG, the remainders of our top 10, though, still playing the first part of this game, which is get enough points to have a chance to win. Man, it, it's really incredible the amount of stories that we've seen develop here and the way this community has shown up. I, I just can't tell you how important it is to one day, if you are a fan of Apex and the ALGS, make your way to one of our events. It is truly a magical place. There's nothing like it. And we will continue to highlight the special moments that happen here. But special moments have also been happening in game as the leaders of this lobby may not just be the points leaders, they might be the individual performers. Remember that monster MVP that you can vote for? Well, this may give you a hint at who is doing well. Zane from KCP. What a pickup from them. He's leading with 17 skittle kicks right behind. Him. Yeah, and we actually saw Zane as the last member of KCP alive in the final moments of that last final circle. He has been dominating. I think we even mentioned a few days ago in the competition when we were talking about KCP that Nasky kind of uses Zane, just gonna as the shield and the damage, throw him out in front of the squad, know that he's gonna come back not only taking everybody out, but keeping the rest of the squad alive. You can see that reflected in the numbers. Tip, who stands out for you? Easy Flash, I mean, we mentioned Black Hand earlier, doing well also, St. June. I mean, who, who stands out here in terms of top performance? Easy Flash is incredibly impressive as well from Black Hand, but I want to notably talk about Enemy, right? He hasn't competed since Split 1 playoffs, and that was under the roster of Oxygen, and now he's a part of the dojo, and he's kind of gone through this transformation, and I think being at that helm alongside Designful and It's Timmy, yeah. it's allowed him to really find success, and he often plays Catalyst and is typically kind of making sure that he's anchoring for the squad and to be able to rack up that many eliminations while doing so it's quite impressive one of the things you probably wouldn't expect if you're watching at home maybe you play apex casually is a catalyst and a lot of these catalyst players as in more of an anchor role in fights originally are actually performing quite well in terms of getting kills burholz also a notable catalyst player that often leads his team in kills especially because a catalyst does so well as a refragger since often in the in the center of engagements you've already thrown down a catalyst wall a lot of abilities that would otherwise zone as well like the pharaoh fluid on the ground, and Catalyst is able to bypass abilities of other Catalysts without suffering adverse effects, something that we don't often think about when considering all the defensive capabilities that she brings to an engagement. It's, it can be equally offensive when the enemy squad is not expecting you to just suddenly burst through a Dark Veil, and as so often our Catalysts do, one clip them. Or if you're just not expecting enemy to burst through uh, oh, yeah. with Dojo and take out. I mean, it seems to be happening there. A team almost at the precipice. Also want to give a big shout out to Eric Rona Snipe Down, who is back here in the Apex scene. He took a little hiatus, uh, but he has actually found a way to be on that kill leaderboard. Will FaZe continue the story? They've had a lot of questions, a lot of high hopes, and maybe a little bit of pressure. We'll see if they can relieve it here. The ALGS MVPs, however, are available to vote for on your screen. All you got to do is hashtag on Twitter, on Twitch, anywhere that you can basically hashtag and post something, we will be tracking those votes for you. And we'll also be including our own votes behind the scenes to come up with your ALGS MVP. Alliance losing has a negative effect on my oh my, oh my God, this is good. Who, who, oh my God, and the style as well. Our fans <laughs> are showing up. I can't tell you how many fans are showing up dripped out. The hairline is looking okay, though. Jealous. Yeah, it does. It looks pretty, it, yeah. the hairline's safe for now. It is. <laughs> 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know I gotta get hyped. You know why? Because it's my favorite segment of the day. It's WD Black, what's in your pack? And this time, Tiff, you get the hype toss as well. The 30-30 repeater. This has become such a mainstay in our game. Talk to me about it. It has. It debuted back in season eight and ever since more frequently on the recent season and coming into champs, a lot of teams have been utilizing it a lot. You can see it does 36% more damage by aiming down the sides, but you can also throw on that skull piercer for an additional 35% damage. And the skull piercer is an attachment that's frequently in crafting. So a lot of our teams will sit there, they'll grab it and just effectively be able to anchor down on the high ground, dealing suppressive damage damage and getting maybe an opening knock or initially getting a crack and Dia? And it, the important thing about this weapon as well is that since, since it's so often used as a secondary weapon, it can actually clutch up engagements. It's one of the marksman weapons that, and I miss scatter shots too, guys, but uh, <laughs> that still has incredibly effective hip fire. Things like the G7 simply don't measure up in terms of not only damage per bullet, but accuracy when you're trying to clutch up an engagement. Well, thank you so much for taking a look at what is in your pack. That's our sponsored segment with WD Black. We always love them, all the support they've been giving. Uh, we're going to do quick, quick, quick final thoughts. I know you want me to throw really quickly, but I had promised I want to, to just get your expectation. When is this ending? Because we may not be back here till it is ending. Look, we've been sprinting back and forth all throughout this stadium with Optic has been in the final three for a long time. But now that we have multiple teams on match point, it could end this very game. But for me, I'd already predicted nine, but okay. it could be seven. Okay, I said nine two glitter. What's the number quickly? I, if it's this one, it'll be the same situation with KCP and Split 2 playoffs where they got a match point when it ended. They're in six at 47. That could be a little bit bad for them. Okay. No, I, I didn't get a clear number, but I'm going to, you know, you get, gave a good answer. Do you, do you have a number? There's no reason not to be confident. I'm going 10. I want 10. More ten. Oh. We're going all the way. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. The I'm crowd ready. in Birmingham would be hype about 10. I certainly <laughs> would as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're ready for a little bit more Apex. The players are ready. They're back in their seats. The match point drama continues. Let's head back to our casters to get it going. Thank you so much, Rain Day. Ten games, Dia? You know what? I would not be opposed to that. I'm always down for some more Apex Legends, especially at this caliber when we welcome even more teams sitting at match points. I'm even seeing some banter in the comp chat. Someone called oh, yeah. Snipe an old man. I mean, come on, gotta put some respect <laughs> on your elders. FaZe are sitting at match point. It's about proving something here as we make the transition onto Storm Point. I mean, if they're having a go at him, I hope it's in the uh, the only, the four teams that are above him, because there's 15 <laughs> teams sitting below phase right now. And with the fifth place at the last land as well, I gotta say, those old man hands go all right. Sometimes the, the reaction time doesn't really get delayed the older you get. It's just about the skill that you have to progress with, depending on the state of Apex Legends and making the adjustments that you need, you know? Hearing the story about FaZe and how they've been able to get here and so far has actually been very entertaining. Phony taking the reins over guiding FaZe to the position that they're currently in right now. And you know, it's, it's even interesting thinking back to the times where, you know, people were having a go at Snipe Down saying that, uh, you know, he, he was washed after he's coming back from Halo and changing games, all that kind of stuff, right? It's been a massive, massive, um, you know, changeover to see him actually prove himself at land time and now time again. So sitting in fifth phase are one of those teams on match point right now. Uh, and now we are joined also by Legacy DF. I just want to make a note, ever since the addition of Storm Points, every match point final has ended on Storm Points. Going on to game number seven now. Can this be it? Or are we going to welcome even more teams to sit at match point? Let's get started. Let's not waste any more time. Storm point, game number seven, here in this finals lobby. We've had contests all around the place so far. Going back onto Storm Point, we are, of course, watching with bated breath what is going to happen over at Mill. I can tell you, Optic definitely not landing there this time. They will not be playing a part. Pioneers, they're looking around because Dreamfire have not dropped with them. Dreamfire actually going Cenote Caves here. They're going to be taking on E36. 
That's interesting. KCP have a moment to breathe just for right now as they're going to be able to have all of Mill to themselves. Dreamfire are going to be in Armor Cave right now, close to the spiders where they can walk away with some great loot before rotating away from Cenote. Now, also thinking about where the circle could be pulling, but in the Sonota Cave area, this is also an invitation for IBG to maybe get involved between Enter Force 36 and Dreamfire. Now, with contests down at Sonota Caves, you don't always see them go off right away, okay? You know, with Mill, those middle bins are so important that as we saw, teams will just get into it straight away. Do you get a gun? Do you not? It's, it's very much a 50-50, whereas it does feel more like a contest down here at Sonota Caves. So, will they actually run at each other or not? Will one of them try and get away with half of the loot that they have here? It does look like they want blood. Calling in the evac tower says, I do not want any business. Maybe it's us, Olivia for real here. If they want to just prioritize the rotation here, but it's about getting on top of the high ground. It's fine, we'll take this fight. Enter Force 36, now drop him down after getting beamed. Yeah, but you can see how important that initial damage is. Vores has four cells. He just took 100 damage. Goodbye, meds. Like, you have to be so careful with your approach here that, look, frankly, just going straight up the gravity lift like that is a very risky move, and it hasn't paid off. Especially if you're trying to, trying to commit to a fight this far away from where the circle is going to be pulling means that you're going to be starving on loot unless you have the opportunity to get a good rotation away from the squads that could just third party. Okay, Dreamfire back up onto the roof. I mean, the other thing I suppose we should mention is that, you know, Dreamfire, this was their plan, obviously, going in, whereas E36 were probably not uh, expecting this at all. So were they landing in a spot that was actually good to take this contest? Have they got their plan sorted out? If someone does mystery drop on them, well, we'll have to see if they can get the upper hand right now. It looks like they're just trying to stall it out with a couple of reinforced doors, this piercing spikes to delay any kind of push by Dreamfire. Bloodhound scan, so important when so little teams are running this composition, but it's about the information. Another evac tower being called in here. I mean, I guess the other thing to note there was Enterforce, the, uh, Enterforce 36 there are in last place, and, and that is sometimes, you know, teams will just go, well, okay, who's not playing well today? All right, I'm sending it them. That might be why Dreamfire did decide to go down to Sonote. I mean, let's be real, to them, it's free points at that point. If they need those points, they'll be able to capitalize. It's about getting on top of the high ground once again. Enter Force, though, taking the fight right back to them. Get the hip fire shots on the 30 30 that we just premiered right now. Pita goes down. Dreamfire looking to reset. And it looks like they will be able to get that res. I mean, when they popped that evac tower, I wasn't sure if that was just a distraction or if E36 were trying to say, look, we don't want any part of this. Just let us play our game. Let us make the rotation. But by this point, point frankly, it is too late. Any spots they would want to take over at the wall where this circle is pulling are well and truly occupied by now. This fight's been going on for way too long, but nobody in sight to try to come in for the third party. On the other side, closer to shipfall, E6. Take care of Oxygen Ooh. Esports, our first team to go out in this game. Yeah, it hasn't been quite the, uh, you know, the, the effort we thought from, uh, you know, Oxygen in this time. We do see Black Hand taking out uh, Pulverex there in the meantime. But yeah, look, Oxygen, they were, you know, sort of the dark horse. They, they did perform so well at Split 2 playoffs, but today they're struggling to make their way up that leaderboard on 25 points at the start of this uh, this match. Well, welcome to the hardest lobby in the entire tournament. This is finals day for a reason. Mm. You're dealing with the best of the best as Dreamfire are going to be able to try to walk away if they have the opportunity. Enter Force 36 are still below them here. And while this fight has been going on for <laughs> as long as it has, this is what we're waiting for. It's IBG now finally rotating away from the armory. I, I mean, is this a fight or is it a siege? Are you waiting for them to <laughs> run out of food before you... Before they get out of here, Dreamfire now with the bang hole coming down on top of them. I'm not sure they've even taken the shots yet from IBG to know that they are indeed in dire trouble. But look at Aimbot. Look at the fact that he's only got one shield cell. You mentioned this earlier before. Here comes the drop now to Enter Force 36. Maybe have to cut their losses because while they're playing outside the circle, they won't have any meds to survive. So they see the down, and that means that IBG go from, uh, you know, binoculars mode to, uh, to flying right into this fight. Relay on here, going to be able to get that knock right afterwards. The ring going to be able to help contribute to that finish. While IBG still looking to get engaged with the gravity lift, the take on top of the roof, and 
currently, it looks like Dreamfire are going to cut their losses. Seeing the fact that they're at match point as a duel are just going to start rotating away from this fight. Looks like IBG actually already sees them rotating. You can hear the pings coming in from Asia. And the fact that Enter 436 are still trying to live out through the circle from underneath in that second floor, it's going to be a matter of time before they go down too. Yeah, it's insane that E36 is still in this building. I guess that's just where they live now. Gonna need to go into the circle. Meanwhile, the teams that have already gotten the prioritization in these spots have been already in the buildings of Wall. IBG finish off Enter Force 36 as we were expecting. Again, you have no more meds. You're on the bottom end of the overall standing so far in this lobby. That's why Dreamfire just caught their, cut their losses, ended up rotating away. IBG now is gonna take their time to rotate into that next circle with the more loot that they have versus the other two teams we just saw. I mean, that's, it hasn't worked out for Dreamfire at all. They were really hoping that would be a quick and dirty fight. They could just get out and move on with their lives. But the lockdown from E36 just says, well, look, you decide to drop on us. We're going to drop you with us. And unfortunately, at that point, uh, you know, Dreamfire, I don't see them uh, kind of coming back from this. IBG are camping those banners by the looks of it. They're still very much in the circle, maybe just going uh, for some crafting. But either way, I think this is going to be too too tough for Dreamfire to come back from. MDY White eliminated in your feeds thanks to the hands of Dojo who are sitting at 43 points currently right now. NRG, a team that has been so consistent, still trying to make the comeback here. Nathan gets the shield swap, engaging in this fight. He's got the digi threat in hand, but trying to peek through a little head glitch here. As the double death box is right to his right too and looking to find the opportunity. Oh. Nathan has been, just been an absolute beast so far for NRG. God, he is so locked in today. He's so locked in in this tournament. And NRG trying to add another scalp here. Oh. Designful. First sweet on the other oh. side. And he with the wingman shots. Call him Mariah because he is looking to carry. Gets the res. Dojo still in this lobby. A couple of choice words coming out from Designful there, I believe, with that win. A wingman headshot to finish it off. Does it in style. And that's a very important spot. If we look where the circle is pulling, it's very much going towards the north of the wall, but that inside portion behind the blast doors, you can see the dojo have it to themselves at the moment. Incredibly important, and that was a, a huge fight win. Cannot be underestimated. Especially with those extra points that they need. Literally, just three more points, and they sit at match point right now, Genome. Seeing where the circle's gonna be pulling all the way to the north side of the wall means that that fight that dojo just took and won against energy puts them in a very good spot where their backs can be cleared. It's very easy to find a team that decides to take the risk and taking the zip line by those Dragon Ball buildings. Not expecting the team to try to approach from that side, but still, it's a good spot that they can completely clear their backs from. Versus, the, on the other hand, the other teams that are inside the buildings over by wall have to worry about the teams that are going to be fighting their way from the edge of the circle as, a, as the circle collapses over them. There are lots of things to think about for these teams. I mean, you know, so many different ways to play this. You've got, as you said, those teams inside the buildings like Start a Fight, Moist Esports that can cat goo up as much as they want. And then you've got teams like TSM who have to play in, around, under these buildings. Uh, you know, maybe it's more flexible. Maybe it's just more dangerous to be there. Very similar game plan that TSM was rocking in our previous game as the crowd was chanting their names. Nice to note on the top left side of your screen, Genome and I mentioned it early on mm. with the game number two. Well, guess what? The crafter has rotated for the week. We have the Moby, the purple knockdown, but most importantly, with the inclusion of Bangalore in these lobbies, is that digi threat and that purple laser sight. Expect that to be crucial for our teams that land and have a crafter in those VOIs. That is to say, if we do go to a new game, LG Chivas in a fight. Yeah, Luminosity, one of our teams on match point currently, taking on Iron Blood Gaming at Cascade Falls. Smokes go out. As you can see, Digi Threats are going to be abundant now that it's in the craft. If you've had access to one of those at some point, it's a massive, massive advantage in these fights. Oh. Yanya, one of the best players so far, but this wasn't oh, his oh fight. Goodness. 
Juanes with the beam using the Digitar himself and the R9. But the high ground right behind him, he tries to navigate away, needs some help from Mizun, tries to break down through the door. He gets taken out. Actually, crazy coming in from Asians. <gasps> gets the ping on the piercing spikes. That means Yaguares knows where the enemy is. His down teammates are actually oh. giving him pings all the time to let him know. And there we go. Just clips them behind the knockdown shields in the LG. Should be able to get the full reset. Vamanos at Chivas right now, coming out of Cascade Falls. That evac tower gets deleted just as quick as it was put down on the ground. That was a lion to get booted off from that attempt of the rotation. And with the 30-30 shots ringing through from Yuki, he's fighting from the low to high ground disparity up that hill phase. Side of the crevice, of that cave that will allow them to be right behind the Lions in this position. But they also have a pretty nice rotation, depending if there is a team holding the building outside of the mouth of this cave that allows you to have that high ground hilltop overlooking mm. wall. And, you know, none of the teams, the, the teams were unanimous, basically, on deciding that this was going to end on the wall. So no one was occupying those buildings. It meant that Ascend coming in there late with the Valk rotate, like we saw, easily able to take position up there. That's, that's the team that FaZe is going to be running into now. One of our four teams left alive on match point. Dreamfire have been removed. The other four, Optic, Blackhand, uh, LG, and FaZe, all still in there. Realize taking shots with the G7. Prompu in this position. Also getting the Evo Shield check. I believe that maybe LG that they're shooting at right now, but it's also a gatekeeping spot that Realize can hold since LG have to force their way into that next circle alongside E6. Catwall has been called in from phase, splitting the attention from Ascent, who actually is the team sitting inside of that building, waiting to see if another team may rotate in this direction, but trying to play it safe as usually Ascend does. Oh. Oh, we just talked about it with the what's in your pack. The 30-30 there just pumping in so much damage. A, a scant few bullets and you've already got a waste of bat or maybe even more LG. They've actually been locked down wow. here by the Fuse oh, Ultimate, yeah. but replies so well with the Hemlock. They get right back on top of it with the Gravity Lift. They oh, turn oh, this no. fight around in a matter of seconds. There's no way you can survive through the onset of Arkstar. The Yanya is delivering on a silver platter. E6 get eliminated. LG Chivas are locked in. I've never seen defense turned into offense so fast. They're incredible by LG to keep their chances alive. Realize, actually hesitate on the side of that. I think they could have come in and taken LG out there. One of the threats to them, one of the threats to this series ending in this match, but they don't go for it. LG Chivas have now put themselves in a sandwich position, though, at least against Ascend and Realize. Alliance getting word of the fight after their rotation from the hilltop, running away from TSM, have now come across Ascend here. LG Chivas fighting against Real Eyes, which actually gives them some time to focus on this fight to get the reset if they can. Oh no, has to stop the revive there. The black hole came in, he knows he just has to win this fight somehow, 2v3. Yet Juarez is trying to do it with the hemlock coming oh. out again. That's the second down. Can they actually win this 2v3? Yanya looks completely unfazed. It looks like they can. The third fight doing enough damage. He gets the finisher Incredible. on the hemlock at the very end. Realize gets taken out. Alliance and Ascend. Okay, their fight has finished up. I, I send got the better of them. They didn't manage to finish Alliance off, but they're going straight in for the third party. I don't think LG will reset this time. It'd be so too close for comfort right now. It doesn't look like they were able to ascend and with the L-Star. Look behind you, though. They find the knock onto Yanya. LG somehow still alive. It's only up to Nizul, who's literally low. One shot here. Can he get away? Bring up a knockdown. They get taken out. Another one of our match point teams out of this lobby. How many times can you be asked to clutch up in a row? At the very least, LG did so much damage there that they have managed to move themselves into second place with 62 points. Now getting above Dreamfire, who are already eliminated on 55. TSM. Poison prime position on this high ground. We've seen the end circle on this wall specifically pull towards this building or the outskirts or by the fence line, neighboring it to the left. Currently, TSM here are above Optic Gaming. They're actually trying to walk up. Oh, look at House position, just making sure. 
Good oh. spot in case they poke their heads out again after beaming dropped. But this is where the circle is pulling. So Optic Gaming, if they can play this well, obviously you can see the roof is where you want to be. It's a wall zone. TSM read it perfectly. They play the best position for it. And they... Look, they're looking to be rewarded for it. They're in a fantastic spot here. The dojo, that early fight against NRG has secured them spot in the zone for such a long time here. And only just now, in the next minute, do they have to worry about pushing out onto the left side of the building there that we saw TSM and Optic occupying. Looking at this circle and looking at the teams that have to fight their way from that south side, you know. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Start a fight, Moist, Ascend, lying in wait as a duo after they took that fight against LG and feeling the pressure from it. They will get information with Kishara still alive and having that crypto drone give them that info. Alliance having to play this as a solo, the scene can be said about FaZe. Dreamfire, out. Luminosity, out. FaZe, they are a rat right now. It's only Phony left alive. Optic, Black Hand are the two left on match point with all three members still up and running. This is crazy. Still an opportunity to see another game on Storm Point. Playing by the bunker doors is Dojo after winning this spot against NRG in a team fight. Here comes a catwall up. Great way to hold on to that utility to make this rotation. They've called out the rat from phase, but they don't finish them off. Wow, other teams even worried about the dojo here are going to start throwing ultimates out. I'm not sure why enemy isn't making the rotation just yet. I guess they're uh, really trying to dissuade anyone else from getting above them. They don't want to make the move too early, but Phony, he can't even pop the one bat he's got left. He's too worried about people hearing him. He's living on the edge for real right now. Dojo have managed to finally make their rotate with the circle closing in. Optic Gaming still inside of this building with TSM right up above them. Start a fight outside the building, looking to maybe getting involved with TSM right on the rooftop. But that's a positional a disadvantage that they have to worry about if they do decide to take that fight. Well, as peeps would say, levels. You've got people on all different levels of that building. And as the game goes on and on, it oh gets God. more congested. Oh. Alliance now will drop and we're down to seven. Black hand and moist down on the south here. Phony somehow still hasn't been discovered. You can see him. Oh, man. Want to note that Dojo being alive for this long and getting the KP that they have has set them up with 50 points. Mm. They join alongside our other match point teams to wait to see if they have another opportunity to take the dub to take this year's championship. You can see it's not a fantastic spot that they've got down there. Bangalore old, a black hole, a couple of grenades honestly could spell the end of them. This building is what's important. You can stay in it until the circle is almost completely closed. It'll be interesting to see how Black Hand and Moist play out on the uh, the bottom side, the south side of this. Uh, Phony did his best, uh, but couldn't get any more than seventh there. Okay, it's going to be a battle of the north and south. Now with FaZe going down, Black Hand and Optic Gaming are your match point teams that are still alive. Dojo with the cat wall up, trying to take a fight against Moist, trying to poke from afar without trying to overcommit at the same time, especially with Walti having the L stuff, but they lose on an MT. No! They oh, the shield bat popped off! The shield bat coming in clutch! Moist they Esports get eliminated! Okay, Black Hand, they've waited a nice amount of time here. They can't see anyone through this cat wall, though. The Bang Ult, even more, is going to send them back, and they will take back the safety of their generator and the Watson fences set up. This interception pylon is so good against the compositions that the other teams are running. You can't throw a Black Hole in there. You can't throw a Bang Ult in there. They're safe until they want to move. And that's the importance of having the Watson in their team comp. The gameplay that they've been running into with this composition to play into this playstyle is beautiful. TSM still looking down on Pride Rock on the rooftops of this building. Optic Gaming having to fight for their lives. The evac tower has been called in right in front of them as Hal gets the knock in the feed. Okay, start a fight. Unfortunately, dropping one early. Still two match point teams left alive out of the last fight. Will Optic finally close it out? Or can Black Hand really make everyone who supported them look like the best team in the world? Four squads left, start a fight, go down. Optic Gaming, Black Hand still in this fight. Black Hand, though, striking flame, easy flash as well. 
This may be it for Black Cat, and it is! Off the Gaming are still alive for how long? It's dropped, it's DSN from the high ground. Three teams left, and the circle is looking like a Skittle. No one knows who anyone is in Optic once again. They can't manage it. It's going to be Dojo versus TSM as the circle closes at TSM. Yet more teams achieving match point eligibility. With that win, TSM, of course, will throw themselves above that threshold. So do the dojo. Back-to-back -back wins. TSM is locked in to take another trophy home. Sitting at match point now. We are moving on to a game number eight. moment of respite here. It's been such high passion for TSM. They haven't had a moment to themselves, really. They've played the entire games out. As you said, the back-to-back -back wins. Wow. <laughs> Incredible, honestly, at this point. And it's a team that has never not shown up at LAN. I mean, even when they weren't lifting the trophies, coming second. Yeah. Always so consistent at these tournaments. The crowd giving them energy. One more game. We are going to one more game. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. We get even more Apex Legends on our screens. Let's take a look at the final circle now, Genome. Let's recap all the action. We saw how small that circle was at the very end. We saw TSM. They were trying to hold on to this high ground position like their life depended on it, like their series depended on it. And well, gosh darn, if it didn't, they managed to stay up here for quite some time. Teams below them in the smokes, but that, as we've noted, with the Digi coming into the craft, and now the smokes aren't as safe as they used to be. The Catwall will keep the other team's vision at bay for just a little while, but how tries to hold on to his black hole for as long as humanly possible. At this point, you've got four teams left, and it starts coming down to verticality. The gravity lifts are happening. Duels happening mid-air. Evac Tower is trying to get used, and once again, how manages to hold on to both of his both his Q and the ult for so long. It comes down to, I think it was the 1v1 in the end, honestly. It was Hal here, and there we go, get the last <laughs> kill. I love how you noted the gravity lift being saved there. I know Raven in the back, that Meza was absolutely performed greatly. Gotta hold on to your utility and use it in the best way that you can. But oh my goodness, aside from the That's double massive. TSM, can we look at Dojo real quick with 15 kills? Yeah, hold up that dojo flag. They just got themselves on match point. 24 points to give them a chance to get on the stage and lift that trophy. That's going to be, what is it, seven teams or something we're up to now on match point. It's getting more and more unlikely uh, that this series continues, but continue it has. And if you want to have half the lobby at match point, I'm, he I'm all here for it. Dojo's definitely got that mojo and they're here to perform and they're showing it off. On the second page, we get to see what happens to some of our teams, Oxygen being the first to go, not having the performance that they really want throughout the course of these previous games. Okay, series results as they stand. Yep, seven teams currently on the match point. Dojo, Blackhand, both up there at 64. I mean, you've got to remember, Vicky, the difference between these, like, these top five spots, you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes even hundreds if we're looking right up at number one and two there. Just a couple of points will shuffle these teams around and honestly change their lives and change the course of Apex Legends Esports history. Genome, the script writes itself. I cannot believe this. TSM feeling their own mojo, oh. taking back-to-back -back wins. Can three times be a charm? We're gonna have to see. We're gonna send it to a break. On the other side of this break, we got game number eight coming to you soon.
What a day it has been here in Birmingham at the ALGS Championships. But it's not quite over yet. TSM with the win at the wall. Keep us going here on a beautiful Sunday in Birmingham. Otto and Gaskin here to talk you through the next couple of games. Storm Point is where we're going to stay, Dan. But now we are really getting into the point of our tournament where match point is so spread about. There's so many teams who have reached it. You almost feel like someone has to win pretty soon. You'd think so. I thought surely it was going to be done there, where 50% of the teams left in that final circle were on match point. But of course, TSM go back to back to not only deny other teams from winning, but to put themselves on match point now here, going into match number eight. We have seven. I count seven teams going into match point on match number eight. So if you are one of those squads that still has yet to reach that threshold, you better believe you have to win this game, because if you do not, the chances are Optic, Dojo, Black Hand, LG Chivas, TSM, Dreamfire or FaZe will be taking away that championship and lifting that trophy. The last game we saw TSM, of course, hit match point. We also saw the Dojo hit match point. The list of teams was there for everybody to see, but the question still stands. Who is going to get their hands on that beautiful trophy you can see on your screens right now? A lot of Apex still left to be played here, Dan, but one more game of Storm Point is the first chapter. And then it gets to real scary territory when you start to move over to another map again. It could be good news for the likes of Dreamfire. We've mentioned, you know, contested a little bit on Storm Point. Pioneers, though, we've got to shout out Pioneers with how well they've been playing today, despite contests on both maps. They still find themselves on 48 points, but just short of match point. But maybe this will be the game where they find themselves on it. We can see the Legend Select screen right now, so you can get an idea of what legends these teams are going to be playing in their compositions. But the real story here is seven games was not enough for us to find our champion. A lot of people thinking, how many games is it going to take? Well, the more teams that hit match point here, the higher that chance is that we crown our champion. We've only seen the likes of TSM find one victory on Storm Point, but it was that one victory they were just able to achieve. Can they replicate it here again? It's match number eight here in Resorts World Birmingham for the ALGS Championships. And we have seven teams with a chance to win things right here, right now. The mood has kind of changed in the room, I'm feeling. It was just excitement, energy, the moment that we saw the crowd walk in. But now there's a little bit of nerves, a little bit of trepidation, as everybody is hoping it's their team who can get that win on the board. Teams finding their way down onto Storm Point. Off the rip, we're going to start with Dreamfire. Dreamfire playing this far safer as well, away from the mill yet again, not wanting to take that fight with the Pioneers. And the loophole is not going to be great here for them. They are probably going to be walking out with just the white. They'll be lucky to find a blue, and that'll be bad news for their chances. But if the zone were to pull their way, then there's still that opportunity. And speaking of said zone, we're going to be heading a little oh, bit further Black north. Blackout just stole the trident. East. It's daylight robbery from Black Hand, and it's something we saw similar from NRG earlier on this tournament. Sometimes it's about denying that possibility of quick rotations. I mean, effect will be, up, uh, I would say, upset. Probably some choice words being said in this microphone right now, but it's not going to affect Alliance too much because the map overhead is going to tell us that we're going pretty central at the moment. Between Thunderwatch, Stormcatcher, and Command Center is where we will see our end zone. Elsewhere, you can see the KCP scene to be alone at the moment over at the mill. So looks like their day of contesting might be over, Dan. And I'm just looking at who's got those ring consoles to get the information. TSM do not have one at the wall. Dojo do have one at Northpad to work with, as do Optic Gaming over at Down Beast. So a couple of our match point teams will get that info, but they have to move far. Blackhand, you'd have to say, have the biggest advantage with this circle and where they're currently positioned. But it's about whether they can get enough loot. But they looked pretty good in the early stages. What a tournament it's been for Blackhand, right? An incredible performance from them. There's KCP, though. No shields left to play with for them. Shield battery's going to have to be popped, but they do manage to get inside of the building, and they should 
be able to reset. So Pioneers kind of just cut down for a few seconds there. Dreamfire, the team was holding them out. And Pioneers just need to make sure they ease their way onto match point, but then they try and play spoiler to the rest of the lobby. Dreamfire, they've reached match point now. They still have that chance to win, but because they're taking this 50-50 over towards mill, or at least leaving it so they get some sort of loot, it's very weak armors for them and probably not much to work with in terms of utility as well. But they're just gonna have to hope that maybe they can pick up a third party and gather some loot from someone else. It's interesting that we saw a Prowler be the end of one team's game yesterday, causing that death, but this time around, it might actually be helping the loot pool of Dreamfire, but look at Pioneers, they are stepping up on this. I think they want this fight. Well, they would have seen the armors. They know that Dreamfire are weak, and they know that Pioneers, they only need two more KP. So just this one victory, this one fight could send them onto match point here. And not only that, it denies one of the match point teams from being able to win it here. Dreamfire, only one thing in their minds right now, survive, evade. Try and get away from Pioneers who are chasing them down so violently at the moment. A little bit of leftover loot, certainly going to be helpful for them. You mentioned how their loot pool is looking pretty weak comparatively to someone who has a POI to call their own. For now, they look like they're safe, though. They have escaped. The Pioneers follow. I mean, it's not just armors, it's ammo they're struggling on. They're going to have such little to work with. Maybe one fight, potentially. As Ascend phase, they're over towards Stormcatcher. Are we going to see the circle start to pull this way, or will it continue to pull northeast up to Thunderwatch? That's going to be one of the biggest changes here for some of these squads. Thunderwatch, is a I imagine, is where we'll probably end up, or at least in between the two in the little choke point. Pulverix set up for the long game here elsewhere. We take a little look south of what we've just seen. And it's going to be Blackhand who are making their way up that hill now, but look at the armors, not looking too healthy at the moment. Blackhand has certainly prioritized a rotate off of taking their time to loot up for some fighting a little bit later on. Now, this is the area where we have seen finishes, though, that Blackhand are holding dead center between Stormcatcher and Thunderwatch with a little bit of a northern tip for them to work with and certainly have the hill to their advantage is now the Pioneers. They're still chasing. They still want these kills. And it's Dreamfire again, who are probably just thinking, Pioneers, can you just give us a second can you just here? leave like, us just alone, leave please? Us alone? Pioneers are like, nah, we're coming after you. But for now, it seems like both teams, once again, are resetting. However, resetting not an option here for NRG. Sweet is left on his own. It's a 1v1. Sangyu does have the Peacekeeper, and he has the grab lift just to deny him. Maybe buy enough time here to get this bat off. If he can pop this, then all of a sudden the fight turns on its head. That's exactly what it's done, and NRG will be eliminated. So NRG were not on match point. They could have been one of those teams to potentially change things and get a victory, but Optic Gaming now hearing all this commotion, maybe might get an easier rotation as they move through. Reset has come in here at the command center, but how long is that going to last? Big change, of course, in the crafting lo rotation. Those digi threads are now available to everyone where you see that crafter. So the Bangalore smoke's not going to be quite as impactful as they were even in the first few games of the day. Oxygen Esports, though, they're in a scrap at the moment. They will be eliminated, and LG, one of our match point teams, will win that fight. And Yanya, who was unbelievable, a monster in that previous game we just saw, well, he's going to do something similar here to keep his team alive. Well, we saw MDY White eliminated as well as LG Chivas just trying to desperately search for any sort of space to stay alive, but it's element six being the aggressors here, trying to shut down LG and eliminate one of those match point teams. Optic still in this fight though. Optic trying to force their way through command center. They have taken a fair bit of damage in this fight, which is, the longer it goes, the more you expect more teams to think about having a push on this. Locked is taking flesh damage, but should be able to just about, about get around this corner, but no! Here come KCP! They are a nightmare for the lobby at the moment. There's one KP, one more, and Pioneers will be on match point. Oh, the Pioneers are on a war path and they want this KP. They want to get to match point as early as possible to give them that idea of we can be the team to disrupt things. We can be that squad to win here and send us to match number nine. Zane reloads. Wall bounce is enough to keep this player alive for just a few seconds, but Zane has only got one thing in mind, KP. One more of them, and KCP will be on match point. Seven becomes eight, but of course, Pioneers cannot win it in this match.
So they have to try and deny all of these other teams that already find themselves on them. As Optic Gaming have lost two now. Dreamfire, they're under pressure as well. Two of our match point teams with their backs against the wall. Iron Blood Gaming pushing at the moment. He died, we will go down as well. Dreamfire, down to just one. It's all up to Roy, he cannot do it. LGG Vaz eliminated as well as Dreamfire. Two more match point teams fall almost within seconds of each other. And the chances of another match gets that little bit more percentage wise, but there's still some big heavy hitters left in the lobby. Dojo, Blackhand, TSM, FaZe could still do it here in match eight. Now, Element 6, a team who has certainly caused a ruckus, especially yesterday in that elimination bracket. Maybe they could be the ones to play spoiler. But from their position, they've got a long way to go up to this northern side. They're down towards Launchpad right now. But they're really ruining this rotation from Enterforce 36, who are just calmly trying to make their way up through north. Back to the calm which is a little bit more north on the map at the moment. E6 and N Force 36 have gone their separate ways for now. Blackhand kind of relying on player K here to hit some big shots with that charge rifle. The good news for them, even though they have white armors, they've found somewhere safe to play. And if they can hit one or two shots with a charge rifle, that Evo shield will be charged up extremely quickly. But we all know at this point, with the reworking of the charge rifle, it's certainly not as easy as it used to be. Now remember, only a few teams on this northern side had ring consoles to work with as well. Blackhand had ideally priority here. They were able to move into zone first. TSM, however, didn't have ring console from the wall. So they're at the moment just playing a guessing game, kind of watching where other teams arrived from. Could they shadow them? Could they mirror them a little bit? And they're very close to SAF on the northern side of this zone, but it's Pulverex, Moist, Blackhand, and Ascend who are all around this Thunderwatch building. Phase one of our match point teams. They are a little bit further south at Stormcatcher. Nobody really close to them at the moment, but one team who is moving up from the south that they might get a peek at in just a few moments' time is going to be Enter Force 36. This is their POV. If they're not careful here, you already saw the snipe down has those scopes tracked. And if they peek, he will teach. It's going to be a tough journey for FaZe, though, once that circle does close and they have to find themselves going north, but they don't know that at the moment. They wouldn't have had that information. So they're just holding Stormcatcher. They would have seen probably the amount of teams that were able to rotate over towards Thunderwatch. As FaZe now seeing. Enterforce 36 arriving. Certainly could be extra shields though, which could really help them with their journey north when they do have to make it. Only seven damage needed here for Snipe Down. It's one of those frustrating situations. You're just like, give me one body to hit. And it just gives you a little bit more confidence. The dojo, what a tournament it has been. The winners of the last chance qualifier, by the way, are on match point. And this would be the ultimate Cinderella story. If the dojo could win the ALGS championships, you really couldn't write much better a story. And it really shows that, you know, anyone could do it. It is very much the zero to hero, LCQ to championship story for them. And at the moment, they're in second place. I'm sure they wouldn't mind it finishing, even if they didn't get that win, because they'd still be up there with the big boys and prize money. But it's TSM who are very close around that corner. I think Hal has certainly caught wind of something. The Spidey sense is certainly tingling here, not just because they're in the spider cave, but because they know that there's a team around the corner and the dojo don't need to be asked twice. They will move down and try and force their way into this zone and the dojo have to make this play. You can see in the top left, they won't be safe in around a minute's time. So they're trying to take this fight a little bit early, trying to force TSM back and create some space for them to have to play. And we've seen this fight a few times this tournament, Dojo versus TSM, and Dojo have got the better of them a few times. Now, SAF are above all of this commotion and could join it if they wanted to. Smokes just to give extra protection for Timmy and the rest of the boys. Right now, they're just trying to hold on because they're looking. They have been able to fight their way in. One thing that's interesting is I think teams are a little bit less confident trying to fire through the bank smokes, knowing that the Digi is now in that crafting rotation. You can't guarantee if you have a Digi, you're probably going to be in a good position. Oh my Look God. at start fight. Oh my. Do you pull the trigger? Do you wait for the knocks? The pressure. You can feel it in the room. Enter Force 36 eliminated in the meantime, but back to the silence as we wait to see what happens. Couldn't tell if I was in the ALGS arena or a football stadium as everyone's selling shoo by Iron Blood Gaming now. Trying to take this fight and at the moment doing well damage-wise. This is phase, they're going up against as well, so we could have 
Another match point team falling. What a crazy start to this lobby it has been. And it looks like they're going to be spied out here, FaZe. This could be the end of FaZe. If the flesh damage starts to pick up, and it is. FaZe are eliminated as well. That's yet another match point team falling. That means we only have three left. They've been going out one by one, and SAF, they really can't change this fight as enemy has been the first to fall from the dojo. I mean, this is a massive fight. This is a massive fight for the context of not just what you see in front of you, but the tournament as a whole. And SAF might play spoiler. Reps will go down. Verhoff's still got shields to play with, but where are SAF on all of this? Are they going to drop? Are they going to influence this fight? The zone is closing. Are they going to make a play off the back of this? They're saying, yeah, we're just letting this go. They're saying, yep, yeah, we, we helped one team win, I guess, is TSM. Back on their feet, back as a three, and SAF, they want to hold this position. They don't want to give it up. The reason I say this is because the winner of this Northern fight will have probably the best place in the zone. So for TSM fans and TSM themselves, they're going to be thanking their lucky stars that they weren't dropped on there by SAF. Elsewhere, though, realize Playing on the edge of zone, it's going to be Pioneers and Iron Blood Gaming who are holding them out, but Noct is still alive, but the longer he stays in zone, I mean, the chances are just disappearing in front of his eyes. So it's Optic Gaming, Black Hand, and TSM, our last three teams that are left on match point that are still alive, but Optic down to one, so you'd imagine it would have to be TSM or Black Hand. Now, Black Hand, the most consistent team throughout this week, and they came in with the most points into match point as 10. What they did struggle with, though, in the winner's bracket was getting those wins on the board. They didn't get any throughout the winner's finals. But this could be the biggest win of their career if they are able to get into that final circle and solidify everything here and now. Element 6 and Alliance having a little peek at each other. Optic Gaming out! No win here for Optic Gaming. Another match point team will fall as we jump back over to the north side of our zone. Alliance on your screen. It's been a tough day for them so far. But a win here and you never know. Well, Alliance pushing up on TE6. If they can get a victory, they can keep this tournament going. It would be big points as well. The big thing here is, will TSM try and push up on this? Will they leave that cave? Or will the threat of Starfight Esports be too much for them to commit to this fight and cross that open ground? At the moment, it's Alliance, who seem to have the upper hand in this fight, especially with effect in sprays like this. But there's the help up from high. It's start a fight who influenced that fight and take him down. And you said, will TSM join? No, but Black Hand do. Pioneers eliminated in the meantime. Black Hand want this fight. They want this eastern side. They want to be able to dominate and hold as much space as possible. Pioneers eliminated. Black Hand want to take this spot away. Easy Flash has got to be so careful. Player case trying to pop an ult XL. But the zone is starting to be a problem for them. They've been forced forward through that cow wall into the fire, but they do get one. Yuki will fall. Alliance eliminated. And Black Hand hold. But now, are we going to see Ascend actually be able to do any damage from a distance here? TSM also have eyes. There's a few teams with height who have vision on Black Hand, but it looks like Black Hand just stay on their feet as TSM still on the northern side are still threatened by SAF above them, may I add. But do they know they're there? Yes, they definitely know they're there, because you can see how, looking up, he can see the bullets coming from SAF now. SAF do have the Valkyrie. The composition could be influencing the decision that's going to be made here by Starfight Esports. They are in such an elevated position here that if they try and hit this Valkyrie, they will be safe to do so. They can approach this zone late and really get a lay of the land. That might open the door for TSM to move in. Well, bear in mind, for TSM to win here, it would be three back-to-back -back victories, something that's unheard of this year in ALGS on LAN. But they have to first worry about SAF. Now, Pulverix, E6, they hold a good position in the moment where they have coverage, but there's a lot of teams on that southern side that are going to be forcing them out of that position, which could put Black Hand into one of the prime spots because they're away from all of this commotion, from all of this damage. If Black Hand can find coverage, if they can find protection, they could find themselves in the final fight. We are into our top nine squads. TSM, who almost had to go on an elimination bracket run. They left it to the last game. 
to get that win to send them to to the grand finals. Moist Esports will be eliminated in the meantime. Elsewhere, you can see the Black Hanna taking a fight. Black Hanna taking a fight, and who's it against? It's TSM who are moving in, and how got that first knock? Gets the first knock, wants to press up, and they will get aggressive here, because if they win this fight, they own the northern side. All the other squads are on oh. the south. TSM win the fight, and now they're in prime position here. But is anyone going to push on this? Can they get the reset? It looks like TSM will be able to. And all of a sudden, after back-to-back -back wins, TSM are in prime spot. Carnage elsewhere. TSM once did it from the heavens, but now they can do it from the depths. They were so far behind going into match number five, but then back-to-back -back victories finds them on match point here at match eight. And they have the chance to make it three in a row, but they have to play this one perfectly. They can't afford to slip up here, but they have loot. They've got boxes, they've got shield swaps, they've got everything they could possibly want here to win this final circle. The cards are in the hands of TSM. The crowd know it. TSM fans at home and around the world know it as well. You do not get a better chance than this. One of these teams on the southern side has to come out healthy, has to come out as a full three, and TSM are going to be contested here. Otherwise, this one might just be given to them. But it was all that fight on the northern side. Beating Black Hand may have just done it. But they still have to get over this final hurdle here. And I tell you what, it could be SAF. SAF on this lower side, they're not going to take as much damage because these guys in the building are going to fight one another. And it was SAF who originally threatened TSM. TSM try and take a little bit more space. The Digi threat here for Hal means the Bangalore Smokes are not going to be an exit option for some of these teams inside of the building. And I tell you what, TSM are not going to wait for the game to come to them. TSM are going to go and win the game themselves. Pulverex down. Ascend down. Two more teams for TSM to deal with to call themselves champions. And I love this. Push the narrative. Give yourself the best opportunity. I am Blood Gaming, the next team to potentially go down here. This is going to be SAF versus TSM in the final fight. 3v3. A chance for Legacy to become a dynasty for TSM. The zone cut in half. Pressure on Verholst as the catalyst to make a play. Starfight could play pie poopers here, and TSM are going to have to wait. These Watson fences could be massive. Apex Folklore once again repeating itself as how once again from the heavens gets the opening knock. The CEO with a hostile takeover. TSM are your champions. Legacy to a dynasty. It is now complete for TSM. Online championships, playoff championships, and now a world championship for TSM. Three victories in a row to do it. When their backs were truly against the wall, it was from the wall where they were able to get things done. And the best team in the world, there is no doubt who they are. Their name is TSM. And they are inevitable when it comes to the ALGS. For Imperial Howl, for Verholst, and for the man that holds it all together, Reps. It was the one piece that was missing, Dan. The one trophy that they couldn't call their own. But now they can call themselves the ALGS champions.
And not only did they manage to get that victory, but they got it whilst taking down other match point teams on their way. The dojo destroyed. Blackhand, the next one's in their path. And it was SAF that were above them originally. We thought maybe could be that difference maker, but TSM held strong. And even though at one point, TSM were what? 40, 50 points behind their competitors. They still managed to hold on. They still believe that they could get it done. And they will find themselves as the world champions. Let's take a look back at how TSM win a championship. This is your final circle. And one thing that I love about how TSM played this, Dan, is they decided we are going to take control. Yeah, they could have stayed on the northern side. They could have watched all those teams damage each other and then probably clean things up from a distance. But if you force the narrative in your favor, if you just add that extra little bit of pressure, it means all the teams struggle to really come out with any sort of help. But SAF did, in fairness, SAF a full three. Then they set up those Watson fences and it just comes down to, as we've always said, hitting your shots. Whoever's in charge of adding something onto Storm Point, you need to make this kind of zone the TSM zone. They need to have a statue, because this is where they win championships. But it's this play again from Hal. Goes up once again into the thinner air, comes back down. And then, as you say, you put it perfectly, Dan. You've just got to hit your shots. And also playing the objective scenery as best as you can and what's available to give you that extra little bit of cover. For those gentlemen on your screen, I don't think they can quite believe it themselves. It's unheard of. I mean, back to back to back wins on land. You don't see it very often. Now, remember, right at the start, Optic Gaming had won two matches. They had their chance on match point, but did not take it. And it was TSM yet again that find themselves on match point getting the job done. Uh, an unbelievable week. I think everybody who's here in the building can agree with that sentiment. Everybody who's watching around the world as well, I'm sure can agree with that sentiment. Arguably the greatest ever Apex Legends tournament that we've been a part of, that everybody has been a part of. And I've got to say for everyone who's out in the crowd right now, you have been one of the biggest parts of this. It has been an incredible, incredible atmosphere and certainly one that Dan and I will never forget. But the story ends the same. It's like we said, it's legacy turning into a dynasty. It's TSM who are your champs. And once more, it is a situation where you said, arguably, this is the biggest and best tournament, but there is no argument who is the best team in Apex Legends. And I think that was what TSM set out at this tournament to prove that they are the best ever to do it. Two players who have been there right since the very beginning, back in Krakow, Poland, still competing together, Reps and Hal, and now alongside Verholst, have defined what it means to be the best team in the world. Absolutely inevitable. It's just how it felt. As soon as the momentum started picking up for TSM, they win one game, then we go to the wall. And sometimes when a zone comes to your POI, you're like, we need to win this, we should win this. But being in their position, knowing there's multiple teams already on match point, it became a must-win game for TSM. They do it. And then the, the way that they navigated that traffic in that final game, Dan, I mean, so many teams would have been so worried about taking that fight against the dojo. That's either what wins them the game, or maybe dojo come out of it as the champion. But it is going to be TSM who finally get the job done. Congratulations to TSM. It's time for us to step away and put the spotlight on your champions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your Apex Legends Global Series Year three champions, TSM!
Guys, world champions. Oh my God. That was absolutely insane. I mean, you guys are at the top of the mountain right now. Tell me how you feel. Wow. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't believe it. You know, we just, you know, we were doing, we were like 13th place for most of the games, and randomly we just three, won three games in a row. I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel amazing. You know, we, I'm, you know, everything that we put in, you know, as a team, individually, everything, it all paid off. You know, first, second, first for the year. I got no regrets. So. You got to love it. Crowd make some noise. Raven, you are the Bill Belichick of the Apex Legends game. How, how is it coaching these guys? I mean, you, you got three of the greatest players under your belt here. How, do you, how does it feel? No, they just are the best players in the world, the three best players in the world, absolutely. No question. Um, no, this tournament, I, I really feel like this was all them. Really, like, it wasn't the strats, it wasn't me, it was just them being better players and having the mental resilience to be able to struggle and still win, so. I see the emotion in your faces. I feel the love in your hearts. Reps, I gotta ask, listen, you two are the oldest, if I'm not mistaken, the oldest duo in Apex history since 2019. How, how does it feel? It feels amazing to continue to play the game from the start and still have so much success, and I gotta say thank you to Hal for always trusting me and uh, always playing with me, so. He's, I've always believed in Hal, and I feel like he's always believed in me, so yeah, I just, I thank him for trusting me. That's love. That's love. Some might say levels. Verholst, the youngest. I don't even have to say it. EA's most positive player in the entire game, but arguably the greatest controller player in the world. What, what do you think about that? Say that last thing again. I misheard you. So what'd you ask me? I said, how does it feel that you're arguably the greatest controller player in the game? I mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't, I, don't know if I, can, I don't know if I can take that title from Hal right now. I really don't. I really don't know. <laughs> All right, fellas, I see the family out there, right? What does that mean that you got your family there? Anything you guys want to say quickly? You know, <laughs> I, I had a wish, you know, being the greatest player alive, but then also win in front of my family. So, you know, I, I've checked those boxes. You know, I came, you know, they came here. <laughs> they, came, they came here last time for champs and we got seventh. And, you know, this is the second time they came in person and there was no other option but to win, so. I'm, I'm, hap I'm happy that we did it. You guys deserved it. You worked for it. You got it. I need to see you guys lift this trophy right now. Crowd, make some noise! Just the moments that you get to witness in life that you may never come across again. That is the beauty of seeing someone, a team, a collective do something bigger than themselves and prove it on a world stage and do it in such a way that inspires others to be better. TSM have somehow found a way against all odds to do it again. And man, they really represent what it means to play Apex. We know that this has been one of, I think, just the most heartfelt moments in this, in this this day because there's been tears shed of joy, there's been tears shed of, uh, I think the beauty of realizing that a goal that was so far in front of a player like Hal, starting back in H1Z1 trying to figure out if he could even make it or, or streaming to a few viewers to now have 
had so many trophies under his belt in this championship with this team. Lauren, what an amazing thing to witness and be a part of in terms of uh, the history of the ALGS. Yeah, and we talked about that when we were heading into the series. This was the final feather that TSM needed in that dynasty cap for every single achievement that they've made happen over the literal years of their competitive time in Apex Legends. I, I mean, this couldn't be a better close to year three. You asked uh, Tiff, you know, you didn't ask, you highlighted reps for what he brings to this team. And, and it was a beautiful moment between reps acknowledging not just a teammate, but a mentor in many ways. Someone who he saw gave him the privilege of being accepted no matter what ups or downs they face and has given that in return. And their partnership has flourished I mean, in such a special way. It's really nice to see, right? The partnership, the ups and downs over the years. He said it, you know, not winning that champs when the family was in person from Hal, right? But being able to stick together, lock it down, and share this moment of history. We talk about legends, and where were you when TSM won that championship on the trophy? We were in the crowd, we were here, but it's in the hearts of every single person, every viewer at home, and only they know what it feels like to accomplish that goal. The biggest part of this is looking even at the way that they speak about each other. TSM, as a three-man unit, were not the ones that were desperate for this win to prove to themselves that they are the best. They know that they're the best. And the people that really got that question answered, and I think needed that question answered, are the fans that have watched them be challenged over the past couple of years. It's one thing to take a few trophies off of TSM, but to see them continually remain at the top and now cement that in the biggest Apex Legends tournament of all time continues to push their legacy forward one step at a time just a momentous way, and I know our job is to have words, but sometimes there aren't any to express the emotion a lot of people are feeling, uh, and the pride some of the families down there are as well. But let's walk through that final moment. D, I'm gonna go back to you. This is how they won, how TSM got the job done and became our champions in year three. Walk me through it. The biggest difference in between TSM and any other team in this finals lobby was not mechanics, it was not calls, it was not macro. This circle demonstrates that it was confidence. Having just taken out Black Hand, this is a team that is playing for the win, giving up a little bit of high ground, moving in to cover the fence line and actively eliminate teams in front of them. So much so that they cause chaos underneath Thunderwatch, eliminating teams like Pulverex and Ascend who just were caught up in the chaos. From this point on, we see them pitted against the team coming out of South America, the team that's waited to be in top two the entire time. And this split wall right here is the equivalent of a 50-50 at the start of the game. You are, you are throwing everything up in the air. Everyone's gonna get full resets. You're going to have no chance to approach. But watch what Hal does. Knowing that they're even and nobody's landing any damage, and he does a fascinating thing. Taking to the skies on Horizon and using the gravity lift to scout out what the other team is thinking, how they're playing. Yeah, and what cool. he sees here changes everything. Two players on one side, one in the smoke on the other, and he identifies that start a fight or split in their game plan, in their approach to how they're gonna take on TSM. That split second of changing direction, of taking out one single isolated player, really abuses the unity that TSM have and takes it away from one team on the other side. One team that could very well shut them down. Fantastic breakdown, Dia, and Hal's already leaving with the trophy, Hal! There's some more photos <laughs> or something! Here. It's gotta be, Tim. <laughs> Overall, the match would end this way. Start a fight, were close. They actually had a chance to take out TSM, but decided not to shoot to make it into that second place. Mm -hmm. They do get a lot of points, though, and that's gonna push them a little ahead in the overall results. And that's what I'm excited to see, but you mentioned something at the very beginning of that final circle, and it was that fight against Blackhand, who went out in eighth place. Had Blackhand actually won that against TSM, you could be looking at a completely different person holding that trophy right now, and I think that was an incredibly pivotal moment. But for the other teams that went out, let's look at the series result. Optic Gaming, who got to match point first, Rain. I think the idea around it, Glitter, is that when you see this placement, and even if you look at Start a Fight, going from what would have probably been around 18th, the prize pool is going to shift for them. That's sure. one big thing. But also, teams like Ascend, teams like NRG, you had talked about Oxygen Esports, slower days. We're not here to dial in on that too much. I do still want to keep the focus on our top performers. Dojo, obviously, Optic, Black Hand, 
and what has that meant wow. for them? Wow. For an LCQ team to get 170,000, that's not bad at all. Chivas, a top five, that's huge for them. But Black Hand, Optic, and TSM, far and away, I think the best performers on the day and well deserved prize earnings. I mean, absolutely. We were wondering what was going to happen with Optic. They were just so dang consistent. So, second place, if they aren't able to close out that match point, is more than deserved. The overall points leader, regardless. So, that was something that's huge for them. But like you said, we saw Black Hand. The dojo, a storyline, I think everybody kind of fell in love with from LCQ to fourth place in the ALGS championship. They just took home $170,000 when they didn't even play in split two. It's an, it's an amazing feat that we've seen all of these teams uh, put together. And even Pulverex, I mean, what, you know, an effort for them. Even yeah. on the, the backside, 21,000, oh, that is, is not cool. bad at all. You see Big E, he's got his family representing his mother as well as Rep signing. Uh, all of the goodies that the fans bring along to these types of events, Nessies, poster boards, arms. Sometimes we have seen that. I have signed an arm. <laughs> And I'm sure that if I've signed an arm, I don't know what they've ended up signing, but I'm sure it's anything, shoes, everything going on there. They are well loved in this arena, that is for sure. What I do want to let you know is that though Hal ran away with run one trophy, he may have just gotten another one. I'm not sure, but Peeps is standing by with our Monster Energy MVP. Thank you, Rain Day. We are here with the CEO and the newest world champ. And this is another trophy to add to your collection right here. The MVP. How? what does getting the MVP award mean to you? Um, personally, I don't care about the MVP award. You know, I, I just want to win. You know, it doesn't really matter to me who has the most kills, who, you know, whatever. As long as we win as a team, MVP is just like the icing, you know? Levels, all right. What? Does your teammates' contribution to you getting MVP? What are what are their contributions to that? It's it's got to be everything. Yeah, well, it's always a team effort. You know, like um, you know, Evans' role, he's an anchor, so he he doesn't get as many kills and stuff like that. So he's always watching our back. So it's a team effort. You know, if you know we swap the roles, then he's he would probably be MVP. But you know, it's like I said, MVP is a team effort, and you know, I don't really care for it because we're a team. So. Love it, love it. Crowd loves it. Hal, take us through your journey from being a pro for all these years to now being a world champion. Man, I'm just so grateful to have the teammates that I have and, you know, my coach. Uh, I think this is the best, you know, version of TSM that's ever made um, since the beginning of the game. And I just, you know, I'm proud of them, you know, you know, for me, you know, dealing with my BS and stuff like that as an IGL. Um, I just want to thank them because, you know, I want to be here without them and vice versa. That's passion. That's passion, and that's what makes him such a great leader. So you've had a lot of doubters over the year. You had people that slept on you. Now you're a world champion. You're the MVP. What do you have to say to the people that doubted you? You can keep, you can, I don't know, I don't know. I, I can't believe people doubt us, to be honest. Um, we've showed ourselves, you know, we showed up every single time. Um, I guess you can keep hating and I'll hit the ad button. I don't know. <laughs> Crowd, make some noise for the MVP world champion. Casters, take us home. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peeps. So congratulations yet again for his second Monster Energy MVP of this year. Pretty impressive for Hal Atlan. And yes, we started the day of this tournament with three people on the desk. We ended up doing four or five. I think we've got, what, nine, <laughs> 10, 11 on here joining? We need a few more. This is how we like to end these shows as well. But I, before I uh, close this out, I want to give you know Lauren and, and Tiff and Dia a final word, a final thought, reaction to Hal and, and just what this has meant, year three coming to a close. I mean, I agree with him. I don't know how they could possibly have any doubters at this point, but this has been the most competitive year of Apex that we have seen so far, and year four is only going to get even harder, more competitive for these squads. I cannot wait to see what everybody brings to the table next time around. Tiff. Plot armor is real. That's all I have to say. Plot armor is real, but you mentioned it, Glitter. Year four, who is going to be the team to challenge the titans of TSM? 
That's a great question. We don't have that answer. We will soon, though. Do you? And for, and, I mean, for the, for the last thing to say, TSM did come away with the trophy. Man, we had so many teams competing here this weekend. Oh, my Lord, was it incredible. The, the legacies that were ended during the course of this tournament that have the chance to come back, restart, and even write new ones. It's incredible to see the Apex community come out and support the stories that happen live on this stage. So I thank you to the team for playing their hearts out, every team that participated in the ALGS, and to every one of you who came out. What a way to close us out there, Dia. I think the thing is, these moments happen live. And so we yeah. tell these stories without knowing how they're going to end. Sometimes it's difficult to create narratives. You can come on up, peeps. Great stuff down there, buddy. And of course, those narratives sometimes are difficult to tell. There's hardship, there's pain, there's emotion. Uh, the champion of last year didn't even make it, and they had to sit by the sidelines. And of course, TSM have done a lot of growing throughout this year, whether it's Hal's antics, winning split one, losing split two, or finding a way to get it done in split three. But what they told me on that stage was that it was about believing in each other, and the family gets that job done, if you can do it until the end. And what we have here, not only just on stage, with the amazing talent, the love we have for each other, choking up, getting a little emotional here, uh, because you guys in this game mean so much to us. And everyone here in the stands, the crowd, everyone at home who is watching and supporting through all the years of COVID, through all the years we couldn't be here, to see you all show up the way that you do for what we do makes it all go round. And so I hope you cherish us the way we are. All of our partners as well, regional broadcast partners of Rage, Longshot, Woohoo, Nice Wig and Grieg, our co-streamers, Wise Thug, Orax, Pokies, Vicky Palami, Restia, our tournament partners, Battlefy and Liquipedia, our Challenger Circuit partners, Versus Gaming, and Torchlight Productions. We love you, as well as our production eSports engine and everyone at EA who helps support this and the people who make the game respawn that has had us fall in love over and over again. The only good news, I think, in this bittersweet moment is not that it's over, but that we had this happen and that we will be back because year four is coming. This is not the end. No, this is just the beginning of what the ALGS will have in store. We have a new champion. It is TSM, and you can follow along with our Play Apex Esports app for all of the updates on when it will begin. But what we do know is that we will be defending a brand new champion here, and that will start a journey that we don't know how it will progress but we will be with you along the way. From everyone here at the Resorts World Arena in Birmingham, we love you, we appreciate you, and we remind you to never give up, never stop gaming, and we'll see you in year four. Get it all of y'all can just dream. Are you messing with the